attention, stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention, stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two-minute time check, stations. Attention, stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations.
The following program is paid for by Learfield Bobcat Sports Properties. On the Bobcat Sports Network from Learfield, Bobcat football is on the air. Down the left sideline, Tommy, Tommy, touchdown! Under pressure, got him, another sack, another sack. breaks a tackle, lowers his shoulder, lowers his shoulder, and pulls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, 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 Montana State. Go Cats, go! Bobcat Football is brought to you by Montana State University, Mountains and Mines, and by First Interstate Bank, built for you. This is Bobcat Pregame. It is a long-awaited, highly anticipated battle between the two reigning Big Sky champions. At, at long last, we find out who the top team of the Big Sky is. It's the Montana State University Bobcats, ranked number two in the nation at the Sacramento State Hornets, who are ranked number three across the nation. Hello, everybody, and welcome live from Hornets Stadium in Sacramento, California. I'm Keaton Gologli alongside R.J. Fitzgerald. Dan Davies, our sideline analyst, will join us a little bit later. Dylan McPhail is our on-site engineer, and Will Gordon is back in the studios in Bozeman. It is going to be a tremendous ball game today. Montana State and Sac State sharing the Big Sky Championship a year ago. Sacramento State has won three Big Sky Championships since 2019, but these two teams have not faced off since October of 2019 back in Bozeman, and that was the last time Montana State lost at 11th and Kagey at Bobcat Stadium. All right, RJ, here we go. This one we've been looking forward to all year long, and if ever anybody tells you they didn't circle this game on their calendar when the schedules came out, they're lying. Well, they're lying, uh, and that's evidenced by the Bobcat faithful that traveled down to Sacramento. What a support group that we have here. Awesome to see all the fans out. Obviously, it's a big-time football game, number two versus number three in the nation. Uh, it's going to be a battle between two premier Big Sky football teams. Our pregame show is brought to you in part by the Ribbon Chop House. Indulge in exceptional experiences at Montana's Ribbon Chop House. Our passionate team sets the bar high, serving premium steaks, fresh seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs. Embrace our warm Rocky Mountain hospitality as we eagerly anticipate you. Montana State and Sac State are an identical 18-1 in Big Sky play since the start of that 2021 season, but kind of just been playing opposite schedules to this point. And RJ, as we get uh, into this matchup tonight, this one's going to be a lot of fun. Let's start with this Sac State offense. They've got a lot of dynamic players on that offensive side of the football. Yeah, and I think it starts with Caden Bennett. It starts with that offensive line. They're very prolific. They're going to do a different thing for every single opponent that they've faced Thus far this year, every single team, they've had a different game plan. Talking with a few of the linebackers last night, they're a little worried about what Sac State is going to do offensively. They're not really sure, but as long as they have Caden, back, Caden Bennett back there running the offense, it's going to be a battle and one I think the Bobcat defense is ready for. Well, and this is a Sacramento State team that has had a lot of turnover from uh, their back-to-backs. They lost their two quarterback system, Asher O'Hara and Jake Dunaway, both graduating, both tremendous guys. Those two guys uh, combined for almost 50 touchdowns, both through the air and on the ground last season. Uh, and they lost Cameron Scadabo, who was the reigning Big Sky Offensive Player of the Year. He's at Arizona State now, putting up good numbers uh, for the Sun Devils in the last season of the Pac-12. But that's a big change, and Caden Bennett has stepped in well. He's been here for three years now after a couple of transfer transfers earlier in his career. But this running back room for Sacramento State, State's got a lot of different changes of pace. They, they really do, and, you know, there's a lot of really good talent on this Sac State running back uh, room, but I think it starts all up front. It's all about that offensive line. When the offensive line for Sacramento State is playing well, they play well as a football team, and I think it's going to be a big challenge for the Bobcat defensive line. They have faced some, op some offensive lines this year, such as South Dakota State, who are very good up front. And this is kind of that second challenge, that second best challenge. So I think the D-line is ready to step up. It's going to be a big-time game, and it's going to be a battle of the trenches tonight. And this is a Sacramento State team that will be missing their starting left tackle today, Troy Steifel, who's a California native, 6'5", 298. He's a senior. He's an anchor. So he will be out today. So they're going to shuffle some things around. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, we talked about the offensive line. One, thi one of the other parts of this offense we have to talk about is their pass catchers. Marshall Martin, their number 16, the tight end, an All-American. He's a dynamic weapon. 
he's a dynamic weapon. He's been quiet this season, doesn't have the statistical um, you know, prowess that he's had in the past few years, but he's a guy that in these big-time games that Sac State can lean on. I mean, when you have an All-American at tight end, an NFL-type talent, I mean, it's it's really a dynamic weapon. I know look, let's look for the Bobcats to maybe use some, some of their tight ends tonight and have a lot of those two and three tight end sets, but it's going to be a battle of the tight ends tonight. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, and for Martin, you know, he's been a little bit banged up this year, but their last game against Northern Colorado, uh, seven catches for 52 yards, led the team in, uh, in receptions in that game. So he's going to be a weapon. Also on the outside, Carlos Hill, a fourth-year senior out of Miami. He's tremendous, leads the team in receptions and in touchdown receptions. Devin Gandy, number five, he's another uh, big-time weapon as well. He's their second-leading receiver. And Jared Gibson, 6'1", 206-pound wide receiver. He wears number eight. Yeah, he's got 300 yards receiving this year. That's three really good pass catchers. And Carlos Hill, number zero, made a tremendous touchdown catch last week against Northern Colorado. Well, yeah, it's a prolific offense. Sacramento State, they've put up a lot of points. It's going to be a really big challenge. It might be the best overall offense that the Bobcats have faced all season. So it's going to be a huge challenge, one that I, I think Willie Mack is ready for. Let's see if Coach Willie Mack dials up some different pressures than what we've seen in, in the past. Look for a guy like maybe Drew Polidor to blitz a little bit more, put some pressure on Caden Bennett, try to get the ball out of his hands early. All right, let's turn our attention to the Sacramento State defense today. They are led by Andy Thompson, who is a defensive-minded coach, elevated from the defensive coordinator position last year, spent a long time at Northern Arizona. He's a former Montana Grizzly that helped them win a national championship at the turn of the century. So he's a guy who's going to have a little extra edge in this game, and the defense he's running out there this year is a little different than last year. Marte Mapu, third-round pick, starting linebacker for the New England Patriots now. So he is done from graduation. But Armand Bailey in the middle has been very, very good. Jet Stanley in the middle of their defensive line has been very, very good. And this defensive unit seems to still be a very strong uh, group for them. They're very strong, especially the front seven. I know Andy Thompson prides himself on winning the battle of the trenches. So look for Sacramento State to be stout against the Bobcat run game. Everyone knows what the Bobcats are going to do in big-time football games. It's going to be a heavy dose of Sean Chambers and Tommy Mallott. The tight ends are going to get involved. So let's see what the Bobcats do offensively to try to take some shots down the field and, you know, because Sacramento State's going to allow for it. All right, let's get to some personnel updates for Montana State. There's actually kind of a lot here uh, for Montana State. They are locked and loaded at the running back position. Now, Elijah Elliott is out today. We'll talk with head coach Brent Vegan about that. But Scott Trey Humphrey is back. Julius Davis is a full go. And, of course, Jared White is ready to rock and roll. Sounds like Lane Sumner is getting close, but he will not play today. But that running back room should be healthy, healed, and ready to rock tonight. Well, they're going to be ready to rock, and I think Sacramento State's going to be tired of seeing, you know, that running back room all night long. Uh, also for Montana State, uh, Dick Trimble is back today. So it's going to be interesting to see who we get – put back there to return punts will it be Ty McCullough will it be Derek Snell will it be Jacob Trimble yeah and I think the big thing is you know the Bobcats have struggled the last few weeks and just going up and catching the punts and I think a guy like Derek Snell yeah he's probably not going to be that guy that takes it back to the house for you but if they do throw Derek back there it's just a you know possession catch the punt and it does sound like Taco Dollar is getting close. He is not going to play today, but he's been practicing the last couple of weeks. And remember, with that new redshirt rule this season, uh, if he plays next week against Idaho, which we do not have confirmed yet, that would be four regular season games if he could take a redshirt. So he's getting close. Well, it, it's just a great thing for Bobcat Nation. It's a great, team for, great thing for this team. Um, then you have three established receivers, and it, it helps out a lot in the kicking game, which we know that the kicking game – can be a big turning point in Big Sky play and in the playoffs. Final injury update today, no Lavelle Price Jr. So that nickelback position, a little snake bitten. Of course, Caden Dollar went down early in the year and is out for the rest of the season. Lavelle Price has been a, an absolute star defensively and has played a uh, Herculean amount of snaps to this point. So he is out this week. Doesn't sound like it's going to be too long that he's going to be down, but Miles Jackson and Kendrick Baylor are going to be the two guys trying to plug that hole. Yeah, and they're going to have to step up because Lavelle has been playing at an all-Big Sky type level this season. He's been playing a lot of snaps, especially with Caden Dowler going down. Let's see what Miles and Kendrick can do tonight. I have a lot of confidence in those two guys. They've been studying. It's a next man up mentality on this football team, and I see those guys, you know, not seeing a lot of drop-off tonight. 
finally, Tommy Mallott, Sean Chambers, both back at a full go. First time we can say that since week two. Obviously, Mallott got some snaps against Cal Poly last week. What do you think the plan for Chambers and Mallott's going to be in this one? You know, I don't think we're going to see necessarily a lot of two QB looks with Sean Chambers and Tommy Mallott in there, but we will see Sean Chambers have a few game plan plays tonight. We will see Tommy Mallott have some game plan plays. And Coach Housewright, he's going to see what how the defense reacts to with how each quarterback is in the game. All right, so that's what we've got on tap for today. Can't wait to get it going. This one we've been waiting for for a long time, and these two teams won the Big Sky with identical 8-0 and records last season. The Bobcats today come in at 5-1. and They are 3-0 and in the Big Sky, and for Sacramento State, also 5-1. and Remember, they beat Stanford earlier this year. It's their fourth FBS win over the last uh, seven or eight years now, but they are 2-1 and in the Big Sky after a very close nail-biting loss at at Idaho in the first week of the Big Sky season. So they are still right there in the middle of the hunt for the Big Sky. Montana State is the last undefeated team in Big Sky play. So if Sac State can win this, especially with Idaho having lost last week, they're right in it. If they lose today with the two losses, they're effectively out of that Big Sky championship race. So a lot on the line for both these teams today. There's a lot on the line. It's going to be a physical game. Uh, it's going to be a battle of the trenches. Who wants it more? It's, it's going to be a great atmosphere down in Sacramento. Um, Bobcat Faithful is in full force tonight, so if you're a Bobcat fan, you got to be happy about it. The Gold Rush T-shirts are filing into Hornet Stadium, setting up Bobcat Stadium West as we get set for Montana State and Sacramento State today. A top five matchup between the Bobcats and the Hornets. All right, here's our pregame show today. Of course, we're going to talk with Dan Davies, get a little context on where this Sacramento State program is after winning back-to-back conference championships and of course get his Kendall Ford keys to the game we'll talk with offensive line coach Al Johnson and getting some detailed info on what that group has done up front to help lead the way to nearly 2,000 rushing yards as a team heading into week eight and of course we'll talk with head coach Brent Vegan about some of those personnel issues and get you ready for the X's and O's of the Bobcats and the Hornets for over 20 years, Montana's Ribbon Chop House has embodied Rocky Mountain hospitality. We prioritize loyalty, safety, service, and quality food to help grow and serve our communities. Join us at our Montana locations and experience our genuine hospitality firsthand. We're taking a break, coming back, and talking about the, some of the other Big Sky scores after this timeout. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. At Jersey Mike's, watching them freshly slice the meat and cheese right. for my sub is a sight to behold. The layers of ham, salami, ah, and okay. pepperoni right. are even more uh, glorious kind of, than the yeah. pink and orange yeah, layers of a sunrise. Yeah, yeah the sun's do. pretty and all that, but in about that, 7 billion years, it's going to explode, okay. obliterating the earth and every living thing on it. And if there's no sun, there's no subs. Meanwhile, uh, the only thing a sub ever obliterated okay. was my hunger. Freshly sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Oh, a I, sub didn't, I didn't hear anything about that. Have you not seen it? Did you know that Southwest oh, Montana kind of has lost. one of the highest per capita yeah, hot tub usage right rates now. in the world? See what your friends and neighbors and, uh, already oh, know. You know and How great it feels to soak under the big sky. Mountain Hot Tub has helped more friends more. and families relax in hot water than anyone in Montana. New hot tubs starting at less than $5,000. When you're ready to relieve stress and save money at the same time, come see us. Mic check. One, two, three, four. Since 1979. Hi, former Bobcat Lee Salcedo for Western Motors. Our team proudly supports MSU Bobcat football both on and off the field. I want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck for the season. Well, Western we Motors has spent the last 22 years serving Gallatin County and supporting over 40 local organizations. We have been recognized as the best in Bozeman and Gallatin's greatest several years running. As Montana's number one volume dealer, we are hired in all departments across eight of our dealerships. We have plenty of new and used inventory ready for purchase. Good luck, Bobcats. Western Motors, community born, community driven. At Montana State University, students shape signature experiences that take them across the state and into local communities. MSU is dedicated to its land-grant mission, integrating transformational learning, discovery, and service that improves lives. You'll find our students teaching across Montana, conducting research in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, or even creating small shelter prototypes to address homelessness. Montana State University. Think outside. 
The Gallatin Valley is thriving, and Bozeman is not only a destination for families to live, work, and play, it's also a destination for businesses. The Bozeman Area Chamber of Commerce is a great way to get involved in Bozeman's thriving business community. The Bozeman Chamber Economic Partnership assists existing businesses through expansion, grows new companies in our community, and attracts fresh opportunities for Gallatin County. Bozeman, our community, a jewel among the Northern Rockies. For more information, go to bozemanchamber.com. Town & Country Foods is a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics. As a locally owned company, we believe the benefit of buying local helps support the local economies in southwest Montana. Our stores offer great selections of items you need every day, including organic, specialty foods, fresh meats and produce, along with incredible selections from our bakery and deli departments. Town & Country Foods is 100% employee owned and serves southwest Montana with eight locations. Visit your local Town & Country Foods today. Go Cats! Welcome back under night skies as we get set for Montana State and Sacramento State at Hornet Stadium uh, out in Northern California. I'm Keaton Gologly. Pleasure to be with you today as we get set for a top five matchup in the Big Sky today. I want to remind you that Intermountain Health, formerly known as SCL Health in Big Sky Country, is proud to be an official health partner of Montana State Athletics. Time now to take a look at some of the other scores first from around the Big Sky today. A couple of bye weeks around, so only four games going. This is obviously the last game that will kick off uh, around the Big Sky. But uh, Idaho State, they are now 3-1 and one in the Big Sky. They win today 38-24 at Portland State. So Idaho State turning into one of the really great surprises around the Big Sky this year. They're running a two-quarterback system. Jordan Cook. 16 of 25 through the air, 259 yards and a touchdown. Hunter Hayes, the secondary quarterback, 5 of 7 through the air for 38 yards, but he rushed for two touchdowns on 10 carries over 93 yards. Dante Chachere in this game threw the ball 39 times, threw it for 218 yards, but he was held in check on the ground, 7 carries for 22 yards. So that was Idaho State beating Portland State. Idaho State 3-1, and one. Portland State is 2-2. Two and two. Weber State and Eastern Washington locked in a tight, tight battle there early in the fourth quarter, and Eastern Washington is currently leading 24-23. to 23. Remember, Weber State made a change at quarterback last week. Uh, Richie Munoz, the freshman, the true freshman, starting at quarterback today, 16 of 24 through the air, 163 yards. Weber State still missing Damon Bankston, their running back. On the other side for Eastern Washington, Kikoa Vesperis, 20 of 27 through the air, 228 yards, and Eastern Washington has rushed for 178 yards in that ball game. Uh, right now, Weber State 1 and 3 in the Big Sky. Eastern Washington is 1 and 2. Northern Colorado at Cal Poly today. So one of those two teams is getting their first Big Sky victory of the season. Cal Poly leading Northern Colorado tonight, 17 to 10. That game just getting going in the second half so that's what's going on around the big sky today keeping an eye on what's going on around the missouri valley football conference with some of the great teams that are over there right now uh so north dakota state rebounding they beat the uh, uh, western illinois 52 to 7 western illinois now winless so north dakota state bounces back uh south dakota state had a little bit of a scare today at southern illinois which is a ranked team uh, but SDSU held on to win 17-10. to Southern Illinois scored 10 points in that fourth quarter, but could not overcome their early deficit. And uh, South Dakota, the University of South Dakota, having a great year. They're up, uh, they win 17-3 to over winless Idaho State. So South Dakota is 4-0 in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, and they still have to play South Dakota State. So SDSU still has South Dakota and North Dakota State on their schedule. So just keeping an eye on uh, what, what's going on over in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Finally, taking a look at some of the top 25 scores today. Here are some of the scores that are going on right now. Virginia leading at number 10, North, uh, North Carolina, 31-27. to 27. That game has two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Virginia trying to close it out. Ole Miss leading Auburn 21-14 early in the fourth. Ole Miss ranked number 13 of the nation. Big time battle in East Lansing, and Michigan clearly has the upper hand. No big surprise there. The Wolverines leading at Michigan State 41 to nothing. That game is late in the third quarter. Number 16, Duke at number four, Florida State early in the third quarter, and Duke has a three-point lead. The Blue Devils leave it, leading the Seminoles 20 to 17. Number 19, LSU hosting Army. LSU leading that one 45 nothing midway through the third. Utah and USC, they are tied at 14 points apiece midway through the ballgame at halftime. 
Some of the finals today, Ohio State won a thriller at home against Penn State in a top 10 matchup. Ohio State won that one 20 to 12. Oklahoma, a big comeback against UCF, a new member of the Big 12. Oklahoma wins 31-29. They remain undefeated at 7-0. Number 22, Air Force over Navy, 17 to six today. Number nine, Oregon pulled away late against Washington State at home. They win 38 to 24. Alabama was caught in a tight dog fight against Tennessee at home today. Tennessee's number 17, Alabama's number 11. Alabama won that game 34 to 20 with a couple of big defensive plays in the fourth quarter. Number 20, Missouri beats South Carolina today 34 to 12. Tulane over North Texas 35 to 28. Minnesota won an ugly one at Iowa 12 to 10. And Texas comes from behind to win at Houston 31 to 24. All right. That is the full rundown of the scoreboard. And before we go to break, we do want to pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. XL Country, 100.7. KXLB Churchill, Bozeman, Belgrade. Also in Livingston, on Translator K254 AL. I'm Keaton Galongli alongside RJ Fitzgerald. Dan Davies is our sideline analyst. Dylan McPhail is uh, our on-site engineer. And Will Gordon is back in the studios today. All right, we're going to take a break, and uh, as we continue on, we're going to talk with offensive line coach Al Johnson. We're getting the keys to the game from Dan Davies, and, of course, we're visiting with head coach Brent Vegan as we get set for the kickoff at the bottom of the hour. It's Montana State and Sacramento State tonight. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. Bridger Brewing is home to award-winning locally crafted beer and pizza and is proud to support all things Bobcat sports. Open 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, last beer served at 8 p.m. and located right across from the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse. Stop by after the game today to enjoy a cold pint of beer and a slice of made-from-scratch delicious pizza. Dine-in service and online ordering for takeout are both available. Check out BridgerBrewing.com and at Bridger Brewing on Instagram and Facebook and stay tuned for updates on our newest adventure in Three Forks, Montana. When garage door issues happen, don't just call anybody. Call the pros at DoorTech. Our family-owned and operated business happily serves the Gallatin Valley. We install and service residential, commercial, and custom overhead doors and operators. With factory trained and certified technicians, we're committed to quality, value, and long-term relationships. Call us at 582-1623 and let us help you with the solution to all your garage door needs. DoorTech is raising the door on quality. Your region's only premier authorized Rainer dealer. From ATVs to heavy RVs, the 2023 Chevy Silverado provides everything you need for a long day of towing. With proven technologies like trailer sway control, hill start assist, and auto grade braking. You'll also get the capability to work smarter, not harder, with the available multi-flex tailgate. Offering six different functions to help improve loading, unloading, and accessing the cargo bed. Check out the legendary Silverado at your Montana Chevy dealers. Proud sponsors of your Montana State Bobcats. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. outside the box for your complete branding solutions. Located in Bozeman, Montana, we offer a full print shop for banners, signs, wraps, trade show booths and graphics, promotional products, and much more. If you can think it, we can ink it. We are a proud supporter and corporate sponsor of the MSU Bobcats. Like us on Facebook to see some of our cat wraps. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. and call us at 406-922-6462 or visit us on the web at inkoutside.com. The Gallatin Valley is thriving, and Bozeman is not only a destination for families to live, work, and play, it's also a destination for businesses. The Bozeman Area Chamber of Commerce is a great way to get involved in Bozeman's thriving business community. The Bozeman Chamber Economic Partnership assists existing businesses through expansion, grows new companies in our community, and attracts fresh opportunities for Gallatin County. Bozeman, our community, a jewel among the Northern Rockies. For more information, go to bozemanchamber.com. Did you know that Southwest Montana has one of the highest per capita hot tub usage rates in the world? See what your friends and neighbors already know. How great it feels to soak under the big sky. Mountain Hot Tub has helped more friends and families relax in hot water than anyone in Montana. New hot tubs starting at less than $5,000. When you're ready to relieve stress and save money at the same time, come see us at the corner of Huffine and Goot Hill. Mountain Hot Tub, since 1979. We're back in the pregame show for week eight, getting set for Montana State and Sac State in this top five matchup from Northern California. I'm Keaton Gologli. Pleasure to be with you today. We do want to remind you that Bobcat football is presented in part by Bozeman Health. 
All right, uh, before we get to our conversations with Dan Davies, offensive line coach Al Johnson, and, of course, head coach Brent Began, it's time now to introduce this week's most valuable professor, Sean Harris, assistant professor of accounting at Montana State University in Bozeman. Professor, you teach data analytics to business students. Why is it important to understand data analytics? So data analytics is one of the most in-demand skill sets that we see on current job postings, regardless of whether it's accounting, finance, marketing, management, et cetera. And uh, learning how to use data analytics to help inform decision-making makes our students more attractive to employers as they graduate and enter the job market. Can you describe how data analytics can help build business and industry in Montana? So data analytics can help automate processes that were previously quite tedious and time consuming. Uh, So this automation frees up a valuable time and resources that can be spent on more value added activities. And as more and more data becomes available in the modern business world, companies can use data analytics to get valuable insights that can help inform their decision making and help grow their business. What are some success stories of your students? What kind of careers are they pursuing? One of the most rewarding things about my job is when a a former student reaches out and tells me that they were able to apply a technique they learned in class to help solve a business problem or or make a process more efficient. I also love when an accounting student uh, tells me that they recently passed one of their CPA exams and that the material they learned in class helped prepare them for that uh, exam. A large portion of our accounting students start out working in local accounting firms where they help advise and assist Montana businesses and help them grow and thrive. I'm Sean Harris, Assistant Professor of Accounting at Montana State University in Bozeman. Go Bobcats! Well, we appreciate Professor Harris joining us today. And now we're going to take a time out. And when we get back, we'll get into the matchup between the Bobcats and the Hornets. We're joined by our sideline analyst, Dan Davies. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. The Rocking R Bar is your home for everything Bobcat football. Whether the Cats are home or away, we are your game day headquarters. Swing by for great food specials like the Sunny Holland Burger from our new grill, Hail Mary's. We also serve the best Montana craft beer and liquor the state has to offer. So grab a pint, something to eat, and one of our very own Rocking R Bar liquors because it's a great time to be a Bobcat at the Rocking R Bar. Are you too hot? Are you too cold? Did you know that you don't have to just deal with it? We at Ambient Air Solutions understand how important comfort plays on your emotions, health, and quality of life on a daily basis. Ambient Air Solutions offers 24-7 emergency service for residential and commercial clients. We also offer financing to help ease the financial stress and burden of a lifelong investment. Call Ambient Air Solutions at 406-577-1818 and leave it to the professionals. Ambient Air Solutions, simplifying heating and cooling. When garage door issues happen, don't just call anybody. Call the pros at DoorTech. Our family-owned and operated business happily serves the Gallatin Valley. We install and service residential, commercial, and custom overhead doors and operators. With factory trained and certified technicians, we're committed to quality, value, and long-term relationships. Call us at 582-1623 and let us help you with the solution to all your garage door needs. DoorTech is raising the door on quality. Your region's only premier authorized Rainer dealer. It's the season of home improvement, and Williams Plumbing will help you tackle the big stuff. Are old roots clogging your sewer line? Williams has the tools to fix it. Have you checked your septic system lately? We have the knowledge and experience to maintain or repair it. Looking to install a yard hydrant? We'll do it promptly and professionally. Don't sweat the big stuff. Call Williams Plumbing today. Counting Country Foods is a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics. As a locally owned company, we believe the benefit of buying local helps support the local economies in southwest Montana. Our stores offer great selections of items you need every day, including organic, specialty foods, fresh meats and produce, along with incredible selections from our bakery and deli departments. Counting Country Foods is 100% employee owned and serves southwest Montana with eight locations. Visit your local Counting Country Foods today. Go Cats! Working from home has definitely put home projects into overdrive. 
New landscaping, gardens, patios, and fences. But if you're digging, you're contacting 811. Utility lines, including Northwestern Energies, can be buried even just a few inches underground, and hitting one can be dangerous. The best way to keep you, the community, and your contractor crew safe is by having lines properly marked. Make your request online at least two full business days before you want to dig at call811.com. We're back on the pregame show, and it's Montana State and Sacramento State, finally from Sacramento. I'm Keaton Glogley alongside Dan Davies. And Dan, uh, you know, Sacramento State and Montana State splitting the Big Sky Championship last year. And for the Hornets, you know, they've won three Big Sky Championships now since uh, 2019, their first three since joining the Big Sky in the mid-'90s. Help me put into perspective kind of where this Sacramento State program is in terms of its, its success right now. Well, Sacramento State, as long as they've been in the Big Sky Conference, they've always had the athletes. And it, it seems like they've been uh, good in the skill positions for the most part. But it wasn't until the, since 2019 that they have put the whole thing together, uh, putting good defenses together along with their um, athletic offensive personnel. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the three Big Sky championships is, is a, a remarkable run for this Hornet football team. Well, they've been on quite the run here over the last uh, couple of years, and we finally get a chance to see these two teams uh, square off tonight. Let's get to our Kendall Ford keys to the game today. What are some of the keys you're looking for tonight, Dan? Well, I'm really uh, excited to see, the, you know, the Bobcats, for the most part, are going to be at full strength. They get Scott Trey Humphrey back, uh, for, and as well as Julius Davis back in the running back positions, which fortunately for Montana State, that's a deep room, and uh, those other guys have really taken the slack up. And, and Trimble comes back today, and uh, I think – the areas that you know needed to get cleaned up last week were in the special teams area, and uh, be, being able to uh, excel in that. But uh, I, I'm excited to see this defense get after this offense. You know, Caden Bennett, the quarterback, is an outstanding, you know, passer and uh, Sacramento State's leading rusher as well. So it's going to be a, a test for the defense. But I think I think they're ready to go. I think as as both units, offense and defense, are back to almost full strength. Uh, we're going to see an outstanding effort here by this Bobcat football team. I think some uh, turnovers will be a key for this Bobcat uh, defense to get um, the, the offense some more turns with the football. All right, well, here we go. These are two teams that have each gone 18 and 1 in the Big Sky Conference since the start of 2021. We're finally going to find out who's better tonight. All right, Dan, we'll talk to you again here at the, tower, at the bottom of the hour before we get ready for kickoff. Yeah, very excited to get this one kicked off. All right, let's do it. We're taking a break, and uh, when we get back, we'll talk with offensive line coach Al Johnson, and later we'll discuss uh, all the uh, returning players from injury with head coach Brent Vegan in just a bit. It's Montana State and Sacramento State today. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Whoever said, good things come to those who wait, clearly never ordered in the McDonald's app. Just order ahead in the app, and you can pick up when you get here. Now football fans can score big, because on game day, get a 20-piece Chicken McNuggets for just $5 when you order ahead on the app. Now that's a W. Valid once per day through December 1st, 2023. I participate in McDonald's, must opt into rewards. Montana holds some of the greatest hunting in the country, and much of that occurs on private land. Access to private land is a key part of hunting and wildlife management, but that access is at risk with every gate left open, piece of litter left behind, or torn up ag field from someone driving where they weren't allowed. As hunters and guests in Montana, we must do better. Get familiar with Montana's block management program and follow the rules for every block management area you hunt, because we either do better or we'll lose access. It's that simple. It's up to us. Respect access. Protect the hunt. You already do so much. How about doing less and earning more? 
Rewards checking from Valley Credit Union lets you do just that. Earn 2.50% APY with no minimum balance, no service fees, and refunds up to $360 per year on ATM fees nationwide. Less hassle, more moolah. Visit valleyfcu.com to open an account online. Rewards checking from Valley Credit Union. Do less, earn more. APY equals annual percentage yield federally insured by the NCUA. Certain restrictions may apply. For all you've been through lately, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana wants to make sure you are covered in care. From preventive cancer screenings to proper control of diabetes, high blood pressure and behavioral health management, to prenatal care and child immunizations, Blue Cross and Blue Shield is by your side, reminding you preventive care is imperative care. Stay on top of your health at bcbsmt.com. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana, through it all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. With friendly customer service and an outstanding location near Montana State University in the base of the Bridger Mountain Range, Country Inn & Suites by Radisson is the perfect place to begin your Bozeman adventure. Country Inn & Suites offers a hot and delicious Be Our Guest breakfast buffet each morning. Free Wi-Fi is available throughout the property, and we have a business center and meeting rooms. Our indoor pool and hot tub is a great way to relax after a day of fun, and the on-site fitness center will keep your workout goals on track. We have spacious king and double queen suites with a full-size sleeper sofa available, and every room in Country Inn & Suites is smoke-free. Reserve your room today. We're back in Sacramento getting set for Montana State and Sacramento State today. This offensive line has been pushing people around to lead the best rushing attack in the nation once again. And the guy coaching that line is Al Johnson, the new offensive line coach in his first year here at Montana State. And he's our next guest. King Gologa alongside offensive line coach Al Johnson. Coach, how you doing? How you settling in? Doing well. It's that part of the year where you think you have a good idea of who our guys are and how they're playing. And then really it's just for where we're at offensive line wise, it's how do we keep refining the little things and making sure that our preparation, our effort, our physicality it never slows down and never wavers. And that can be hard. I remember back to when I was a college athlete, you work all week just to get your body back to feel like we feel like they feel on Sunday and so that's hard so I talked to him a lot about that is just making sure that our preparation stays and obviously this week they know it's a big game and I think overall the top five guys that have been out there have played really good football they've played really hard and fast and physical and they've done a lot of really great things now it's to make sure we keep doing that um, because if our old line keeps playing this way it, they're they're good <laughs> yeah well one of the best physicality plays we saw in this last game was uh, Justice Perkins kind of getting underneath Sean yeah. Chambers, <laughs> carrying him into the end zone. What did you see on that play, and how much fun was it to see Perkins kind of push through there at the end yeah, of the Yeah, Justice had a great game. I think it was his best game by far um, this season, and overall just physical and finished. I think the best thing, and we showed it to the, the group as a whole today, and uh, it's, it's one of those plays where – is it perfect? No. If it was perfect, the hole would have been a truck-sized hole. But nobody quit, and everybody kept working, and Sean kept working, and everybody was on their blocks, and then just finished. And, and that's really what this team's all about, and that's what it takes to be successful. It is not every play is going to be perfect, but you got to finish it, and you got to be physical, and, and never say that the play is over, and, and just play it till the whistle blows. And that was a great example of it. Uh, so you came over here from uh, Wisconsin, so your first year here. Tell me a little bit about when you first got here and started meeting some of this offensive line. What was already here when you got here? Yeah, I, I think our very first press conference, uh, the very first press conference I did, they asked me that question, and I told them I was very blessed. Because when I first got here, I watched all the film. And so I knew the core group of guys that were coming back. And I knew that they had a lot of ability. They were athletic. They could move. They were strong. They could bend. And they were physical. And then you learn the motto of run the damn ball. And so that right there tells you what their mindset is. So I've just been first, you know, I think early on, you got to get to know personalities. If you want to motivate somebody, if you want to help them, not everyone learns the same way. Not everyone gets motivated the same way. And so just trying to learn each of them, how they learn, how they go about their business, and then just trying to find different ways to help them. At the end of the day, that's what coaching is, is trying to help them be the player that they want to be on a consistent basis. And hopefully to this point, they've been playing great football, and now the hard part is just to stay that way. 
uh, beyond the guys who've been getting the starts, you know, it's been a lot of continuity there, which has been great. But an opportunity to see some of the second and third level guys uh, late in some of these games. Anybody stand out in that group and has been playing well? Yeah, I think the more reps that we get and the way we practice, I think, really makes a huge difference. Obviously, Jacob Kettles has played a lot of football. It's won as a starting O-lineman here a lot of games. And so he's done a really good job. Um, some of the young guys, Holden, is always really consistent and has done a great job. And then if you look at the other two guys that are in there that are redshirt freshmen, in Burke and in Thomas Nielsen, he, they've done a good job. And they've come a long way from when I first got here in spring where they were just coming out of their red shirt year. And then Cedric Jefferson's done a really good job. We had to bring him up the last couple of weeks, and he's been doing practice. And so those reps are important. The best part is our second old line has really, every time they've gotten in, done a pretty good job. And, again, I think that's a credit to how they prepare because Jacob was in that situation last year, one play away, and he played the rest of the year. So just trying to get those guys not to get through practice but get better, you never know when your time's going to come. And we've been lucky and put a lot of work in to get to that, but they've gotten to play a good amount of snaps already this season. And hopefully we can get them in one way, this way, the same way today. All right, we're talking with the offensive line coach, uh, Al Johnson. Coach, uh, making the move over from the University of Wisconsin here to Montana State. Uh, what was that process like for you? Why did you end up finding Montana State and deciding uh, this was the time to kind of make the jump over here? Yeah, well, I mean, that one was it's not that one wasn't by choice, I guess, right? We know this profession. The whole staff got fired, and it was really just through connections. I was able to coach the offensive line for our bowl game. Then we beat Oklahoma State last year, and then it was just through connections that I knew that had connections with coach vegan and so just really got the interview that's the hardest part is just getting your name in there and interviewing and then make sure it's the right fit and luckily it was and hopefully we can keep this uh, all rolling but the transition's been great bozeman is beautiful it is wonderful and luckily there's no snow on the ground yet and so i know that everyone keeps telling me that's coming soon yeah well you're from wisconsin so it's not gonna be as bad as you think it's gonna be <laughs> i uh, hope another guy from wisconsin is julius davis so, yeah you know he transferred over from wisconsin as well so you got here first then he went into the transfer portal but uh what were some of your conversations like with him when he first decided that he wanted to make a change yeah that was obviously we had the upper hand there in that recruiting process and i want it's not so much i don't think relationships as i was here and i was there so i knew what julius was looking for i knew that what he wanted to do because of my previous relationship but i also was here so i knew the culture i knew the program and again coming back to our motto of running the ball and first and so that all fit for him so I think the part of the relationship was just he knew I wasn't telling him just what he wanted to hear in the recruiting process that I knew it and I think he's you know showing that he's done a great job and he's physical hopefully we'll get him back healthy and get his toe where it needs to be and have a really strong second half of the season uh, overall, just looking at this running back room, including the quarterbacks, it's yeah. got to be an embarrassment of riches for you. It really is. Like I mean that. Like We're blessed to have a situation of this many skill plus the offensive line playing the way they are. And really now it's just, just it's try to stay healthy, get healthy, and hit that the peak at the right time and stay being physical. At the end of the day, when you really watch our film, our best asset besides the athletes we have is every position is physical. Every one of them. Wide receivers, tight ends, running backs when they have to block for the quarterback or in the passing game, and then the O-line. Like, they're a physical group, and I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't want to play us when we're playing our best football. Well, and the team that's got to play next is Sacramento State, so big trip out there here for Week 8. What are some of the keys for this game against Sac State? Well, sleep in. There's this a late one, and they're a really good team. They do a lot of different things on defensive side of the ball on the D line, and they'll they play a little bit different style and how they take on blocks, and they'll bring a lot of pressure and movement. So we got to really work on that. Where last week, and in a few of our games, guys would just play their gaps, and so you knew kind of where they were going to be once the ball was snapped. So this week will give us a different challenge that we have to be really good on our communication. We have to be really good with our eyes. So what you think you have for a block might change really fast because of all the line movements. So they can get us. So we'll have a lot of stuff we had to work on all week long. And hopefully the guys at the end of the day, though, still play fast and physical. When they do that, there'll be holes somewhere. All right, Coach, appreciate the time and good luck. Thank you very much. I right, appreciate the time from Coach Johnson. Time for a break. And when we get back, we're chatting with head coach Brent Vegan as we get ready for the matchup between number two, Montana State, and number three, Sacramento State. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. 
The Gallatin Valley is thriving, and Bozeman is not only a destination for families to live, work, and play, it's also a destination for businesses. The Bozeman Area Chamber of Commerce is a great way to get involved in Bozeman's thriving business community. The Bozeman Chamber Economic Partnership assists existing businesses through expansion, grows new companies in our community, and attracts fresh opportunities for Gallatin County. Bozeman, our community, a jewel among the Northern Rockies. For more information, go to bozemanchamber.com. Town & Country Foods is a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics. As a locally owned company, we believe the benefit of buying local helps support the local economies in southwest Montana. Our stores offer great selections of items you need every day, including organic, specialty foods, fresh meats and produce, along with incredible selections from our bakery and deli departments. Town & Country Foods is 100% employee owned and serves southwest Montana with eight locations. Visit your local Town & Country Foods today. Go Cats! It's the season of home improvement, and Williams Plumbing will help you tackle the big stuff. Are old roots clogging your sewer line? Williams has the tools to fix it. Have you checked your septic system lately? We have the knowledge and experience to maintain or repair it. Looking to install a yard hydrant? We'll do it promptly and professionally. Don't sweat the big stuff. Call Williams Plumbing today. When a power line has fallen down, it can be downright dangerous and even deadly. That's because downed lines can still energize the ground and objects around them. To help keep you and others safe, Northwestern Energy says stay at least 35 feet or the length of a semi-truck away from a downed power line and anything the line is touching. You should always assume the line is live, and if you see a downed line, immediately call 911 and warn others. Northwestern Energy, delivering a bright future. The Rocking R Bar is your home for everything Bobcat football. Whether the cats are home or away, we are your game day headquarters. Swing by for great food specials like the Sunny Holland Burger from our new grill, Hail Mary's. We also serve the best Montana craft beer and liquor the state has to offer. So grab a pint, something to eat, and one of our very own Rocking R Bar liquors because it's a great time to be a Bobcat at the Rocking R Bar. Hi, former Bobcat, Lou Salcedo for Western Motors. Our team proudly supports MSU Bobcat football both on and off the field. I want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck for the season. Western Motors has spent the last 22 years serving Gallatin County and supporting over 40 local organizations. We have been recognized as the best in Bozeman and Gallatin's greatest several years running. As Montana's number one volume dealer, we are hired in all departments across eight of our dealerships. We have plenty of new and used inventory ready for purchase. Good luck, Bobcats. Western Motors, community born, community driven. All right, here we go. Week 8, it's Montana State and Sac State. It's the battle of the two reigning Big Sky champs. I'm Keaton Gologly alongside head coach Brent Vegan. Uh, coach, let's start with Connor Moore, put on the watch list for the Jerry Rice Award for the top freshman around the country. An exciting watch list to get on, but uh, just tell me a little bit about Connor Moore's development this year and what you've liked out of his play. He's played real well. I think that's, that's the best thing, and, and, and I think development-wise, you know, we got him in a few games last year. He continued to put on weight to get to a point where, you know, he could go out there and, and you, know, you hardly recognize that he's a freshman. He's been, you know, real steady. He's a, he's a really good athlete for his, his size. He's a really smart kid and, and uh, you know, doesn't get rattled. Um, so, you know, he's out there amongst a, guy, a bunch of guys that are, you know, I think way more veteran than him, but, uh, you know, he's fit right in. Well, he'll be protecting for both quarterbacks today, Chambers and Malott, both back. First time since week two, we'll see them two together. Uh, what's the plan going into this game for those two guys early? Well, I, they're, they're both full go, obviously. And, you know, last week we, um, we moderated, I guess, Tommy's usage uh, to some degree. But, yeah, they're both full go. Um, you know, I, I, I think right now it's whatever we can do to win football games, and that's going to be a combination of those two, uh, probably different than we've seen before. Uh, you know, uh, more art than science. So to say this is exactly how it's going to play out, I, I, I'd be getting ahead of myself. But uh, there's some, there's, there's, there'll be some situational aspect to it, substitution-wise. But really, you know, play them both, use them both, and, uh, you know, hopefully they both lead us to victory. Uh, Julius Davis didn't get into that last game uh, uh, against Cal Poly, but overall, how's that running back room looking going into this game? Yeah, uh, progress. Uh, Julius is back. I think it helped to, to sit him out last week like we did. Um, Scott Trey Humphrey is, is back in the mix. Uh, Jared White's going, but then, you know, we, we are without Elijah Elliott this week. So, uh, 
you know, you take two steps forward in a sense with two guys coming back and then, you know, one guy removed. Um, Elijah will be out there for, out for a little while now. I know it's promising what uh, is in front of Lane, you know, being able to rejoin us here on the practice field next week. And, you know, I, I, I like, you know, we get Adam Smith, uh, Adam Smith, Adam Jones in that game and uh, he did quite well last week. All right, well, we're looking for this matchup against Sacramento State for this matchup against the Hornets since 2019. We've all said it all week long, but now this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, tell me a little more about their defense, particularly their defensive backs. A couple of guys have been playing well back there. What have you seen the way they cover the ball in their defensive back area? Well, a mixture of uh, man and zone, you know, probably a little bit like us. Um, you know, they, they aren't afraid to put their corners in situations where they're covering man to man. Um, safeties uh, can be as aggressive as they need to be in, in, in run fits, those type of things. A pretty athletic group. Uh, been, been impressed with, uh, you know, their ability to just keep the ball in front of them. And when, you know, when it does spit out, they've been able to tackle it pretty well. Uh, on the offensive side, Marshall Martin, the All-American tight end coming back. He's kind of been, been slowed down from injury, but it looks like he's kind of a full go. What makes him so good and so strong? Well, I think uh, for a guy his size, he's got really good length. He's uh, he's a really athletic. I know he came in initially as a running back, um, you know, and that kind of speaks to his athleticism at the high school level. So, you know, uh, they they found more ways it seemed to get him involved last year. It's only a matter of time before they continue on that trend. But uh, you know, fast enough to to be able to stretch the field and obviously a big big target uh, in that short intermediate zone. Uh, and then finally, Caden Bennett, you know, their quarterback, a guy who's in his first year as a start, full-time starter for them. But uh, what are some of his main skills going into this game? Well, I think really athletic, I think, is the first first thing that you, you'd say. And that shows up uh, with his ability to extend plays. And he does a good job of extending plays and keeping his eyes downfield. Um, certainly the design quarterback run game is something that they'll utilize him in. And then, you know, uh, when he's thrown on rhythm, he's, he's shown that he can throw the football. So, you know, really good all-around quarterback. I know they've utilized two the last couple of years. And, and I think, you know, in one, they got a lot of the same aspects they had in those two in the previous couple of years. All right, well, here we go. Highly anticipated game today. How have the guys kind of handled just the, the maybe the little extra increased scrutiny going into a game like this? You know, I, I, I think our guys are going to be ready to go. Um, you know, we haven't made this week any different than any other week, and, and I think that's important. Uh, but I think they know what's at, what's at stake each one of these games. Um, as you stack up, uh, you know, wins, I suppose they get a little bit bigger, but you still have to play within the game that's in front of you, and that's uh, Sac State today. All right, well, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, and you get an opportunity for that today. Coach, appreciate the time. Absolutely. Go Cats. All right, we'll take a break. When we get back, we'll get you starting too deep and the kickoff coming up at the top of the hour between Montana State and Sacramento State. For head coach Brent Vegan, I'm Keith. Keaton Gologli. This is Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Bobcat Football is finally here, and the Ridge Athletic Clubs are ready for a great season at the Ridge. We offer a beautiful facility with a basketball complex, group exercise studios with over 200 weekly classes, a pool, safe and fun child care, new functional fitness spaces, large comfortable locker rooms, and the best way in Bozeman to bring your fitness to the next level. Stop by for a tour after a game and see why the Ridge has been Bozeman strong for more than 20 years. Go Bobcats! Are you looking for a rewarding career right here in Montana? Applied Materials is located in Kalispell, Montana, and is hiring for engineering and manufacturing roles. The leader in materials engineering solutions used to produce virtually every new chip and advanced display in the world. Applied Materials offers top-notch wages and full benefits on day one. Go to AppliedMaterials.com careers and search for the jobs by location to find your next career with Applied Materials. Our innovations make possible a better future. Equal opportunity employer. Whoever said, good things come to those who wait, clearly never ordered in the McDonald's app. Just order ahead in the app, and you can pick up when you get here. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Now football fans can score big, because on game day, get a 20-piece Chicken McNuggets for just $5 when you order ahead on the app. Now that's a W. Valid once per day through December 1st, 2023. I participate in McDonald's, must opt into rewards. Nicely done, Beef. When football fans everywhere cheer for their team, they're cheering for you too. Because your savory snacks fuel the gridiron battle. With your tasty sliders, hearty chilies, and drool-worthy steaks, every option is an MVP. Most valuable protein. So gather around the TV and get cooking at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. 
College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. No matter how far you may go, there's always one just down the road. Town Pump, who pump it up? Pump it up. Town of Pump is excited to once again sponsor the Brawl of the Wild Rivalry Series between Montana State and the University of Montana. Look for special Brawl of the Wild promotions throughout the year at your local Town Pump. Back in Sacramento, getting set for Montana State and Sacramento State today, a top five matchup in the big sky. All right, time now to take a look at our starting two deeps in for Montana State, that offensive line running out the same as it has all year. Connor Moore at the left tackle position. Rush Reimer as the left guard. Justice Perkins is the center. Omar Ibedian is the right guard, and Marcus Weir is the right tackle. Uh, Tommy Malott will start with Sean Chambers in there. Plenty today. Julius Davis a full go with Jared White listed as the number two running back, but of course we'll definitely see Scott Trey Humphrey today, and Trayton Pickering is starting at the tight end position. Uh, we did hear that Derek Snell was limping off a little bit after warm-ups. We don't have that confirmed, but something to keep an eye out for as we get ready to go today. For Sacramento State, their defensive line the, on the ends, it's Deshaun Lynch and Lee Fashola uh, on the inside, Tyler Hardeman and Jet Stanley. Uh, in the middle as their linebackers are Armand Bailey playing the middle linebacker position. Brock Mathers the other linebacker and their nickelback is Darian Pollard. Uh, at the cornerback position, Caleb Nelson and Dylan Juniel. And then their safeties are Cameron Broussard and Kylan Ross. Over on the other side for Montana State's defense, it's Brody Greeby, Sebastian Valdez, Blake Schmidt, and Ben Seymour. At the linebacker positions, Nolan Askelson and Danny Louis Lakepa. Lavelle Price Jr. is out today. We're expecting to see Kendrick Bailey and Miles Jackson in that position. At the quarterback position, Woodard and Johnson, and the safeties are Rylan Orr and Drew Polidor. For Sacramento State, their starting wide receivers are Devin Gandy, Carlos Hill, and Jared Gibson. Uh, at the tight end position, the All-American, Marshall Martin. Their quarterback is Caden Bennett. We are waiting to see if Marcus Fulcher is out there to start today as their running back. He's missed the last two games, but he is a load in the backfield, a very, very good running back. So we'll see if we see him today. Otherwise, we'll also see Ezra Mullaney and Elijah Tau Tolliver. Uh, on the offensive line, this is where they had a few things shift around a bit for them. Their left tackle, starting left tackle is out, so it's Ivan Garza there. Jackson Slater at the left guard position. Nathan Meyer is the center. Kendall Riley is the right guard. And uh, Aiden Meek moves from right guard to right tackle today. All right, we're taking a break. When we come back, we got the kickoff between Montana State and Sacramento State. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. Hello, this is Bill Coffey, CEO of Stockman Bank. We are a Montana-born company, family-owned, and uniquely focused on meeting the financial needs of all Montanans. As we celebrate our 70th anniversary, we remain independent and committed to traditional Western values with the power of local management and decision-making and homegrown community service. Stop by any of our locations across Montana and discover the Stockman difference. Stockman Bank, Montana's brand of banking member, FDIC. As a Montana parent, I want to be at my best for my child. I learned that if I want to be at my best, then I need to take care of myself. ParentingMontana.org has podcast episodes about taking care of my own health and well-being, improving my relationship with my parenting partner, and supporting my child's physical and mental health. I found the podcast to be informative, relatable, and I can tune in whenever I have time. ParentingMontana.org, tools for your child's success. Brought to you by SAMHSA and Montana DPHHS. What do you wear to work? It probably depends on what you do, but our guess is that you wear clothes. Because you wouldn't use a welding torch naked, or drive a forklift naked, or dunk potatoes in boiling oil naked, right? But if you're working without workplace safety, you might as well be naked. Cover up with a little help from Montana State Fund, Montana's first choice for workers' comp insurance. Workplace safety, you're naked without it. Learn more at safemt.com. 
Montana Farm Bureau. We are the farmers and ranchers who raise the juicy beef on your tailgate grill, who grow the wheat for your fresh burger bun, and who harvest the barley for the cold beer in your bobcat koozie. We are the grassroots voice of agriculture, advocating for farmers and ranchers across our state. Farm Bureau is leading Montana toward a future with a prosperous agriculture economy and thriving rural communities. Join Montana Farm Bureau at mfbf.org and go Bobcats. Found your dream home but dread having to move? Call Mesa Moving and Storage. We make moving fun. We work hard so you don't have to. We are here to help take the stress out of moving your home or business. If there's a move in your future, contact Mesa to handle the details so you can enjoy the experience. Mesa, the largest United Agency family in Montana, is ready to take care of all your moving and storage needs. Call the friendly folks at Mesa, 406-285-7033. Universal Athletic has been a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics for over 45 years. Check out their great selection of Bobcat apparel and accessories for all your game day needs. Shop in store at their North 7th Avenue location or online at shop.msubobcats.com for everything you need to cheer on your Bobcats. Universal Athletic, a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics for over 45 years. Go Cats! On the Bobcat Sports Network from Learfield, Bobcat Football is brought to you by Town Pump, the exclusive sponsor of the Brawl of the Wild, and by DoorTech. DoorTech is raising the door on quality. Now is the time. Is the time. This is the place. The place. Wow. Running down the left sideline, breaking it wide. There's no reason we can't be in position to go out there and win every time we take the field. A special teams touchdown for Montana State. We have to have a clear vision that going after national championship is what we're all about. Put the exclamation point on a championship season. Kickoff is just moments away from the first Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Here's the voice of the Bobcats, Keaton Galogli. The long-awaited battle between the two reigning Big Sky champs is finally here. It's number two, Montana State University. Uh, Bobcats taking on the third-ranked Sacramento State Hornets. Montana State and Sac State last year each went 8-0 oh in the Big Sky, and today they finally renew their rivalry for the first time since 2019. The Bobcats have taken the field in their road white uniforms. The Cowboy from Melstone, Brody Greeby, bringing out the Montana flag. And it's Kendrick Bailey bringing out the American flag in front of a tremendous Bobcat crowd. For Sacramento State, they have won three Big Sky Championships since 2019. They did not play in 2020, so they have now won back-to-back Big Sky Championships. For the Bobcats, sharing the championship a year ago with this Hornets team, And if you go back to the beginning of 2021 to now, both of these teams are 18 and one in the big sky. And we finally get to decide who the better team is right now on the field in Sacramento. I'm Keaton Gologli alongside RJ Fitzgerald up in the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Dan Davies is our sideline analyst. Dylan McPhail is uh, our on-site engineer today. And uh, Will Gordon is back in the studios tonight. All right, RJ, here we go. Finally, at long last, everybody's been waiting for this one for so, so long, and it's finally here. Well, it's been a long wait all day for these players. They've been fired up. They've just been slowly letting that water boil, and that thing is definitely above 212 degrees Fahrenheit (laughs) because the Bobcats are fired up and ready to go tonight. All right, our Wheat Montana weather report today, 65 degrees, clear, and a very light breeze. We've got the coin toss now. Which way do you want to kick? Switch sides. Get the announcement of the Sacramento State has won the toss and is elected to receive. Gentlemen, have a good game. All right, here we go. So Sacramento State will receive to begin things. Dan Davies is our man down on the sideline today. Dan, how are we doing down there? We are doing awesome. This uh, this two game streak on the road here at Sacramento State and University of Idaho next week has been on the on the radar here for a long time. Yeah. It's finally here to be able to uh, 
bat last year, both co-champions uh, at, at the Big Sky Conference, and now get to do it on the field because they couldn't play last year. Yeah, and uh, Dan, behind you as well, looks like there's a lot of Gold Rush t-shirts over there, quite the contingent of Bobcat fans. What are you seeing in, in terms of how the Bobcats have traveled today? Yeah, it's uh, the Bobcats are traveling well, as they always do, and Sacramento uh, is a fun place to come down. Lots of things to do. Of course, there's great weather here as well, so the, the fans are here in force. All right, let's uh, break down why Sac break down Sacramento State and see why they're going to be in hot water today. Brought to you by Mountain Hot Tub. Mountain Hot Tub is your Montana's largest hot tub dealer since 1979. Your authorized hot spring spa dealer with locations in Bozeman, Butte, and Helena. All right, RJ, give us a couple of the top line keys and, and what this Sacramento State team is all about. You know, Sacramento State, they're all about their offense and they're all about their front seven. Offensively, they're electric. Their quarterback is a good football player in the Big Sky Conference. They like to put up a lot of points, so it's going to be a challenge for the Bobcat defense. And then defensively, that front seven for Sacramento State consistently is producing NFL-type talent, so the Bobcats are going to have their hands full, especially at offensive line. Sacramento State last year went 12-1, and 8-0 in the Big Sky. They were the number two seed in the playoffs, but they lost an incredible game here against Incarnate Word, 66-63, to have their season ended at home in the playoffs again. It's happened three times since 2019, having their season ended in the playoffs at home and now coming in today they are five and one and two and one in the big sky the bobcats also five and one they are three and oh in the big sky montana state is ready to kick it off this is an all-time jersey battle as well bobcats in the road white with the navy blue pants white helmets with the blue and gold racing stripe and the block gold m on the side of the helmets while sacramento state is in their all black uniforms with gold numbers and lettering and a green helmet. Brandon Hall gets into this with a right-footed kick, and he bounces it off the tee of Hornets, written in white, in the gold end zone. So a touchback to get things started. Brandon Hall has been quite the weapon to remove those opposing uh, kick return games. And now Sacramento State will go to work, starting at their own 25-yard line, led by Caden Bennett, the fifth-year junior, who has transferred twice, started at Boise State, went to Nevada, and came over here three years ago. He's running things today, and Marcus Fulcher, their leading running back, is out there. He's missed the last two games with an injury, but he comes in with four rushing touchdowns in four games, six total touchdowns scored. First snap of the game is here. Shotgun snap. Caden Bennett looking to throw. Fires over the middle. That is caught at the 30-yard line, and he's tackled after diving forward up to the 31-yard line. So that'll bring up second and short as Devin Gandy gets the first reception of the day. It looks like Sac State's going to go a little up-tempo to start the game. Quick game pass to get things going tonight. They average 174 yards on the ground, 233 yards through the air. Caden Bennett out of the shotgun formation on second down, takes the snap, hands it off. Fulcher spins off a man at the line of scrimmage, cuts back to his right, turns up field the 40-yard line, and he's forced out of bounds as a flag is thrown in the backfield. It is a first down for now, but let's see what the flag is. And you can see the elusiveness of Marcus Fulcher, 5'9", 215, and he moves like a cat. Here's the call. Holding, number 62, the offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. Well, that's a big call, but right there, you can still see Marcus Fulcher and what he can do. Well, you see what Marcus Fulcher can do for this Sacramento State offense. He's an electric guy, all big sky type of talent. Made two Bobcats miss. Made a guy like Rylan Orr, who's been a sure-handed tackler, miss already. So um, it looks like Sac State's going to be up-tempo on offense, try to get things going offensively because they know what the Bobcats can do on offense, and they know this is going to be a shootout type of football game. I think there's actually a Bobcat down. There is, and it is Danny Louis Lakepa, I believe. Yeah, Louis Lakepa's getting up, and he is very gingerly onto his feet, and they are walking him along in that uh, on that Sacramento State sideline. Uh, that is a scary look. He, his left hand is kind of dangling right now as he's being helped uh, along on the sideline. I, I think Danny's hurt pretty good here. Yeah, uh, He's going up on the Sacramento State training table. So they're throwing the hood over him. But we oh. couldn't really see what happened, but that was on the sideline, and that uh, looked like the forearm. Yeah, it, that's definitely an unfortunate injury. Uh, anytime anyone gets injured, especially Danny Yu, does so much for this football team. Hopefully he's going to be all right. He's a tough guy. He looked like he was in some pain there. So second and 14, here's the snap. They hand it off. Fulcher try, or excuse, oh yeah, Fulcher tried to run right, nowhere to go, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the Bobcats that time. Keeping contained as he was trying to bounce it to the outside. A marginal gain, and that'll bring up third and very long for this powerful Sac State offense, which averages 30 points a game. 
Well, it looks like we bring Kenneth Iden in the game. We like to see that from the Bobcat front, especially in these third and long situation. Pass obvious. Miles Jackson is in at the nickelback position with the injured Lavelle Price. You can hear some of the Bobcat fans trying to make some noise on the opposite side from where we are behind the Bobcat bench. Sac State in the black uniforms with the uh, dark green helmets ready to go on on third and long. Shotgun snap. Ben, ben, uh, Bennett throws over the middle. It is caught, but a quick tackle that time ben by Nolan Askelson, shy of the first down marker, and it looks like Sacramento State will have to punt, so a good job by the Bobcats to get a three and out with a little help from a penalty. Well, and Bennett finds Marshall Martin across the middle. That's going to be a huge matchup. Makeda O'Reilly covering the tight end for Sacramento State. That's going to be a big matchup for the linebackers, for the Cats, is, is covering a guy like Marshall Martin all night. We were wondering who would return punch for the Bobcats today with Trimble returning, and it is Ty McCullough who is back. Did drop a couple of punts last week, but also returned one for a 65-yard touchdown. So Sacramento State ready to kick this thing away. Here's the snap, right-footed kick. Ooh, some pressure there. Low line drive kick, bounces at the 40-yard line, kicks to the 30, rolling along the right hash mark, and that will stop at about the 28-yard line, and that is where Montana State will take over for their first possession of the game. 12.45 to go. We're in the first quarter. No score between Montana State and Sacramento State. A second top five matchup for Montana State this season. They lost that close game at number one, South Dakota State. And now today going back to work against number three, Sac State. Tommy Mallott is out there with Julius Davis as his running back. As Bobcats take over at their own 28-yard line for their first offensive possession of the day. One receiver right, two to the left. From the shotgun formation in the middle of the field. Snap, chest high. Malott fakes two hands off, pressure in the backfield, and he's tripped up back at the 20-yard line after an eight-yard loss. They fake two handoffs, and a great play by Brock Mather for the sack. Well, second straight week, the Bobcats start off on offense with some sort of reverse action. Um, I did notice that Derek Snell is indeed in street clothes, so that's something to watch as the Bobcats wanted to have a lot of two and three tight end formations tonight. Uh, Snell, we think, got hurt during the, uh, the pregame warm-ups. Three receivers spread out to the right side now in a shotgun formation. Snap on second 18. Hand off. No, he fakes it. Uh, Tommy Mallott running up the middle, able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. An eight-yard carry for Tommy Mallott, who's got an opportunity to pass Chris Murray for the uh, second most rushing yards by a quarterback, and he's approaching 2,000 career rushing yards. So now it's third and 10 for Montana State, playing a bit behind the chains here on their first possession of the day. Empty backfield. Three receivers to the right, two spread out to the left. Jared White come, has come in, and he's spread out on the far side on the near side. Third down, snap, Malat standing tall in the pocket. Fires over the middle, caught by Ty McCullough, he's got the first down. Caught at the first down marker, able to turn up field for an additional two yards. He's up to the 40-yard line, a first interstate bank, first down for the Bobcats. Really great maturity from Tommy Malat sitting through his reads, finding Ty McCullough moving the sticks. Thomas and Tavion Williams out to the right side. Pickering and McCullough to the left. Julius Davis back in there on the first down snap with Tommy Mallott working on the left hash mark at the 40-yard line. Bobcats get the first first down of the day. No score, 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's the snap. Mallott looking to throw. Fires over to the right side. Cleveland Thomas makes a two-hand catch at the 50-yard line for a first down. Turns up field to the 45, and he's forced out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So into plus territory. Another nice catch by Cleveland Thomas, his 16th of the year, leading the squad. And that's a throw possible from Tommy Mallott all the way across the field to Cleveland Thomas. That's a route that they practice in the summertime all year. Um, it's just a tremendous throw by Tommy Mallott. Looks like we're bringing in Sean Chambers. Uh, looks like Ryan Lonergan is, is playing a little tight end tonight for the Bobcats. Yeah, Lonergan's in there. Marquis Johnson, McCullough, and Thomas. Here's the snap. Chambers, designed quarterback keeper. He runs up the middle, puts his head down, and gets up to the 35-yard line. Healthy gain of seven yards, and that'll bring up second and three in the middle of the field for the Bobcats in plus territory. Well, just quarterback A-gap power from the Bobcats going to be interesting to see as Derek Snell has traditionally been the kick out guy on power and that is a very huge role in running a gap power successfully Ryan Lonergan does a really good job in that first play of kicking out the defensive end Lonergan spread out to the right side Marquis Johnson Tavion Williams Ty McCullough spread out to the left side now Lonergan in motion from right to left on second and three with John Chambers in the shotgun formation here's the snap 
Chambers running to his right on design keeper. He turns up field to numbers. He's got the first down, and he carries the pile up to the 25-yard line. Sean Chambers had just eight carries in the last two games, going for 200 yards and four touchdowns. He's got two quick carries today, and he picks up a first interstate bank first down as the Bobcats are up now officially to the 26-yard line, knocking on the Rose Hours red zone. Yeah, bringing it time in a lot, a little bit more quick game. Malad along with Marquis Johnson in as the running back position on the right hash mark on first down. Shotgun snap. Hands it off. Marquis Johnson running left. He's got room outside the hash mark. Marquis Johnson cuts at the 10 to the sideline, tiptoes along the sideline, and Johnson is out of bounds at the five-yard line. A nearly 20-yard gain for Marquis Johnson on a true handoff, and the Bobcats are into the Rose Hours red zone after a first interstate bank first down, but looks like this might be coming back. Penalty. Yep. First down. Holding on Montana State, and it's coming back. Well, and that's a tough one. Tavian Williams playing receiver, blocking his tail off on the edge, getting the ball to a guy like Marquis Johnson, who has game-breaking speed. Just an unfortunate thing for the Bobcats, but at the receiver in position, you will take a hold down the field at times. It's still a positive gain for the Bobcats. They're driving in the red zone, doing whatever they want offensively. So the Bobcats... Facing first and three after the gain, but also the holding penalty. Two receivers to the right. Julius Davis is the running back. Malott takes the snap. He fakes the handoff. Malott running to his left. Not a lot to go. Slips through one man, but he is tackled just across the 20-yard line. It's about a yard gain, and it'll be second and very short here for the Bobcats as they get back into the Rose Hours red zone. Well, Coach Housewright had a quarterback run to the Sacramento State boundary but instead of Derek Stell traditionally blocking for Tommy Malott, it was Ryan Lonergan. Ryan Lonergan was unable to make the block on the Sac State cornerback. So that's going to be a huge matchup as Derek Snell is usually at the point of attack. So it's a huge game for Ryan Lonergan. Sean Chambers back in there on second and one at the 18-yard line for Montana State. He takes the snap, a design run, going to his left, undercut up at the 15-yard line. Good tackle inside, but the Bobcats able to pick up. Looks like the first down. Double check here, but it looks like he's right on the mark, and he did. He got the first down. Needed to, got to, and the Bobcats have a first interstate bank first down. Well, Sac State was right on the play. They read it out perfectly. Sean Chambers on a Sac State defender, one-on-one in the hole, and Sean Chambers just fell forward for the first down, keeps his sticks moving. Let's see what the Bobcats have dialed up, keeping two tight ends in the game. Thomas and McCullough out to the left side. Marquis Johnson is the deep running back. Sean Chambers is under center on the left hash mark on first and 10 from the 15-yard line. McCullough in motion from left to right. Here's the snap, turns left, hands it off. Marquis Johnson trying to cut it to his left, nowhere to go. Now he's pestered in the backfield, and he is spun down for a big loss. Nowhere to go. This Sacramento State defense containing on the left side, and a big loss for the Bobcat offense. That'll be a loss of six yards, second and long. Yeah, it was a... Anytime you're in the red zone, you do not want to have negative plays. It really sets you back. You got to get you get out of your offensive game plan a little bit. Marquis Johnson has just got to sometimes just cram it in there, get a no-yard loss instead of a six- or seven-yard loss. Second and 16, so a six-yard loss. Pistol formation on the left hash mark with Julius Davis with the running back. Tommy Malott now takes the snap. He hands it off. Davis runs up the middle, gets through the line of scrimmage, and he is tackled forward up to the 15, call it the 16-yard line. And so back to about the original line of scrimmage. It's third and 11 for this Montana State offense. Malott's going to stay out there. Yeah, Malott's going to stay out there in a lot of these traditional third and long situations, traditional passing down situations, talking with Coach Housestrike this morning. So let's see what the Bobcats, if they can get maybe five, six yards here to give themselves a manageable go for it. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. Montana State with the football facing third and long in the red zone. Snap to Malott. He keeps it, runs up the middle, and he's hit right in the middle of the field. Gets a one-yard gain, and he's stopped on the left hash mark at the 15-yard line, and the Bobcats will have a field goal opportunity here for Brendan Hall. Design quarterback run from Coach Housewright and the Bobcats. Sac State was right on the play, swelled up when their team needed him to, forcing a Bobcat field goal. Uh, really could stand from Sacramento State to start things off. Sac State allowing just 22 points per game. That's good for third in the big sky. So Montana State with a field goal attempt here of approximately 32 or 33 yards. Sullivan snap, Abshire's hold. Right-footed kick by Brendan Hall is up, and that kick is no good. He missed it right, and the Bobcats, after a long 61-yard drive, 
over 11 plays are unable to convert for points. So Montana State had some nice balance. They had some big plays, but they get a big zero on that first drive of the game as Brendan Hall misses a field goal. We're going to take a break. Five minutes, 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score between Montana State and Sac State. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. First West Insurance, a Montana-born company, has been helping friends and neighbors protect what they love most since 1972. From home and businesses to farm and ranch to life and health insurance, our team is dedicated to finding solutions that work for you. We believe in creating relationships as deep as our Montana roots. First West, your local insurance agency. Bobcat fans, Lithia Dodge of Billings, Montana's number one new car dealer and proud partner of Montana State Bobcats, has the new truck you've been looking for in stock now and ready for immediate delivery. Come test drive a new 2023 Ram 1500 during power days at Lithia Dodge Did in Billings. See, see why we're Montana's number one well, new car dealer. Based on 2020 and 2021 yeah, and 2022 new done. vehicle registration okay. data. Yeah, that know. doesn't feel good. You would know. We'll Whoever come back to you, Dan, and uh, see what you know. And then you can tell us that. Make. Clearly never ordered in the McDonald's app. Just order ahead in the app, and you can pick up when you get here. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Now football fans can score big. Because on game day, get a 20-piece Chicken McNuggets for just $5 when you order ahead on the app. Now that's a W. Valid once per day through December 1st, 2023. I participate in McDonald's. Must opt into rewards. Kendall Ford Lincoln of Bozeman from Sales to Service. Our focus is making sure you get a great experience and a great deal. Stop by your Ford truck headquarters or visit KendallFordBozeman.com. 5.18 to go in the first quarter. Montana State and Sac State, a top five matchup. We are scoreless as the Bobcats had a 13-play, 57-yard drive that was ended with a 33-yard field goal miss from Brendan Hall. Uh, Dan Davies is down on the sideline. Dan, did you see what happened to Danny and Louis LeCap on that first drive? Yeah, yeah. Danny Yu is, uh, went out on that side, Sacramento State sideline there. Looks like he's got an arm injury of some sorts and is doubtful to return today. All right, that's a big loss, so we'll see plenty of Mikado Riley and Nolan Askelson today, and Cole Bullock should be the next guy up off the bench. Well, yeah, it's good that you have um, a guy like Mikado Riley that steps in is certainly a huge piece of this football team, but when you have two of your captains out and you can make arguments for two of the better football players in the entire Big Sky Conference and Danny Yu and Derek Snell out, it certainly presents a huge challenge for Montana State here tonight. And you're missing Lavelle Price Jr. today as well. So that's a lot in that second level for this Bobcat defense. That is not there today. Miles Jackson is in at the nickelback position right now for Montana State with the injured Lavelle Price. Hopefully it's not going to be too long for him. 518 to go in the first quarter. No score. Sacramento State, their second possession of the day. They went three and out on the first opportunity. From the left hash mark, Caden Bennett at the 20-yard line takes the snap. He fires over the middle. That is caught up at the 30-yard line, and he's upended by Drew Polidor quite quickly, but quick pitch and catch, and that is a first down for Sacramento State. The Sacramento State is just going to keep this tempo, keep with that RPO offense. Caden Bennett's going to read how the Bobcat defense plays. They can hit some big plays, but they do a nice job in that intermediate game. Here's the snap. Bennett being chased, running to the outside, outside the numbers. Turns up field, and he angles out of bounds as he was being chased by Blake Schmidt. Gets a positive gain, and that'll bring up second and long after a three-yard gain. So second and seven for Sac State. It's going to be a huge challenge for the Bobcat defensive line to contain Caden Bennett and keep him inside the pocket as we saw in that last play. Caden Bennett, the leading rusher for this team. 418 gross yards. Here's the snap. Fires over to the right side, caught by Grover. Upfield at the numbers, and he's hit hard from underneath by McCade O'Reilly and from up top by Miles Jackson. And Grover able to pick up another first down. A pair of first downs for Sac State on this drive, and they're up to the 41-yard line approaching midfield. Yeah, Caden Bennett just doing a good job of taking what the defense has given him. No score between the Bobcats and the Hornets. Here's the snap, turns right, hands it off. Fulcher up the middle along the right, hash mark has space. He's got the first down, he's tackled by Drew Polidor as he gets the cross the 50-yard line up to the 45-yard line in plus territory. And Sac State's getting moving and grooving on the offensive side now. Well, Sac State's a confidence team 
on the offensive side of the football, and, and they're kind of rolling against this Bobcat defense right now. And now an empty backfield with three receivers spread out to the left side, one receiver to the right on the right hash mark. Here's the snap to Bennett, looking to throw. Fires over the middle. That is caught by Fulcher at the 40-yard line, turns Bennett forward and dives ahead up to the 37-yard line, and he stopped there, and that'll bring up second and two for Sacramento State in plus territory. Yeah, this is going to be a very stressful game for the Bobcat defense as Sac State is right up to the line of scrimmage every snap. Clock running at the 320 mark in the first quarter in a scoreless game between two top five teams in the big sky. Here's the snap, turns left, hands it off, Fulcher up the middle. He's got the first down and he stumbles forward as he's hit at the 29-yard line and that's where he goes down. Another first down for Sac State and they've got some gashing plays on the ground right now. Well, Marcus Fulcher has been electric so far. He is showing the burst that he has at that running back position. He's a thousand yard rusher in his career with 15 rushing touchdowns. Here's the snap on first down. Bennett fires over to the right side outside the numbers. That's caught by Gandy. Short of the first down, trying to cut back to the middle of the field. And he is down at the 24 yard line. So about a five yard gain. Yep, five yard gain. That's gonna bring up second and five for Sac State. Well now if you're Coach Willie Mack in the Bobcat defense, all you wanna do is hold Sac State to a field goal attempt. Clock running at the 2.30 mark in the first quarter. Sac State is moving on offense, and they're going quickly here. Two receivers left, one to the right. On the right, hash mark and a false start. Sac State's offensive line, which is a little retooled with an injury today. False start, number 62, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's Kendall Riley, who's in at the right guard position, coming in off the bench. So that's a big false start and backs him up for second and ten. Well, in years prior, Sac State's offensive line has remained intact for most of their football games. This year, it's been a little different. There's been injuries, so a lot of different combinations for the Sac State offensive line. That was a long wait for this game, but a short wait to get to the end of the first quarter with 2.20 to go in this first. Here's the second down snap. Bennett fires over the middle, caught by Grover near the first down marker. He stood up at that first down marker and is able to push forward for the extra yard, an 11-yard catch and run up to the 18-yard line, and Sac State makes their first trip to the red zone tonight. And Caden Bennett looks very, very comfortable running his offense against the Bobcat defense. Bobcat defense needs to swell up force a field goal attempt because Sac State has all the momentum at this moment. Sac State averaging 30 points per game over 400 yards of offense. First and 10 from the 18. Here's the snap. Hands it off. Fulcher up the middle. Puts his hat down and he picks up two yards. So second and eight up to the 16 yard line. Well and this is probably the first game since South Dakota State where it has been a significant challenge for the Bobcat defensive line. So far, Sac State is able to get a little push on this very, very talented Bobcats defensive line. And he's getting the ball out so quickly. It's hard to get pressure when it's a two, three-step drop and the ball is out of his hands. One to the left, one receiver to the right. Fulcher in on the right hash mark as the running back with Caden Bennett ready to go in the shotgun formation. Second down snap. Fakes the handoff, fires over the middle, that is knocked free. John Johnson reached out and knocked it away. Intended for Devin Gandy, who had a seam to the end zone. Third down. Well, that's a huge play from John Johnson. Stepping up in great coverage on the outside, man-to-man -man coverage. Does a really good job of jumping that route, getting a hand on the pass, forcing a huge third down. But, you know, Sac State has not substituted a lot. Therefore, Montana State has not been allowed to substitute. So the defensive line is definitely getting a, a little winded. Time to dig deep, third and eight for Sacramento State at the Bobcats 16 yard line. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, man in motion. Here's the snap, fakes the handoff, pitch to the right side. No, it's a reverse, running around the left side, inside the numbers, angles upfield, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Sacramento State, a little trickery that time, and they're able to sneak it into the end zone, and Sac State strikes first. That was just a great play design from Sac State. Uh, on the end around, getting the ball in a playmaker's hand, uh, Bobcat defense had no answer. There was no one. Uh, there was about six or seven Sacramento State offenders uh, and about one Bobcat jersey. So really good play design. Sac State strikes first tonight. Well, they'll line up the PAT. It was Danny Susedero, uh, Susedero who was able to bring that in. And this point after is up and good. So Sacramento State from 16 yards out. They strike first, and they lead Montana State 7 to nothing with 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much-needed life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. That's why at Firehouse Subs, they make their subs differently because their subs can make a difference. Sac State 7, Montana State nothing. 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. 
The Gallatin Valley is thriving, and Bozeman is not only a destination for families to live, work, and play, it's also a destination for businesses. The Bozeman Area Chamber of Commerce is a great way to get involved in Bozeman's thriving business community. The Bozeman Chamber Economic Partnership assists existing businesses through expansion, grows new companies in our community, and attracts fresh opportunities for Gallatin County. Bozeman, our community, a jewel among the Northern Rockies. For more information, go to bozemanchamber.com. Did you know that Southwest Montana has one of the highest per capita hot tub usage rates in the world? See what your friends and neighbors already know. How great it feels to soak under the big sky. Mountain Hot Tub has helped more friends and families relax in hot water than anyone in Montana. New hot tubs starting at less than $5,000. When you're ready to relieve stress and save money at the same time, come see us at the corner of Huffine and Goot Hill. Mountain Hot Tub, since 1979. There is a local ranch just outside of Boise, Idaho, that has masterfully bred Japanese Wagyu cattle with American Angus cattle. Now this American-style Wagyu beef is available to you and your family. Rosars presents Snake River American-style Wagyu beef. Snake River Farms beef is famously found in many exclusive five-star steak restaurants. Snake River Farms, available at your local neighborhood Rosars. Did you know that Mountain Hot Tub was voted Hot Tub Dealer of the Year for the best service after the sale since 1979? Visit Mountain Hot Tub at Goochill and Huffine. Sacramento State up 7 to nothing over Montana State with 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. And uh, Dan for Sac State, 11 plays, 80, 80 yards on that touchdown drive, and Sac State really had whatever they wanted. Yeah, they've got great quickness in the backfield, as you guys were commenting earlier. Ulcher has got great lateral quickness, and he makes some guys miss. And, of course, the, the quarterback, Bennett, is a talent in athletic ability as well. So it's, they're going to be a handful for this Bobcat defense here tonight. You know, RJ, you look at the balance on this drive as well. Sac State went 5 of 6 through the air for 42 yards, 5 rushes for 43 yards. So they were doing it through the air and on the ground. Well, and they play so fast yeah. offensively. They get it right up to the line of scrimmage, so you get winded as a defender. And it really presents a huge challenge in terms of getting communication to everyone from the D-line back to that secondary. So making sure everyone is on the same page is, is a difficult task just in and of itself. So it's going to be a huge challenge for the Bobcats. Um, you know, this is really the first adversity they have faced since South Dakota State. So let's see how the offense responds. I look for the Bobcats to just go right after Sac State. Sac State kicking away from left to right. Low line drive kick, and it is past Marquis Johnson on a hop, and it bounces into the end zone. Wanted to grab it, but if you're not 100% sure there, don't play it around. That was a funky bouncing ball. Well, and we've seen it a lot, especially down in California, where there's been a couple times where a ball has bounced in, the, in that back end on that kickoff, and you go down not thinking about it, and you take a knee you know, inside the 10-yard line. That, I know that happened a few years back at UC Davis, so it, it's certainly something to, to keep an eye on. All right, we're taking a break. 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. Bobcat offense coming out after this timeout. It's Sac State 7, Montana State nothing. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. Bobcat football is finally here, and the Ridge Athletic Clubs are ready for a great season at the Ridge. We offer a beautiful facility with a basketball complex, group exercise studios with over 200 weekly classes, a pool, safe and fun child care, new functional fitness spaces, large comfortable locker rooms, and the best way in Bozeman to bring your fitness to the next level. Stop by for a tour after a game and see why the Ridge has been Bozeman strong for more than 20 years. Go Bobcats! Did you know that Southwest Montana has one of the highest per capita hot tub usage rates in the world? See what your friends and neighbors already know. How great it feels to soak under the big sky. Mountain Hot Tub has helped more friends and families relax in hot water than anyone in Montana. New hot tubs starting at less than $5,000. When you're ready to relieve stress and save money at the same time, come see us at the corner of Huffine and Goot Hill. Mountain Hot Tub, since 1979. Montana State University, students shape signature experiences that take them across the state and into local communities. MSU is dedicated to its land-grant mission, integrating transformational learning, discovery, and service that improves lives. You'll find our students teaching across Montana, conducting research in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, or even creating small shelter prototypes to address homelessness. 
Montana State University. Think outside. The Bozeman Come On In Hotel and Suites is a proud sponsor of MSU Athletics and the Montana State Alumni Association. The Come On In allows you to escape the ordinary while enjoying their numerous hotel and guest room amenities. Visit ComeOnIn.com to book your stay today. Before the Bobcats take the field, let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. XL Country, 100.7, KXLB Churchill, Bozeman, Belgrade. Also in Livingston, on Translator K254AL. I'm Keaton Gologly alongside R.J. Fitzgerald with Dylan McPhail as our on-site engineer in the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Meanwhile, Dan Davies is our sideline analyst, and uh, Will Gordon is back in the studios. Bobcats trailing 7 to nothing against the Hornets with 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. Bobcats getting their first or excuse me, second offensive touch of the day. And uh, Tommy Mallott is in there in a pistol formation with Julius Davis as the running back behind him. Ty McCullough and Cleveland Thomas spread out to the left side. And this is a big, big possession for Montana State's offense. Yeah, let's look for the Bobcats to get back to the bread and butter of running the football. So ready to go from the 25-yard line. Pistol snap to Mallott, turns right, hands it off. Julius Davis up the middle, cuts back left, and he dives forward up to the 30-yard line, give him a 31-yard line, and that'll bring up second and four for Montana State. Nice run by Davis. Yeah, just a simple inside zone play for the Bobcats, running exactly what they like to run, a little inside zone, a little outside zone, some quarterback run. Let's see what Coach Housewright does, but I think he gets back to running the football right at Sac State. One receiver right, three to the left. Davis the running back on the right, hash mark on second and four officially. Shotgun snap, fakes the handoff. Malott runs up the middle by design. He's got the first down, cuts across at the 40-yard line. He's upended there at the 41-yard line, picking up the first interstate bank first down as Tommy Malott approaches 2,000 career rushing yards. Oh, and that is so hard for a defense. You have a guy like Julius Davis coming on an outside zone, and Tommy Mallott just reads the linebacker and cuts it up the middle as everyone from Sac State was following Julius and cuts it up for the first down. That will end the first quarter as Tommy Mallott puts, picks up that 10-yard rush. He now has 1,953 career rushing yards. We're taking a break. Head into the second quarter, Montana State driving but trailing 7 to nothing against Sacramento State. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Yes. Bobcat Football. For every adventure and every mishap, Bozeman Health provides expert, personalized care to each person. Going well beyond traditional health care, we're your partner in health and well-being, working together for your day-to-day -day and the decades to come. With care sites in Belgrade, Big Sky, and Bozeman, and with the only hospitals in the Gallatin Valley, Bozeman Health keeps your care close to home. Find a Bozeman Health provider today at bozemanhealth.org. Hey, Montana State football fans, get ready for some great football this season. One, two, three. It starts with filling your tank with Conoco gasoline to get you to every home and away game. Why? Because we love the Bobcats as much as you do. So hop in your car and go cheer them on. Don't forget to download and use the My Conoco app to save. Conoco, choose go. Proud sponsor of the Montana State Bobcats. At Montana's Ribbon Chop House, our guests and service are our top priorities. We've been serving Rocky Mountain community signature steaks, delicious seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs for over 20 years. Whether you're celebrating an important milestone, want to watch a big game, or just grab lunch with friends, we're your local spot that feels like home. We have locations in Bozeman, Billings, Butte, and Livingston, so you can enjoy Ribbon Chop House across Montana. We look forward to sharing a little Rocky Mountain hospitality with you soon. Town Pump, the exclusive sponsor of the exciting Brawl of the Wild, invites you to visit a Town Pump store on your way home for gas and snacks. Safe travels from Town Pump. We're getting ready to start the second quarter of play. Montana State 
on offense right now. They trail Sacramento State 7 to nothing. And, RJ, we're keeping a track of some stats here. Only one quarterback in Montana State history has rushed for over 2,000 yards. That was Troy Anderson, 2,260 in his career, some of that as a running back. Then it's Chris Murray with 1,984. And now Tommy Mallott with his effort tonight is up to 1,953. So Mallott could pass Murray here tonight. And a special milestone coming up for Mallott when he reaches 2,000 rushing yards. It really is. I mean, Tommy Mallott has meant so much for this football program. Uh, we saw what he did a couple years ago coming in, um, doing a wonderful job. He's had some adversity in his career. He's had a few injuries, but for him to be approaching 2,000 yards and joining company uh, with an athlete like Chris Murray and a guy like Troy Anderson who has done a lot of special things at the next level, it, it's really impressive, and it just speaks to Tommy Mallott. Yeah, Dan, when you take a look at what Tommy's trying to do here and become the second quarterback to reach 2,000 career rushing yards, what does that mean to this program in your eyes? Well, it's a, it's a tribute to him, the athletic ability that he possesses as a quarterback, not only as a passer, but he is one of the fastest guys on the team. He was last year as well, and uh, he, he's a tough out for the, any defense he faces here in the big sky. Also, Drew Powder walking back to the locker room night, right now, appearing to be injured. Bobcats first and 10 at the 41-yard line in their territory. Snap to Chambers, play action, looking to throw. Chambers steps up, tucks it, and he's tackled. Does get one yard, so they'll bring up second and nine, but a nice tackle by the defensive line of Sacramento State. Well, and the Bobcats had a play action set up to the Sac State sideline, to the boundary, to hit Trayton Pickering up the seam or Ryan Lonergan down by the numbers, but Sac State did a really good job on defense of responding and covering up the gaps, and Sean Chambers was able to at least get some positive yardage. Tyler Hardiman on the tackle. Tommy Blott back in there. Second and nine for Montana State. Ryan Lonergan in as the fullback with Derek Snell injured tonight. Here's the snap. Mallott hands it off. Julius Davis up the middle trying to push the pile. Not a ton to go, but get some good positive yards that time up to the 46-yard line, and that's going to bring up third and five for Montana State nearing midfield. Well, and Julius Davis is going to be a tough guy for Sacramento State to tackle all night. He loves running that A-gap power, and Ryan Lonergan did a really good job of kicking out the defensive end for Sac State, but it... Uh, once again, we've talked about it at nauseum that it's going to be very difficult for him to continue to do that. Two receivers left, two to the right. Davis the running back on third and five for Montana State at their own 46-yard line. Williams in motion from right to left. He joins McCullough and Thomas. Shotgun snap. Malat looking to throw. Under pressure, fires incomplete intended for Julius Davis. That pass a little wobbly and in and out of the two hands of Julius Davis. And that brings up fourth and five for Montana State and the punting unit is on its way out. Brendan Hall has been exquisite trying to pin teams deep. He's had a lot of control with that right foot, and he had two 50-yard punts last week, two of his three on the season. Well, this is going to be a huge punt to try to pin Sac State back within their own territory because Sac State has all the momentum. They operated well on offense the last time out, and the Cats have been sputtering on offense. Now, Tommy Sullivan ready to snap this to Brendan Hall. Right on the money, chest high. The right-footed kick, high booming kick near the 15-yard line, and it bounces at the 20, kicks toward the 10, takes a bobcat bounce. It rolls down to the 9-yard line, and Brendan Hall continues to pin opposing teams deep. Fifth time, he's put somebody inside their own 20-yard line. Beautifully done, and Sacramento State will take over at their own 9-yard line when we come back. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. 13 minutes, 19 seconds to go in the second quarter. Sac State 7, Montana State nothing. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Discover the difference a family-owned Montana bank can make for you and your business. Stockman Bank is focused only on Montana, no place else. So you come first with us. Enjoy a local banking experience uniquely designed to meet the financial needs of your Montana business. Visit your neighborhood Stockman Bank to say hello and let us earn your trust and your business. Moving Montana forward. Stockman Bank, Montana's brand of banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. It's the season of home improvement, and Williams Plumbing will help you tackle the big stuff. Are old roots clogging your sewer line? Williams has the tools to fix it. 
Have you checked your septic system lately? We have the knowledge and experience to maintain or repair it. Looking to install a yard hydrant? We'll do it promptly and professionally. Don't sweat the big stuff. Call Williams Plumbing today. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much-needed life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. That's why at Firehouse Subs, they make their subs differently, because their subs can make a difference. Their family of restaurant owners and local crews are proud to continue to serve you the hot, hearty, life-saving subs you crave every day. In fact, it's never been easier to grab their subs to go with Rapid Rescue To Go. Save time when you order online at FirehouseSubs.com or on their app. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Hey, Bobcat fans, when you buy Bobcat products at the MSU Bookstore, you help lower the price of course materials for Montana State students. Shop online at Bobcat Stadium or on campus. MSU Bookstore is your Bobcat gear headquarters. 13 minutes, 19 seconds to go in the second quarter. Sac State leading Montana State 7 to nothing, and Sac State will take over at their own 9-yard line after another beautiful punt from Brandon Hall. But uh, RJ, with Derek Snell out, the Bobcat offense trying to find its rhythm. Well, a lot of the Bobcat game plan was centered around that A-gap power, and the large portion of that play is centered on the fullback being able to kick out the defense end. So it's going to be a huge challenge for Ryan Lonergan. He's a good football player, but Derek Snell is one of the best in the entire country at it. And it's not like they had a big uh, runway to figure out what to do without him because he got hurt in warm-ups. First snap from their own nine-yard line. Play action. Bennett moving to his left, trying to get to the outside, and he's got nowhere to go. Nolan Askelson tracks him down from behind, and there is maybe a one-yard gain on that to make it second and nine. Great job by Askelson. Yeah, and Nolan's going to have to step up in that leadership role. He's going to be the sole leader on that defense tonight with Danny Yu out, and now it looks like Drew Polidor is going to be out for the remainder of the game as well. Yeah, he went back to the locker room earlier. Here's the snap. Benton fires over to the left side. That picked off. John Johnson's got it. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana State. John Johnson, an interception and a pick six. And the Bobcats are a PAT away from tying this up. The almighty Mo John Johnson changing the entire momentum of this football game. Tips and overthrows. John Johnson was right there to make the play. Walks in the end zone. Captures all that momentum back. The Bobcat faithful are excited and back into this thing. What a big time play by John Johnson. A 16 yard interception return for a touchdown as he jumped the route and he had a clear path into the gold end zone. For Johnson, his second interception of the year, and for the Bobcats, their second defensive touchdown of the year. And for Johnson going back to uh, El Camino Community College, now his. Uh, was that his fifth career interception delay a game by the Bobcats they did not have the right personnel out there it's it's tough after that pick six to get everybody out there so they'll back this up for the PAT but a big kick here I mean, it's a huge kick to tie up this football game capture all that momentum back and uh, you know we talked about it this was going to be a tough test for the Bobcat defense and they stepped up John Johnson scoring down the right sideline on an interception from 16 yards out, and the Bobcats have a chance to tie it. The snap, the hold, the kick is up, and that kick is good. So the PAT is successful for Brendan Hall. We're taking a break. It's the defense that strikes offensively for the Bobcats first. John Johnson, the interception return for a touchdown. 12.47 to go in the second quarter. Montana State and Sac State are tied at seven. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Are you too hot? Are you too cold? Did you know that you don't have to just deal with it? We at Ambient Air Solutions understand how important comfort plays on your emotions, health, and quality of life on a daily basis. Ambient Air Solutions offers 24-7 emergency service for residential and commercial clients. We also offer financing to help ease the financial stress and burden of a lifelong investment. Call Ambient Air Solutions at 406-577-1818 and leave it to the professionals. Ambient Air Solutions, simplifying heating and cooling. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much-needed life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. That's why at Firehouse Subs, they make their subs differently, because their subs can make a difference. Their family of restaurant owners and local crews are proud to continue to serve you the hot, hearty, life-saving subs you crave every day. In fact, it's never been easier to grab their subs to go with Rapid Rescue To Go. Save time when you order online at FirehouseSubs.com or on their app. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. 
Hi, former Bobcat Lou Salcedo for Western Motors. Our team proudly supports MSU Bobcat football both on and off the field. I want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck for the season. Western Motors has spent the last 22 years serving Gallatin County and supporting over 40 local organizations. We have been recognized as the best in Bozeman and Gallatin's greatest several years running. As Montana's number one volume dealer, we are hiring in all departments across eight of our dealerships. We have plenty of new and used inventory ready for purchase. Good luck, Bobcats. Western Motors, community-born, community-driven. Montana State University in Bozeman, we like to think outside, but not just because we have access to some of the best outdoor recreation on the planet. We like to think outside because we are creators, researchers, artists, and thinkers breaking boundaries and, uh, in over 250 fields. Montana State University, mountains and mines. 12.47 to go in the second quarter. Montana State and Sac State tied at seven as John Johnson has a pick six and an interception return for a touchdown down the right sideline. Dan, how about that? That could end up being one of the plays of the year yeah this bench got uh, area just went on fire as he returned that for the touchdown guys this is going to be a big uh, kickoff here by brandon hall kicking into the wind with uh, the dangerous uh, sacramento state uh, offense about to get on the field but field position will be a, a key on this possession yeah absolutely and it was a big reason why the bobcats were able to score on that they had pinned him back at the nine yard line and caden bennett throws his fourth interception of the year bobcats score their second defensive touchdown of the season as john johnson makes the big time play and boy where would the bobcats be without johnson after the injuries to some of the cornerbacks earlier this year and john johnson's been one of the absolute lockdown corners for the bobcats this year he had done a really good job, and um, you know, he's going to be needed tonight, and now he's playing with some confidence, and you know when corners get confidence, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing and dangerous for the opponents. Brendan Hall's kick. This one is going to be short of the goal line. High arcing kick, but it's a fair catch by Sacramento State. There was some room for a return there, and they called a fair catch. Well, there was, and Sac State had some momentum coming forward. We talk about it in the return game where if you're a returner and you can catch the ball moving forward, you know, it definitely leads to some better plays. You never want to be going backwards to catch a kickoff return. When you're out of town and want to keep up with live college sports, be sure to download the new Varsity Network app available for both Apple and Android. Listen to College Sports Live with the Varsity Network app. Touch the defense with a big scoring play to get things going for the Bobcats on their side of the scoreboard. Of course, we're seeing some injuries here tonight. Here's the first snap from the 25-yard line. Fulcher runs up the middle, and he is tackled across the 31-yard line as Miles Jackson came in to get a hand on his man. Blake Stillwell in at free safety as Drew Polidor went back to the locker room earlier in this first half. Yeah, this is going to be a huge challenge uh, for the Bobcat defense. I mean, especially in that secondary uh, I know they'll be fine at linebacker as at McKid and Nolan but you know replacing Drew Polidor is going to be tough well, Louis LaCapa went out on that first drive of the game here's the snap option running right Bennett turns behind his running back and he angles out of bounds shy of the first down marker by about a yard and that'll bring up third and one or two for Sac State officially third and two from the 33 yard line yeah and it's going to be a huge play for Sac State. Look for Sac State to just rely on Marcus Fulcher and Caden Bennett all game in these situations. Uh, you have a guy like Marshall Martin who is not the best blocker. It's not the reason why he is an All-American, but you know he's a weapon uh, leading up for these quarterbacks and running backs from Sacramento State. Martin, one catch for six yards so far today. Here's the snap on third down. Option, Bennett running left. He makes the pitch to Fulcher, trying to turn the corner. He's tripped up. Did he get there? That's very, very close. David Alston in pursuit, and he did get to the first down marker. Needed to, got to, up to the 35-yard line. First down for Sac State. Guys, that's Ezra Molini in there right now on that carry. Thank you. Yes, Ezra Molini, an All-American at... Uh, junior college in San Mateo the last two years. Last season rushed for 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns at the community college level. First and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Snap, Bennett looking to throw, looks left, fires. That is caught, and he's tackled immediately at the 40-yard line. Carlos Hill bringing in his first catch of the day. He's their leading receiver coming into the game. Well, Sac State is finally starting to get back in the flow of things offensively. Up tempo, quick game, short passes, easy completions. Here's the snap on second down. Bennett rolling out to his right under pressure, and he throws it away over Gibson. Kenneth Iden was in pursuit, and a wise decision to just throw that thing out of bounds after he got out of the tackle box, and that'll bring up third and five for Sacramento State. A little bit more rollout from Sacramento State on this possession, getting Caden Bennett out in space so he has a run and a pass option. 
from their own 40-yard line. Sacramento State with an empty backfield. Shotgun formation on the left hash mark the snap. Bennett looking to throw, fires over the middle. That is caught by Marshall, stumbling forward across the 50-yard line, and he is down after a first down. So about a 10-yard catch, move forward another five or so, and he's up to the 47-yard line in plus territory after that Sac State first down. Well, that's why Marshall Martin is an All-American, coming across the middle with some big-time linebackers and making the completion. First and 10 in plus territory. Three receivers out to the right, one to the left. The official... Holding them up here as Mullaney is the running back. Here's the snap from the left hash. Bennett looking to throw, fires over the middle, tipped it incomplete. McCade O'Reilly had two hands, and that ball went right through his fingertips. Great effort by O'Reilly. Nearly had an interception over the middle, second and ten. Well, great eyes from McCade O'Reilly. Dropping back, feeling Martin coming across the middle on the seam ball, dropping in the proper coverage, getting a hand on the football, batting away. Well, that was a tight window he was trying to f- 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 uh, put it into. Here's the snap, handoff. Mullaney's got space running right. He's got the first down down the right hash mark, and he's finally tackled at the 30-yard line. A 17-yard run for Ezra Mullaney, who had a big game last week against Northern Colorado with 16 carries and 93 yards on the ground. Well, Sacramento State is showing the team speed of this football team. These have been two of the great offenses in the big sky the last couple of years. Here's the first down snap, hands off Mullaney up the middle, and he's tackled quickly. Good job by the Bobcats to get there. Sebastian Valdez was able to trip him up. Well, and the Bobcats, really the games they've struggled defensively have been against up-tempo offenses because, you know, any team out there struggles against them just from the sheer number of plays that you're out there in a row. Second and seven after the three-yard run. Shotgun snap. Bennett looking to throw after the play action. Backs up. Now fires over the middle. That is caught at the 25-yard line and a quick, sure-handed tackle by McCade O'Reilly. So put him up at the 25, a quick catch and a quick tackle, and that'll bring up third and five for uh, for Sac State. Yeah, another great pass coverage from McCade O'Reilly. Sitting in a zone, dropping, has great eyes, comes up, makes a sure-handed tackle on the Sac State receiver. Elijah Tau Tolliver now in there as the running back for Sacramento State. Huge third and five at the 25-yard line for Sac State, which is driving in Bobcat territory. Two receivers left, two to the right. Shotgun snap. Bennett looking to throw. Fires down the left sideline. Incomplete. Martin Marshall had a step on his man down the left sideline outside of the numbers, and he was just a step too far, and the Bobcats get the stop on third down, and now a field goal attempt coming for Sac State. Well, we talked about Mikado O'Reilly on the last couple plays in pass coverage. He had Marshall Martin in pass coverage on the third down. Marshall Martin had a step on McCade, but Caden Bennett was unable to hit him. Now a 43-yard attempt for Zach Schreiner. Here's the snap. The hold is down. This kick is up. Does it have enough? It's drifting right, and that is no good. So the Bobcats get a crucial third down stop and a missed field goal attempt and this game remains tied at seven points apiece midway through the second quarter. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you. As part of the Toyota rewards program you can win exclusive swag throughout the year along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. To join the program visit msubobcats.com slash Toyota rewards to register. Toyota, proud to be a partner of Bobcat Athletics. Cats taking over on offense when we come back. 8.30 to go in the second quarter. Bobcats and Hornets tied at 7. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Hey, Bobcat fans. If you're planning a building project, Builders First Source can help. If you're building a garage, a shed, a pole, a barn, or even an entire home, Builders First Source can assist with the design materials, delivery, and so much more. No project is too big or too small. Builders First Source expertise can transform your vision into a dream come true. Builders First Source is a leading supplier of professional-grade building materials and a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics. Find one of 10 Montana locations at buildersfirstsource.com. And go Bobcats! Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. 
At Levitt Group Insurance, we believe that hard work, dedication, and teamwork are the keys to success. Levitt Group Insurance is proud to present the weekly Bobcat Impact Player of the Game. Each week, a player will be selected because they've proven that they have what it takes to be a game changer. Levitt Group Insurance will always work hard and change your insurance program to fit your needs to be a game changer for your business. To see how we can help you with your business, employee benefits, home and auto insurance, contact a Levitt Group Insurance office near you. Levitt Group Insurance, leaving nothing you value to chance. Real Milk is a nutrient-rich product. It contains 13 essential nutrients from vitamin A to zinc, all of which are important for a healthy immune system and overall wellness. That's 13 nutrients with seemingly endless benefits. Reach for milk and make every sip count. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. This game is tied at seven points apiece. Bobcats about to take over uh, at their own 25-yard line. As Sac State just missed a 43-yard field goal. Zach Schreiner, that would have been... Uh, just one yard shy of his longest field goal make of the season, but a big stop for the Bobcat defense that time, RJ. Oh, it's huge. Two straight possessions, the Bobcat defense has came up huge, put points on the board, the drive prior, and the holding Sac State to a field goal attempt, which they missed. Uh, there's a lot of wind out there, so kicking game is definitely tough. John Johnson with a pick, six from 16 yards out, struck for the Bobcats uh, on their offensive side, you know, uh, on the scoreboard. The defense strikes offensively, and uh, Sac State earlier had a long 11-play, 80-yard touchdown drive. Tommy Mulata is in there as the Bobcats go to work at their own 25-yard line on the road, white unis. Man in motion from left to right. He stops in the slot. Here's the snap. Hand off. No. Malott keeps it. He runs right. He's got room. Tommy Malott down the right side on the numbers. Gets across the 40-yard line, and he's tackled across the 45-yard line. A huge gainer by uh, Tommy Malott of about 20, what was that, about 26 yards. And the Bobcats nearing the 50-yard line. Love the play design from Coach House right wrapping Trayton and Pickering to the boundary, Tommy Mallott in open space. Mallott approaching 2,000 career rushing yards. Two receivers left, two to the right. First and 10 up at the 47-yard line. Here's the snap. Mallott fires to the right side, caught by Trayton Pickering under tough pressure, and he spun down out of bounds, but he's into plus territory, made the catch, and immediately went out of bounds with that tough tackle. That brings the Bobcats up to the 46-yard line in Sac State territory. And Trayton Pickering is a guy that Tommy Mallott likes to rely on. He's a huge target, he's long, he's a big body, so he's a tough matchup for Sacramento State, especially when they have linebacker and nickel bodies on a guy like Trayton. John Chambers into the game, he's under center now. Second and three for Montana State. Two receivers to the left. Offset eye formation. Here's the snap, turns, hands it off. Scott Trey Humphrey up the middle, runs right into the line, nowhere to go, picks up one yard. Humphrey's been out since that game against Weber State. That's his first carry back, and it's a one-yard gain. So that'll bring up third and two for Montana State in plus territory as Julius Davis checks back in. Uh, bringing Julius Davis back in the game. Bobcats are most likely gonna run the football here. Uh, it's four down territory, third and two. Uh, look for maybe, an a Davis run or a Sean Chambers run. It looks like Isaiah Davis is out to the field, so it's gonna be a Sean Chambers power. Davis spread out into the slot with two other receivers on the left side. That's Thomas and McCullough. Here's the shotgun snap. Chambers keeps it, runs up the middle, puts his hat down. He's got the first down as he pushes the pile forward, and he's up to the 40-yard line. So about a four-yard gain when he needed it, two, and the Bobcats have a first interstate bank first down. Yeah, when you have a guy like Sean Chambers, all you do, run A-gap power, QB, plus run one, plus one run game. It's difficult to stop, and I know State does not like it when Sean Chambers is out there, <laughs> and they got to come and tackle him. Very few people do. A big push by the offensive line that time, and that moves them up to the 40-yard line in Hornets territory. Six minutes to go in the first half. The Bobcats and Hornets are tied at seven. This is a crucial drive for Montana State. Their only score, a pick six from jo uh, John Johnson. Under center, Davis the deep back, snap. Turns right, hands it off. Davis runs up the middle, cuts back to his left, gets hit quickly but pushes forward. That is a heavy finish to that run as he got hit by the linebacker and turns that into a four-yard gain, second and six up to the 36. But I like what the Bobcats are doing. Coach Housewright, Coach Vegan slowing things down a little, uh, operating. Uh, they know that they get the ball to start the second half, so potential for, for one situation. Pistol formation, Jared White is the halfback. Tommy Mallott back in there at the quarterback position. One receiver left, two to the right. 
Now the snap on second down. Fires to the left side. Thomas makes the catch outside the numbers. He runs along the left sideline. He slips one man, and he tap dances out of bounds as he picks up the first down. Got an extra yard on it, a seven-yard catch and run on that screen out to the left side by Cleveland Thomas. Well, Sacramento State just had their cornerbacks playing eight, nine yards off. Cleveland Thomas, uh, Tommy Millot said, I'm just going to get it out quick to Cleveland Thomas. Cleveland Thomas, one-on-one -on -one opportunity with seven yards of space, and Cleveland wins and gets first down. First and 10 up to the 29-yard line of a tie game. Seven points apiece, 4.40 to go in the second quarter. McCullough in motion from right to left. Snap to Malott. He keeps it on the fake handoff. Rolling out to his right, looking to throw. Now tucks it, turns up field inside the numbers, and he's tackled forward, approaching that first down marker. He is down at the 21-yard line. Another eight-yard gain for Tommy Malott. He's up to 43 on the day, needs 60 to become the second quarterback in Bobcat history to reach 2,000 rushing yards. A lot off, Chambers in. Well, and all Coach Housewright did is a little play action off some of that power action. But Sacramento State has done a good job of responding to the play action that the Bobcats want to do. But Tommy Malott just puts his head down, gets what he can get, and an eight-yard gain. Second and two up to the 21-yard line on a pistol formation on the right hash mark. Davis is the running back. Here's the snap. Turns right. Play action. Chambers rolling out to his left. Takes a shot to the end zone. That is caught by Ty McCullough. And it's a touchdown. Montana State from 21 yards out. Sean Chambers, a high throw into the middle of the end zone. And Ty McCullough went up, snagged it with two hands, absorbed the blow, and he goes down with a touchdown reception. His first in the blue and gold. I love it. Uh, everyone in the entire stadium is thinking run when Sean Chambers is in the football game. Play action pass delivers a strike to Ty McCullough. Sean Chambers' passing game this season has stepped up a ton, does a really good job, presents a huge challenge for Sacramento State. Bobcats deliver, take back that momentum, and go up by six, possibly seven. A real tight window there that he threw that into. Snap is good, Abshire puts it down, and that kick is up and through, and the Bobcats have their first lead of the day. Eight plays, 75 yards over four minutes, 44 seconds, and it's capped by a 21-yard catch from Ty McCullough out of the right hand of Sean Chambers, a beautiful needle threaded by the sixth-year senior. Bozeman Health doesn't want you to have an injury timeout. A primary care provider helps keep you healthy and in the game. Visit bozemanhealth.org today to find a primary care provider in Belgrade, Big Sky, or Bozeman. Your care is our purpose. The Bobcats have scored 14 unanswered points. They'll be kicking it off when we come back. Three minutes, 46 seconds to go in the second quarter. Montana State 14, Sac State 7. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. At Jersey Mike's, watching them freshly slice the meat and cheese for my sub is a sight to behold. The layers of ham, salami, and pepperoni are even more glorious than the pink and orange layers of a sunrise. Yeah, the sun's pretty and all that, but in about 7 billion years, it's going to explode, obliterating the earth and every living thing on it. And if there's no sun, there's no subs. Meanwhile, the only thing a sub ever obliterated was my hunger. Freshly sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Working from home has definitely put home projects into overdrive. New landscaping, gardens, patios, and fences. But if you're digging, you're contacting 811. Utility lines, including Northwestern Energies, can be buried even just a few inches underground. And hitting one can be dangerous. The best way to keep you, the community, and your contractor crew safe is by having lines properly marked. Make your request online at least two full business days before you want to dig at call811.com. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. outside the box for your complete branding solutions. Located in Bozeman, Montana, we offer a full print shop for banners, signs, wraps, trade show booths and graphics, promotional products, and much more. If you can think it, we can ink it. We are a proud supporter and corporate sponsor of the MSU Bobcats. Like us on Facebook to see some of our cat wraps. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. and call us at 406-922-6462 or visit us on the web at inkoutside.com. Bobcats up 14-7 over the Hornets, 3.46 to go in the second quarter. Dan Davies is on the sideline with Big Sky Commissioner Tom Wistrasil. Dan? Hey, Tom, thanks for taking some a uh, couple minutes here to t chat with us here. Talk to us about uh, the future of the Big Sky and where you see it going here quick in the next minute. Well, you know, we've we had a great year. It's been a great year in football, as always. 
you know, as the strongest and deepest conference in the country. We're really proud of our football programs. Need to win a national title here soon. That's the goal, obviously, for every one of our teams. But it's great to be able to showcase what we have to a national audience. Mid uh, point of the season here, we're, we're, the P word, the playoffs, uh, how does it look for the Big Sky stacking up? Yeah, I think it looks great. You know, it's interesting to see as it plays out here if we can get five or six teams in. You know, uh, you know, just upsets are going to happen. There's still a lot of football to be played, but we're really excited about where we're at. Great. Thanks for your time, Tom. Happy to be with you. Okay, guys, back up to you. All right, appreciate that time from Tom Westrasil, who was also at the Montana State Sac State volleyball game earlier today. Sac State won that one in four sets. Bobcats kicking it off from left to right into the wind from the big right-footed boot of Brendan Hall. This kickoff, a high arcing end over end kick at the goal line, and it is into the end zone. That is a tough touchback by Brendan Hall into the wind like that at sea level. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it, it's a huge weapon for the Bobcat special teams, uh, especially when you can't have any return game. It really just takes out a whole element. I just drew Pelador out there on that uh, kickoff. Nice to see him back out there. Yeah, that's uh, that's big time. Drew Pelador going back to the locker room uh, with a, an apparent injury, but he is at least back on the sideline and on that kickoff return. Blake Stillwell still in there at the free safety position. No LaFell Price Jr. today. Miles Jackson getting a lot of time at the nickel position. John Johnson has an interception return for a touchdown. The Bobcats are also missing Danny Louis Lakepa injured earlier tonight, and Derek Snell, same. Here's the first snap from the 25-yard line, a handoff. Tau Talver up the middle, and he gets to the uh, to the 35-yard line. Rylan Ort finally tackles him at the 36-yard line, and a big 11-yard gain that time by Tau Talver. Well, you see Marcus Fulcher out of the football game, uh, does not have his cleats on anymore, uh, but it seems like there's no drop-off in that Sac State running back room. Now, that'd be a big loss. We saw how dynamic Fulcher was earlier. He's their leading rusher coming in. Here's the snap. They hand it off, running to his left. That's Martin, the tight end, trying to bounce it to the outside, and he's got nowhere to go. Try to get to the outside of the numbers. Blake Stillwell was there. McCain O'Reilly was there, and John Johnson was able to slip off his uh, block to help force him out of bounds after a three-yard gain. Well, it's a rarity you see a tight end jet sweep, uh, but we've seen it the last few weeks. One to Derek Snell, one to Marshall Martin, so it just shows the caliber of athletes at the tight end position in this football game. Bobcat football is presented by your locally owned McDonald's restaurants. Download the app and earn free food, order from anywhere, and even skip the line with convenient curbside pickup. Second and seven from their own 39-yard line for the Hornets. Snap, play action, throw to the outside. That is caught for a first down. Quick sure-handed tackle by Andrew Powdrell. That was caught by Jared Gibson at the first down marker. Tried to turn it upfield. Got an extra yard, maybe two, but a good tackle by Powdrell. So again, first down, Sac State. Well, and I think Jared Gibson is a very underrated player in the big sky. He's very talented. You watch him on film, and he's a guy that doesn't get a lot of opportunities, but when he does, he makes big-time plays. Got over 1,000 career receiving yards. We've got a false start here for Sac State. They're second to the game at home. False start, number 59, offense, five-year penalty, first down. That's big. That'll back them up. They'll face now first and 15. That's a huge mistake. That's a huge mistake. I mean, there's two minutes left in this half, and the Bobcats get the ball to start the second half. So this is a huge, huge possession for both squads. Interwest Moving and Storage is the official moving company of the MSU Bobcats. From their own 42-yard line, first and 15, the snap. Bennett takes a shot down the seam. He's got a man, and he overthrows him. Devin Gandy had a step, and Caden Bennett took a deep shot, and he overthrew him by one or two. Well, Devin Gandy had a step. And Caden Bennett just missed him. Uh, that was a Sac State touchdown all the way. Uh, just an overthrow from Caden Bennett. Uh, thankful for Bobcat Nation that that ball was not completed. Second and 15 now. 158 remaining in the second quarter. Sac State scored first with a back-breaking drive where they were in control. Cats have scored the last 14 points to take a 14-7 lead. Second down snap. Bennett. Looks to throw, fires to the right side. That is caught near the original line of scrimmage. And a good tackle spinning him down. And that'll be about a six-yard gain. Nolan Askelson with the stop. The reception from Christian Miller. Yeah, it brings up somewhat a third and manageable. Uh, not sure who called a timeout. Probably the Bobcats. Timeout, Montana State. The first yep. half. So Montana State used the time, uses the timeout here on third and seven with a minute 40 to go, so an opportunity to preserve some clock. Well, yeah, you're thinking that your Bobcat defense can step up, 
force a punt, maybe get the ball back. You have a one, maybe two timeouts left to go down there. We know what type of range that Brendan Hall has. Join Champs New Kids Club presented by Billings Clinic Bozeman. Your $25 membership fee gets you game tickets, Bobcat gear, and more. Sign up today at msubobcats.com slash champs kids club. Well, Dan, you know, this Bobcat defense, they got pushed around a little bit on that touchdown drive, but they've come back and made some big plays. Yeah, they've kind of settled in here a little bit, it appears. They uh, have some have some things. That one shot downfield would have been a, a, a tough thing to uh, have to accept, but nonetheless, they're, uh, they've kind of settled in and might have uh, found their groove here a little bit. That's with Danny Louie Lakepa out. He got injured on the first defensive drive of the game. Derek Snell is out. He's in street close. We have not seen Drew Polidor in the second quarter with a presumed injury as well, at least on defense. Here's the snap on third and seven. Bennett under pressure, trying to get by Brody Greeby. Throws off balance down the right sideline. Tipped it incomplete. The Bobcats finally got some pressure on Caden Bennett. Brody Greeby got into the backfield, and they get the third down stop on third and seven. Well, that was huge from the Bobcat defense. Stepping up, Brody Greeby gets some pressure on Caden Bennett, forces the punt. Now the Bobcats are going to get the ball back with a minute and 30 seconds. They're going to have a couple timeouts, uh, and Tommy Malott's going to go in there and operate that two-minute drill. And Bennett is visibly frustrated as the way that drive played out they had the false start he missed a man downfield down the right hash mark and he is very very frustrated hanging his head and going to sit on the bench by himself right now here's the snap and the punt back at the 10 yard line time McCullough steps up lets it bounce at the two and it kicks into the end zone just barely right decision that was like the two yard line but it does kick into the end zone so the cats will have uh, have this football with a minute 34 to go and a pair of timeouts leading 14 to 7 to the second quarter well now if you're coach house right and tommy malott uh, you operate this every single week uh, you do the two minute drill for situations like this all you're trying to do in this situation is get in field goal range give yourself a chance to put points up on the board go two for one before halftime Tommy Mallott has a chance to pass Chris Murray on the all-time quarterback rushing list. He's one yard behind Murray. Cats start at their own 20-yard line. Empty backfield. Mallott on the left. Hash mark in the shotgun formation. Two to the left, three to the right. Here's the snap. Mallott standing tall, looking to throw. Fires over the middle. Tipped and caught at the first down marker. And Trayton Pickering is upended after he picked up the first down up to the 32-yard line. And that was a huge play. Could have been picked, and it lands in the hands of Pickering. Yeah, sometimes better to be lucky than good. <laughs> yeah, wow. So a 12-yard gain, making a 13-yard gain up to the 33-yard line. Cats hustle to the line. Two receivers right, one to the left. Here's the snap. Malat looking to throw. Flushed out to his left. Throws on the run. That is incomplete. Intended for Trayton Pickering outside of the numbers. Good coverage by Cameron Broussard, one of the great safeties in this league. Yeah, and, you know, he has a tough task trying to cover Trayton Pickering, uh, you know, Tommy did a really good job of evading some pressure from Sacramento State. So um, Sacramento State has decided to heat up the Bobcats in some two-minute situation. One thirteen to go in the second quarter. Montana State is leading 14-7 to over Sac State from their own 33-yard line on the left hash. Empty backfield. Three receivers to the right. Thomas, McCullough, and Williams. Two to the left. That's White and Pickering. Here's the snap. Mount Lott keeps it, and he's hitting the backfield right away and dropped for a three-yard loss. Boy, that was a nice play that time by Armand Bailey, their middle linebacker, and it looks like the Bobcats have called timeout. Sac State called the timeout. Oh, they did? Okay, yeah. Well, they want to make sure that they're in the right coverage, keep everything in front of you, because in these situations, sometimes you let things get behind you if you get a little too aggressive. I think they might think they might get one other opportunity here offensively if they get a stopper here on third down for Montana State. Yeah, they got to feel right now like they've let a few uh, opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, Sac State, yeah, I mean, they got to feel like they've left a lot out on the board. Uh, they've given the Bobcats seven points, and um, they really just have not executed on some of those momentum plays that they've had. John Johnson with a 16-yard interception return for a touchdown today. Ty McCullough with a 21-yard touchdown reception. Third and 11 for Montana State at their own 32-yard line with 66 seconds left in the first half. Cats up 14-7 in a battle of two of the top three teams in the nation. From the middle of the field, empty backfield. Balot in the shotgun formation. Two receivers left, three to the right. 
Here's the snap. Malat looking to throw. Clean pocket. Now pressured. He scrambles up the middle. Malat angling to his left. Gets the 40-yard line outside the numbers. And he's twisted down shy of the sideline. But he got the first down up to the 45-yard line. First interstate bank, first down. Under a minute to play. 58 seconds left in the second quarter. And that's why Tommy Malat is such a special football player. Escaping, picking up the first down. Tommy Malat approaching 2,000 career rushing yards. He's now past Chris Murray. Second leading rusher for quarterbacks in program history. Here's the snap. Malat looking to throw. Flushed out to his right. Gets to the hash marks. Hit as he throws. And he slings it out of bounds over the head of Ty McCullough. And that'll bring up second and 10 from their own 45-yard line with 41 seconds left in the second quarter. Well, and Tommy Malat is doing a really good job of just keeping these plays alive. A lot of pressure from Sacramento State. The Bobcat offensive line has been struggling a little bit in the pass protection. And Tommy Malat has had to escape the pocket a few times, but has done a really good job of either A, running the football, picking up a first down, or B, just throwing the football out of bounds like he did on the last play. Malat five yards away from becoming the second Bobcat quarterback to eclipse 2,000 career rushing yards. From their own 45-yard line, second and 10. Three receivers right, one to the left, Davis the halfback. Here's the snap, Malat looking to throw. Fires to the left side, Thomas incomplete. The event Thomas was the intended receiver, and the timing there was just... edge on and out um, was unable to do so brings up a, a third down and, and long uh, a situation where you might just hand the football off and you're okay with punting the football back to Sacramento State as they only have one timeout and about 30 seconds left 37 seconds officially 45 uh, on their own 45 yard line Bobcats with the football facing third and 10 toward the end of the first half Bobcats lead 14 to 7 on the road shotgun formation Here's the snap. Malat looking right, looking to throw. Flush, running out to his left near the numbers. Still looking downfield. Now tucks it, runs upfield, and he's tackled across the 50-yard line up to the 48-yard line. And Tommy Malat, now Tommy 2K, has picked up over 2,000 career rushing yards. Well, you're now in a little interesting situation. You got time winding down. 15 seconds left in the first half. Bobcats trying to snap this on fourth and three. Here it is. Malat looking to throw, fires over the middle, caught by Jacob Trimble for a first down. He's on the move for an extra seven yards up to the 33-yard line, and Brent Vegan sprinting down the sideline to call a timeout with five seconds left in the second quarter. So the Bobcats again at the 33-yard line, five seconds left in the second quarter, and Montana State up 14-7. to A timeout again by the Bobcats. Well, and how about a guy like Jacob Trimble stepping up in a two-minute situation, a true freshman, catching a football, getting forward, going down, you knowing there's not a lot of time on the clock. Tommy Malata is very, very patient in the pocket, finds Jacob Trimble across the middle. Now it brings up a field goal attempt for the Bobcats, albeit a long field goal, especially into the win, but one that Brendan Hall probably can get there. Yeah, 50, it's going to be a 50-yard attempt here for Brendan Hall. And again, for Tommy Mullot now, 62 rushing yards today, 2,002 career rushing yards for the junior from Butte. All right, let's see what Brendan Hall has here. He's missed the 33-yarder. He is kicking into the wind at sea level. We know he's got a leg for this. Will he have the accuracy? Luke Abshire is set up really at the 41-yard line, so this is going to be a 51-yarder. Tommy Sullivan will snap it. Cats trying to steal a field goal at the end of the first half. Sullivan snap. Abshire's hold. Right-footed kick. Down the middle of the field. Doesn't have enough leg. It is no good. No good on the 51-yard attempt in that. Oh, hang on here. We got a flag on the play. What is this? Running in the kicker. Defense, five-yard penalty. Fourth down will be played. Okay, well, there you go. So Brendan Hall will get another opportunity, and they'll cut five yards off. Well, one more shot, and that five extra yards is huge, especially into the win. I know he had to do a little bit more of a line drive that kind of caught, caught up in the win, so gives the Bobcats another chance to put up points. So yeah, that, that, that kick was short and right. Yep. So this time a 45-yard attempt from the left hash mark into the win for Brendan Hall, trying to make this a two-score game going to half. Sullivan snap, Abshire's hold. Here's the right-footed kick. 
This one heading toward the goal post, and he misses it right and short. So two attempts for Brendan Hall, neither able to get in there. All right, it's 14 to seven, Montana State leading as we head to halftime, and that was a wild first half for the Bobcats, and Montana State finds a way to get out in front and on top at the end of the first half. Certainly not easy in this ball game to take a seven point lead, and boy, there was a lot of opportunities there on either side, but the Bobcats have found a way to take a seven point lead. John Johnson had an interception pick six, and we also saw a 21 yard reception from McCullough. Here's Dan and Brent. Well, Coach uh, executed that two minute offense and got into position to, to attempt that field goal, but came up a little bit short. Yeah, a long attempt, but, uh, you know, we got a second chance that I would like to see to go through. we got to move on. Um, you know, a half where we did some good things, and, uh, you know, we allowed them to do some things as well. So we get the ball coming out this uh, second half. We're going to have to do something right away and set the tone. Huge play on defense to score. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great play by John Johnson. I think, uh, you know, those type of plays are such momentum builders, changers, and uh, John was right where he was supposed to be. All right. Good luck, Coach, second half. I appreciate it. Thanks. Guys, back up to you. Thank you, Dan. All right, Bobcats have a 14 to seven lead over Sacramento State and we are at halftime. If the Bobcats score a touchdown during the fourth quarter at any home or away game during the regular season, four lucky fans will be selected to win a prize. Sign up today at msubobcats.com slash rav4, the number four. We're taking a break at half, a matchup between the number two team of the nation and the number three team of the nation, and it has delivered through the first 30 minutes. Montana State 14, Sac State 7 at the half. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Keller Williams Montana Realty is your source for Southwest Montana real estate. Let our agents help you find your piece of big sky country today. Call 406-522-7000 or visit kwmontana.com. What's in a name? For some, the meaning runs deeper than the word we see in front of us. There's a history to it. We are Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana. And the biggest part of our name will always be the smallest of. Because it's the of that connects us, which means we are of our communities, of a promise passed down for a healthier tomorrow through it all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. With friendly customer service and an outstanding location near Montana State University in the base of the Bridger Mountain Range, Country Inn & Suites by Radisson is the perfect place to begin your Bozeman adventure. Country Inn & Suites offers a hot and delicious Be Our Guest breakfast buffet each morning. Free Wi-Fi is available throughout the property, and we have a business center and meeting rooms. Our indoor pool and hot tub is a great way to relax after a day of fun, and the on-site fitness center will keep your workout goals on track. We have spacious king and double queen suites with a full-size sleeper sofa available, and every room in Country Inn & Suites is smoke-free. Reserve your room today. Bobcat fans, Lithia Dodge of Billings, Montana's number one new car dealer and proud partner of Montana State Bobcats, has the new truck you've been looking for in stock now and ready for immediate delivery. Come test drive a new 2023 Ram 1500 during Power Days at Lithia Dodge in Billings. See why we're Montana's number one new car dealer. Based on 2020 and 2021 and 2022 new vehicle registration data. Whoever said good things come to those who wait clearly never ordered in the McDonald's app. Just order ahead in the app and you can pick up when you get here. Now football fans can score big because on game day, get a 20 piece chicken McNuggets for just $5 when you order ahead on the app. Now that's a W. Valid once per day through December 1st, 2023. I participate in McDonald's must opt into rewards. Montana Fence, located in Billings, Bozeman, Great Falls, and Kalispell, is Montana's largest fencing superstore. Get everything you need for your fencing projects at rock bottom pricing. Low prices on all styles of farm fence, chain link, vinyl privacy, ornamental iron, cedar pickets, continuous panels, wood privacy. We have it all. Quality materials at truckload prices. Let the experts at Montana Fence help you plan your next project. Whether you use our team or do it yourself, check out Montana Fence. Keller Williams Montana Realty is your source for Southwest Montana real estate. Let our agents help you find your piece of big sky country today. Call 406-522-7000 or visit kwmontana.com. 
Bobcat Football is brought to you by Bridger Brewing. Cheers to every journey being better than the last. And by Builders First Source, leading supplier of professional grade building materials. This is Bobcat Halftime. Well, the Montana State Bobcats have faced a boatload of adversity in the first half, but they have found a way to come out with a 14-7 lead over Sacramento State. The Small Business Game Changer Contest is back and presented by the Bozeman Area Chamber of Commerce. A local business will have the chance to win a $10,000 marketing package with MSU Athletics. Visit bozemanchamber.com slash gamechanger for details. The winner will be announced on November 11th versus Eastern Washington. Well, RJ, the Bobcats lost Derek Snell during the warm-ups. Daniel Lulekepa went down during the first defensive drive of the game for Montana State. Drew Polidor did not play defensively in that second quarter, and yet, somehow, some way, the Cats are up by seventh break. Yeah, you gotta be happy if you're Coach Vegan, uh, based on the way you played in that first half to be up by seven points. Uh, the Bobcats did not execute on offense as well as they would have liked, only being able to put up seven points, uh, just, not very good execution people not doing their assignments but you know at the same time you have four guys out right now that are playing at an all big sky type of level uh and that's not to even mention Lavelle Price who isn't out there tonight so you know it's been a difficult challenge and uh one that's gonna come up in the second half here especially um as guys start to have to play more snaps than they're used to. Well, the other thing about these injuries is that they've all happened here tonight. You know, when you've got an injury that happens last week and you have all week to prepare, coach up a guy, that's one thing. But today, I mean, we've seen these key players go down and you got to step in on the fly. Well, and I think the best thing about Montana State and the culture that has been built is it's always been a next man up mentality where everyone is in there watching film because you never know when your opportunity is going to come and you just got to be ready for it because, I mean, there's guys out there, there's always stories where you get thrown into that situation and you never give it up. I mean, you go in the game, you perform, and then you never give back up that starting spot. So, I mean, I think everyone has just been prepared and they've stepped up and done their job. The Bobcats need your support to go for the win. Donate to the Bobcat Club's three-to-win campaign to help us reach our $3 million goal supporting student-athletes. Also, Tommy Mallott becomes the second Bobcat quarterback ever to rush for over 2,000 yards. He has 2,002 career rushing yards after accumulating 62 on 10 rushing attempts in the first half. We'll take a break, and when we get back, we'll get you a full rundown of the scoring from the first 30 minutes. But at halftime, it's Montana State 14, Sac State 7, and it's the two reigning Coast Sky Big, Cha Big Sky champs who have delivered in the first half tonight. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. Bobcat fans, support both your favorite team and Montana State students. When you shop at MSU Bookstores, you help lower the price of course materials for Montana State students. MSU Bookstore is owned by MSU students and faculty and serves as the only not-for-profit campus bookstore in Montana. Shop online at msubookstore.org, at Bobcat Stadium on game days, or on campus in the Strand Union Building. Remember, Bobcat fans, when you shop at MSU Bookstore, all proceeds from your purchase go directly to lowering the cost of course materials for Montana State students. Bridger Brewing is home to award-winning locally crafted beer and pizza and is proud to support all things Bobcat sports. Open 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, last beer served at 8 p.m. and located right across from the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse. Stop by after the game today to enjoy a cold pint of beer and a slice of made-from-scratch delicious pizza. Dine-in service and online ordering for takeout are both available. Check out BridgerBrewing.com and at Bridger Brewing on Instagram and Facebook and stay tuned for updates on our newest adventure in Three Forks, Montana. Town & Country Foods is a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics. As a locally owned company, we believe the benefit of buying local helps support the local economies in southwest Montana. Our stores offer great selections of items you need every day, including organic, specialty foods, fresh meats and produce, along with incredible selections from our bakery and deli departments. Town & Country Foods is 100% employee owned and serves southwest Montana with eight locations. Visit your local Town & Country Foods today. Go Cats! When a power line has fallen down, it can be downright dangerous and even deadly. That's because downed lines can still energize the ground and objects around them. To help keep you and others safe, Northwestern Energy says stay at least 35 feet or the length of a semi-truck away from a downed power line and anything the line is touching. 
You should always assume the line is live, and if you see a downed line, immediately call 911 and warn others. Northwestern Energy, delivering a bright future. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Montana State University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Now the top two teams of the Big Sky over the last three years have delivered a very exciting first half. And it's Montana State leading Sac State 14-7 to at the break. All right, let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. XL Country, 100.7. KXLB Churchill, Bozeman, Belgrade. Also in Livingston, on Translator K254AL. I'm Keaton Gologly alongside RJ Fitzgerald, the first Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Dylan McPhail is our on-site engineer. Dane Davies is our sideline analyst. And Will Gordon is back in the studios tonight. All right, let's take a look at some of the numbers from that first half. For the Bobcats, they had a 117 rushing yards on 22 carries, 93 yards through the air for a total of 210 yards in that first half. For Sac State, they had 88 rushing yards on 14 attempts, 91 yards in through the air for a total of 179 offensive yards. The Bobcats had that pick six, one interception tonight from 16 yards out. It was John Johnson scoring the touchdown for the Bobcats. Ty McCullough would also make a 21-yard touchdown catch from Sean Chambers. And for Sac State, uh, they had Danny Sudero with a 16-yard rush as the first score of the game at the end of the first half. Individually, Tommy Malott, 6 of 10 through the air, 72 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Sean Chambers, one pass, one completion for a touchdown from 21 yards out. On the ground, Malott, 10 carries for 62 yards. He goes over 2,000 career yards tonight. Sean Chambers, 5 carries for 24. Julius Davis, 5 carries for 21 rushing yards. And Marquis e. Johnson, 2 carries for 10. Ty McCullough, two catches for 33 yards, including that touchdown. Clay Van Thomas Jr., two catches for 25. Trayton Pickering, two for 20. And Jacob Trimble, one catch for 15 yards. On the other side for Sac State, Caden Bennett, 12 of 19 through the air for 91 yards. No touchdowns and an interception. He did miss two deep balls down the field. Uh, Ezra Mullaney with six carries for 37 yards on the ground. Sodero with that one carry for 16 yards and a touchdown. Marcus Fulcher, only two carries for 15 yards. Looks like he is hurt again. He had missed the last two games. He did not have his spikes on uh, in that second quarter. Elisha Tautaliver, one carry for 11. Bennett, three carries for six. And Marshall Martin, the tight end, with one carry for 13 yards. Through the air, Grover has three catches for 29 yards. Martin, two for 19. Devin Gandy, two for 11. Miller with one for eight. Mullaney, one catch for eight. Gibson, one catch for eight. Hill, one for five. And Tal Tolliver, one catch for three yards. That is uh, eight different receivers who have uh, caught a pass for Sacramento State. Uh, McCade O'Reilly leading the way with the five tackles tonight. No sacks for the Bobcats. They have the one interception from John Johnson, his second of the year. Everyday style is easy with favorite looks for fall. Whether you're layering up or snuggling in, we've got pri uh, priced right picks for any occasion. Shop Coles and Coles.com today. We're taking a break. It is halftime, and Montana State leads Sac State 14-7. to You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. For all of your tree and lawn care needs, turn to Arbor Medic Tree and Lawn Care, a proud sponsor of MSU Athletics. Arbor Medic Tree and Lawn Care provides outstanding service for your landscape for pruning, removals, stump grinding, tree moving, plant health care, and all of your landscaping maintenance needs. Check out Arbor Medic Tree and Lawn Care. Wade Dooley Certified Arborist. The Bobcats are proud to present these preferred local partners in the home service industry as members of Bobcat Bill. Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems, an evolution in comfort has arrived. Bryant, whatever it takes. Carrier Heating and Air Conditioning, confidence is at the heart of everything we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. Mesa Moving and Storage, moving your family soon? Mesa Moving and Storage is here to help. Montana State Athletics encourages our fans to choose these local businesses as they are proud local sponsors and demonstrate what it means to be a Bobcat. We are Bobcat Bill. 
Montana Farm Bureau. We are the farmers and ranchers who raise the juicy beef on your tailgate grill, who grow the wheat for your fresh burger bun, and who harvest the barley for the cold beer in your bobcat koozie. We are the grassroots voice of agriculture, advocating for farmers and ranchers across our state. Farm Bureau is leading Montana toward a future with a prosperous agriculture economy and thriving rural communities. Join Montana Farm Bureau at mfbf.org and go Bobcats. Bobcat football is finally here, and the Ridge Athletic Clubs are ready for a great season at the Ridge. We offer a beautiful facility with a basketball complex, group exercise studios with over 200 weekly classes, a pool, safe and fun child care, new functional fitness spaces, large comfortable locker rooms, and the best way in Bozeman to bring your fitness to the next level. Stop by for a tour after a game and see why the Ridge has been Bozeman strong for more than 20 years. Go Bobcats! At halftime, the second-ranked Bobcats lead the third-ranked Hornets up 14-7. to Let's take a look at some of the Big Sky scores so far and uh, the finals from around the league tonight. Cal Poly gets the win in the winless bowl. Cal Poly beats Northern Colorado 24-17. to Eastern Washington beats Weber State 31-23. Weber State is 3-5 and 1-4 and and in the Big Sky. Eastern Washington is 3-4 and 2-2 and two and two in the Big Sky. Idaho State, one of the great surprise stories. They are 3-1 and one in the Big Sky after a 38-24 win at Portland State today. So those are the scores from around the Big Sky. For the Bobcats in that first half, they had two town pump touchdowns and they had a pair of converted Conoco kicks the PATs from Brendan Hall who did miss two field goals but is two for two on point after attempts all right we're taking a quick break when we get back we'll be ready to go for the second half of play between Montana State and Sac State you're listening to Bobcat football presented by Learfield Bridger Brewing is home to award-winning locally crafted beer and pizza and is proud to support all things Bobcat sports. Open 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, last beer served at 8 p.m. and located right across from the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse. Stop by after the game today to enjoy a cold pint of beer and a slice of made-from-scratch delicious pizza. Dine-in service and online ordering for takeout are both available. Check out BridgerBrewing.com and at Bridger Brewing on Instagram and Facebook and stay tuned for updates on our newest adventure in Three Forks, Montana. There is a local ranch just outside of Boise, Idaho, that has masterfully bred Japanese Wagyu cattle with American Angus cattle. Now this American-style Wagyu beef is available to you and your family. Rosars presents Snake River American-style Wagyu beef. Snake River Farms beef is famously found in many exclusive five-star steak restaurants. Snake River Farms, available at your local neighborhood Rosars. Did you know that Southwest Montana has one of the highest per capita hot tub usage rates in the world? See what your friends and neighbors already know. How great it feels to soak under the big sky. Mountain Hot Tub has helped more friends and families relax in hot water than anyone in Montana. New hot tubs starting at less than $5,000. When you're ready to relieve stress and save money at the same time, come see us at the corner of Huffine and Gooch Hill. Mountain Hot Tub, since 1979. It's the season of home improvement, and Williams Plumbing will help you tackle the big stuff. Are old roots clogging your sewer line? Williams has the tools to fix it. Have you checked your septic system lately? We have the knowledge and experience to maintain or repair it. Looking to install a yard hydrant? We'll do it promptly and professionally. Don't sweat the big stuff. Call Williams Plumbing today. Bobcat football is brought to you by Montana State University, Mountains and Mines, and by First Interstate Bank, built for you. Live from the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth, here's the voice of the Bobcats, Keaton Galogli. Montana State making their first visit to Sacramento since 2016. And the Bobcats are trying to come away with a win uh, against the third-ranked Hornets. It's Montana State 14, Sacramento State 7. The Bobcats will receive the second-half kickoff. At First Interstate, it's about supporting our communities and cheering on our teams. Thank you for letting us be your trusted community bank for more than 50 years. First Interstate Bank, built for you, member FDIC. 
All right, RJ, here we go. Bobcats battling injuries. Lavelle Price Jr. out. Danny Louie Lakepa out. Derek Snell is out. Drew Polidor is out. But they've got a seven-point lead to start the third quarter. Yeah, and if you're a Bobcat player, Bobcat coach, you can make all the excuses in the world. But when it comes down to it, no one on that playoff committee cares how you lost the game or if you lose a game. That It just matters if you win or lose. So, you know, this is going to be a huge second half for the Bobcats. It starts on this first drive. Bobcats get the ball. If they're able to go down, at least put some points on the board, make this thing a two-possession game, um, you know, it definitely puts them in the driver's seat. But if they give the ball back to Sac State, Sac State has had some success offensively. Um, it puts them right back in this football game to come in and tie this thing up. Yeah, I mean, Sac State's been the better offensive team, even though they've only scored the one touchdown. And the Bobcats, for that matter, only have the one offensive touchdown. John Johnson with a pick six today as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, and coming into this football game, it seemed like the offenses were going to be able to score a lot of points. Um, but that has not been the case tonight. The defenses for both sides have stepped up even accounting for seven of the football points tonight. So it's been a really good job by both defensive coordinators, by both defenses of really game planning and keeping everything in front of them as there really hasn't been a whole lot of explosive plays other than the Ty McCullough touchdown. Right, and that was an incredibly explosive play. The catch McCullough made was tremendous, and the window Sean Chambers fit that football into was tight. Oh, yeah, just over the linebacker or nickel floating back and just in front of the safety covering Ty McCullough and Ty McCullough was able to come up with a huge catch and um, that's been the difference in the ball game so far and um, you know it's going to be something to look for uh, the Bobcats to do more of in the second half is get into that seven eight man protection game with two or three guys in route and um, allow Sean Chambers or Tommy Lott to take shots down the field as um, Sacramento State is loading a box and there's a lot of guys up towards the line of scrimmage. Hey, hey guys, uh, we're about ready to kick off here the second half with the Bobcats up 14 to seven, but looks like the Bobcats are gonna have the win in the fourth quarter, which could be a big deal. Yeah, it's been kind of swirling and kicking around a little bit. We got a good look of it with a big American flag to our right. So yeah, it's been kind of hard and slow. All right, here we go. First kick is a little pooch kick bouncing around grabbed by jared white the 15 yard line he's on the move down the left hash mark and he is tackled across the 30 so good coverage by sac state but for montana state they'll have good field position here and that's that spot that derrick snell usually has but he's injured and got hurt in the pregame warm-ups well derrick snell has played that position a lot the off returner um there's a lot of times when the ball does end up in the off returner's hands like obviously you trust jared white with the football does a really good job of just not panicking, picking up the football that was squibbed, getting what he can get. Bobcats starting in plus field position, out past the 30-yard line. At the 31-yard line, Tommy Mallott is the quarterback. Julius Davis is the running back. They shift things around. They move the two tight ends over to the right side of the line. McCullough, the receiver, on the right side. Thomas to the left. Here's the snap play action. Mallott rolling out to his right. He's under pressure. Stiff arms a man. Still has room. Mallott tucks it, and he picks up a yard or two after running about 30. That was a scramble drill. Looked like there was somebody out there. Yeah, Tommy Mallott had Ryan Lonergan down the field on a deep corner, but Sac State got some pressure on Tommy, forced him out of the pocket. Uh, Tommy was did a really good job of just getting some positive yards, getting the ball forward for a two-yard gain. Two-yard gain for Tommy 2K, over 2,000 career yards on the ground. Two receivers left, one to the right in a pistol formation on second and eight. Here's the snap, turns left, hands it off. Julius Davis running left, gets through the line of scrimmage, and he's tackled from behind up at the 40-yard line. I, uh, was that about a seven-yard gain? Yeah, seven-yard gain, third and one. Well, and we didn't see a ton of Julius Davis in the first half, but, you know, he's a coming off of injury so hasn't been in there as much as as we would have liked to see him maybe but you know just coming off an injury so you got to be smart with him especially with another game next week davis is six for 28 six carries 28 yards sean chambers in now on third and one with an empty backfield marquee johnson slotted out on the right side as a reliever along with williams and thomas here's the snap chambers keeps it runs up the middle he's got the first down keeps his legs chugging at the 45 the pile moving up to the 49 yard line and he falls forward into plus territory at the Hornets 49 yard line that was a hearty nine yard gain by Sean Chambers first interstate bank first down for the Bobcats that's just physical big boy football a gap power 
quarterback following Ryan Lonergan, who lays a huge block on the defense and steps up. Sean Chambers does the rest in the, along with the Bobcat offensive line. Bobcats over 2,000 rushing yards this year. First in the nation, averaging over 320 per game. First and 10 from the 49-yard line in plus territory. Snap to Chambers. He will keep it, runs up the middle, but he's hit quickly at the line of scrimmage. Sacramento State's done a nice job. No Sean gain for Sean Chambers, but this Sac State defense has been very, very good against Chambers, and he'll head back to the sideline now as Malak comes back in. Well, Sacramento State has had a really good game plan for the Bobcat offense. The Bobcat offense has scored a lot of points this season. Uh, Sacramento State has held the Bobcats to just seven points, which is a rare thing to do. The last team that was able to contain the Bobcat offense was South Dakota State, so um, Sacramento State has taken a little bit of a game plan out of Sacramento or Sac or uh, South Dakota State's book. Shotgun formation. Malott is the quarterback. Julius Davis is the running back. Two receivers left. One to the right. Shotgun snap on second down. Fakes the pitch now. Does throw to the outside. Just a little too much mustard on that fastball over the head of Julius Davis. And it is out of bounds and incomplete. Third and ten for Montana State. Jared White in as the halfback. Davis back to the bench. Well, the Bobcats were trying to set up a play action down the field towards the Bobcat sideline. Take a shot. But once again, Sac State holds in coverage, stays put, stays disciplined, forces a huge third and ten. Trimble and Thomas out to the right side. McCullough and Pickering out to the left side from the left hash mark at the 49-yard line in plus territory. It's third and 10 for the Bobcat offense on the first drive of the second half. Cats leading 14-7 to over the Hornets in the first meeting between these two teams since 2019. Shotgun snap. Malat looking to throw. Fires over the middle. Incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. That'll be pass interference. It was intended for Jacob Trimble, but there was some interference there. Yeah, it looks like the Bobcats are going to get bailed out. Uh, Jacob Trimble, not much there, but Sacramento State panicked Holding a little bit. Number 42, defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, Sacramento State just panicked in the back end. It was good coverage, but Sacramento State panicked, held Jacob Trimble, moves the change for the Bobcats. Ashton Moultrie with the pass interference. Bobcats pick up a first interstate bank first down. Now, an easy call for the official that time. Malat is still in there. Jared White is his halfback. Two receivers out to the right side. One of those is Sean Chambers right now, along with Tavion Williams. Shotgun snap. Hands it off. Pitch to Chambers rolling out to his left. He tucks the football, now looks to throw, and it's intercepted at the 20-yard line. A return coming across the field at the 25, angling to the numbers on the outside, and he's out of bounds. So the trickery does not work, and Sean Chambers throws an interception, just the second pick by the Bobcat offense this year, and Sac State will take over. Well, there was one play in the Bobcats game plan this week with both Sean Chambers and Tommy Mallott out there. It was a trick play. It was a reverse to Sean Chambers, who was looking down the field. That's a throw that Sean Chambers is going to want back, something where Sean Chambers usually just takes it, takes what he can get, throws the ball out of bounds, but tries to force something down the field on a trick play. Now it gives the momentum back to Sacramento State. Um, it, you know, Just a huge turning point in the game. So Sac State will have the football when we come back at their own 28-yard line. Each team with one turnover, each with an interception. It's Montana State 14, Sac State 7, 11.59 to go in the third quarter. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. At Montana State University, students shape signature experiences that take them across the state and into local communities. MSU is dedicated to its land-grant mission, integrating transformational learning, discovery, and service that improves lives. You'll find our students teaching across Montana, conducting research in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, or even creating small shelter prototypes to address homelessness. Montana State University. Think outside. The Rocking R Bar is your home for everything Bobcat football. Whether the cats are home or away, we are your game day headquarters. Swing by for great food specials like the Sunny Holland Burger from our new grill, Hail Mary's. We also serve the best Montana craft beer and liquor the state has to offer. So grab a pint, something to eat, and one of our very own Rocking R Bar liquors because it's a great time to be a Bobcat at the Rocking R Bar. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. outside the... 
for your complete branding solutions. Located in Bozeman, Montana, we offer a full print shop for banners, signs, wraps, trade show booths and graphics, promotional products, and much more. If you can think it, we can ink it. We are a proud supporter and corporate sponsor of the MSU Bobcats. Like us on Facebook to see some of our cat wraps. Ready to build your brand? Think Ink and call us at 406-922-6462 or visit us on the web at inkoutside.com. Parenting Montana, Montana parents know parenting isn't easy. ParentingMontana.org provides you with a way to build the skills your child needs to be successful. ParentingMontana.org, tools for your child. A game lead or it's a big jumbled mess. Well, if the Cats win this game, they're in the driver's seat the rest of the season, but if the Sacramento State's able to pull this thing off, they believe that they can end the season as a Big Sky champs and repeat four times in a row. For Sacramento State, they take over after the interception thrown by Sean Chambers, just the second pick thrown by the Bobcats this year. They've done good handling the football. All right, here we go from their own 28-yard line. Here's the snap. They hand it off, and it quickly blown up. Mullaney had nowhere to go, and a great job by Blake Schmidt getting in there and wrapping up the ball carrier. Blake Schmidt and the crew stepping up on defense, on that defensive front. Coach Howe getting the defensive line fired up in the second half. They're going to have to play a huge role. They kind of lost the battle in the first half, but um, stepping up on that first play. Cats up 14-7. to seven. Second and 10. Here's the snap. Play action thrown over the middle. That ball is tipped, and it is picked. Rylan Ort with the interception. That pass was knocked free by Miles Jackson, and Rylan Ort with the interception. Tips and overthrows have played a huge role in this game. Um, as an offensive team, you do not want to have tips and overthrows. They lead to incompletions. They lead to bad things like turnovers. Rylan Ort steps up, grabs the tip ball. Looks like um, I think it was Miles Jackson. Miles Jackson yeah. stepping up. It was, you know, causing the tip ball, um, and then Rylan Ort running to the football gets hit. A huge momentum play. Another time, the Bobcat defense just steps up and makes a play, just when you think all the momentum's in Sac State's hands. Third interception of the year for Rylan Ort. The Bobcats quickly up to the line. Yeah, Ort was tackled quickly, so the Cats take over at the 26-yard line in plus territory. Pistol formation. Malott takes the snap, turns left, fakes the handoff to Marquis. Malott running to his left outside the numbers, angling toward the first down marker, and he is upended as he got near that first down marker. And let's see where the spot is. Very close, either 9 or 10 yards. And he is a yard shy, so it'll be second and one. This another quarterback read from Tommy Malott. Defense crashes on the running back, Marquis Johnson, and Tommy Malott just pulls it, gets nine yards on the play. Very tough to contain Tommy Malott, especially when you're crashing on the running back. Marquis still the running back. Over to the right side, it's McCullough and Thomas from the pistol formation on second and one at the 17-yard line of the Rose Hours red zone. Here's the snap. He hands it off. Marquis Johnson shuffling up the middle. He's got the first down up to the 10-yard line. Seven-yard gain by Marquis Johnson. Brent, uh, Vegan, or Brent Vegan told us that they were going to use Marquis as a running back during catch at this week, and now we see him picking up some positive yards between the tackles. Well, Marquis Johnson is electric with the ball in his hands, so um, I know the coaching staff, they want to get the ball to Marquis because he can has game-breaking speed that can lead to huge touchdowns. First and 10 from the 11-yard line after that first interstate bank first down. Two receivers right, one to the left. Pistol snap, turns. Fakes the handoff. Malott running down the right hash mark, heading toward the goal line, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana State. Tommy Malott down the right hash mark, scores his first rushing touchdown of the season. It comes in week eight, and it gives the Bobcats a 20-7 lead. Great defense leads to great offense. Defense forces a turnover, gives the Bobcat offense the ball on the plus 20. Tommy Malott does the rest, couple runs, marches it in the end zone, captures that momentum back. Awesome to see the Bobcats go up. So the Bobcats with an opportunity for a third point after attempt now. Tommy Sullivan will snap it. Here it is, Abshire puts it down and the right-footed kick is up. 
and that kick is good. A Conoco kick is converted. Tommy Mallott with an 11-yard touchdown run capitalizes on the Ryland Ort interception set up by the tip by Miles Jackson, who's in for the injured Lavelle Price Jr. Tommy Mallott's first rushing touchdown of the year, his 24th of his storied career. We're taking a break as the Bobcats start to take a little control. It's Montana State 21, Sacramento State 7, 10 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. It was a nice spring day, so I decided to do a little work around the house. I didn't think anything of it. I've dug a thousand holes a thousand times until I hit a shallow gas line. The repair cost me over $5,000, and in one fell swoop, the family vacation was kaput. I know I'm not the only one, but it still hurts. Next time I'm calling 811 before I dig. Learn from Jerry and hundreds of others. Call 811 before you dig. Brought to you by Montana811.org. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. It's time for a wellness tip from SCL Health, now Intermountain Health, an official health partner of the Bobcats. Do you ever feel winded after attending a Bobcats game? Here's something you might not know. Of course you do. You're a true blue and gold Bobcat fan. You sing the fight song at the top of your lungs. Stand up and cheer. Cheer long and loud for dear Montana State. That being said, keep those lungs healthy. The Bobcats need your energy. Learn more at intermountainhealth.org. Tommy Mallott's first rushing touchdown of the season converts an interception from Rylan Ort into seven points. Bobcats leading the Hornets 21-7 with 10 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the third quarter out in Sacramento. Bridger Brewing is home to award-winning, locally crafted beer and pizza. Bridger Brewing, cheers to every adventure being better than the last. Boy, Dan, how about this a swing of momentum in the first five minutes of this third quarter? Well, we saw some momentum this afternoon at the Bobcat uh, Hornet volleyball match, but there's nothing like an interception and then a punch it right in the end zone right away to take that momentum back on your sideline. And for it to be Miles Jackson who got that tip, a guy stepping in for the injured Lavelle Price Jr., that's a big-time play. Well, it's a big-time play, and it creates points. That's 14 points off turnover for the Bobcats. That's essentially... Um, two touchdowns for the Bobcat defense. So they have stepped up huge tonight as Sac State is electric on offense. So credit to the whole entire Bobcat defense just stepping up and making plays. Two more interceptions for the Bobcats today. Here's the kickoff by Brendan Hall toward the left hash mark at the five-yard line. A fair catch called for there. And uh, Sac State will take over with 10, 10 to go in the third. Montana State 21, Sacramento State 7. I'm guessing those... Uh, Sac State coaching staff has told them to fair catch that. He had about 15 yards after he would have caught that ball of cushion to get it upfield. Yeah, kind of surprising to see, but I guess they'll just take it at the 25-yard line. And Sacramento State going back to work. The Bobcats with their ninth interception of the year among the nation's leaders. That's turned into 14 of the 21 points today. So from their own 25-yard line. Sacramento State with a football going from right to left. Shotgun snap. Bennett, quick throw over the middle. That is caught by Grover. He is hit as he picks up a couple of yards after the catch. He Bennett does get the first lead. down. Quick slant over the middle, and it turns into a first down from the 11-yard gain up to the 36-yard line. Well, the Bobcats, they have all the momentum right now, but Sac State is an offense that can score quickly and score often. And a gutsy quick throw over the middle right where the interception occurred on the last drive. Here's the snap and a handoff. Mullaney up the middle. He runs into a wall of Nolan Askelson and some of his white jersey friends. Up to the 40-yard line for a four-yard gain. Second and six. Nice to see Drew Palador back out there as a safety. They had gone back to the locker room earlier. Did not play defensively in that second quarter. Was out on one of the kick return coverages. So yeah, it's a big gain. Again, second and six. Sac State from their own 40-yard line. Shotgun snap with an empty backfield. Bennett steps up, throws over the middle. Mullaney makes the catch, and he's able to pick up the first down. About two or three yards after the catch. Askelson with the tackle. Six-yard gain on the catch and run. 
first and 10 coming up for Sac State, and I think somebody might be injured over there. I think it's Nolan. Yeah, playing in his 40th career game. Danny Louis Lakepa already went down earlier on that first drive of the game. And Mulaney, the running back, is down as well. Wow. What a, what a blow that would be for the Bobcat defense, losing the two leaders in Nolan Askelson and Danny Yu. Um, oh, I really hope that Nolan is all right. He, he had to miss a lot of last year um, due to injury, but he's a tough kid, and, and hopefully nothing too serious for him. He was back up, wearing that big brace on the right knee at the ACL injury last season. Bring him out, bring him out. Looks like he wanted to go back in, so it could have been just that the wind knocked out of him. Okay. Well, Cole Bullock is in there now with McCade O'Reilly. So you got Bullock and O'Reilly and Miles Jackson in the middle of this defense right now. Basically three guys stepping up for injured Bobcats on a defense that has helped pick off two passes, converting to 14 points and a 21-7 lead for the Cats with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. First down snap, handoff, Tau Tolliver up the middle. He's got room, bounces off a tackler. He's got space at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown from 53 yards out right through that injured linebacker group, Elijah Tau Tolliver with a strike for a TD. Well, and you get a guy like Nolan Askelson who comes out of the football game, Cole Bullock comes in, um, Sac State attacks Cole Bullock, Cole Bullock misses his fit, and Sacramento State is able to get a huge gain and get some momentum back in this football game. We haven't seen these big plays from Sac State. We saw them on film coming into it, and they finally are able to strike and put points Zach up on the board. Ryder in for the extra point. So Sacramento State, a point after attempt now. The Bobcats getting banged up, and that turns into a big play. This kick is up, and this kick it is good. good. So the PAT makes it a one-score game after a 53-yard touchdown run by Elijah Tau Tolliver. It's his third rushing touchdown of the season, and he is approaching now 200 yards on the year. So he only had 108 coming in. He's got 64 today and 53 of that on that touchdown run. We'll take a break. 8.48 to go in the third quarter. we got a lot of twists and turns left. It's Montana State 21, Sac State 14. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. From our 1946 roots, providing lumber for Yellowstone National Park, to our current headquarters in Bozeman, we at Simpkins Hallen believe in building the Gallatin Valley's future while continuing to honor its past. Contractors large and small benefit from our decades of experience and our extensive network of suppliers. We can source the materials you need, no matter the project. For all your building needs, go to where longstanding traditions have met with quality building products for over 75 years. Simpkins Hallen, a Montana tradition among builders since 1946. It's the season of home improvement, and Williams Plumbing will help you tackle the big stuff. Are old roots clogging your sewer line? Williams has the tools to fix it. Have you checked your septic system lately? We have the knowledge and experience to maintain or repair it. Looking to install a yard hydrant? We'll do it promptly and professionally. Don't sweat the big stuff. Call Williams Plumbing today. Bridger Brewing is home to award-winning locally crafted beer and pizza and is proud to support all things Bobcat sports. Open 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, last beer served at 8 p.m. and located right across from the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse. Stop by after the game today to enjoy a cold pint of beer and a slice of made-from-scratch delicious pizza. Dine-in service and online ordering for takeout are both available. Check out BridgerBrewing.com and at Bridger Brewing on Instagram and Facebook and stay tuned for updates on our newest adventure in Three Forks, Montana. 8.48 to go in the third quarter. It's Montana State 21, Sacramento State 14. Elijah Tau Tolliver with a 53-yard rushing touchdown for Sacramento State to make this a one-score game. Well, Dan, a big play for Sac State, and they're right back in this thing. Yeah, this momentum has uh, switched from sideline <laughs> to sideline all evening. And uh, wh whoever's going to have the ball last here might win this football game, but Bobcats need to answer here with another score if possible. It's been tough. The Cats are banged up, and a lot of that happening tonight, so it's not like you had a chance to prepare for it. Nolan Askelson was out on that last play right after getting hurt. We'll see if we see him back out there, but Louis Lakepa is out and hurt. Lavelle Price Jr. is out. Drew Polidor just got back on that last drive, and, uh, and Derek Snell got hurt 
during the uh, the pregame warm-up. So a that's, lot of adversity. Yeah, Nolan's, Nolan's running out there on kickoff return here right now. All right, so that's a good one. But with him out on that one play, Sac State attacked Cole Bullock. He's a very good linebacker, but he's still learning the system. Oh, yeah. Credit to Sac State attacking um, new guys coming in the game. We see it all the time where you attack a cornerback that comes in the game fresh. It's no different at any other position. Marquis Johnson is back to receive the kickoff. Jared White is in the spot that Snell typically is. Kind of up at the 10-yard line. Sac State ready to kick this thing off from right to left. With the wind at his back, this is a squib kick bouncing around. Marquis Johnson makes a catch on a hop at the 10-yard line. Johnson to the numbers on the left side. Cuts back to the hash mark. Spins forward, and he will be stopped. About the 25-yard line, that ball is loose. That ball is loose. There's a fumble, and we'll see which way it goes. It's a rugby scrum for that loose football. The Bobcats have fumbled it. Who picks it up? Where is the fumble recovery? No signal yet. Sac State comes out of it with the football, but the officials have not yet signaled. Waiting for the official signal, but Sac State came out of the scrum with a football. And we're going to get word now. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the kicking team. First down. Sacramento State able to recover the football. Only the third lost fumble now for Montana State this year. And Sacramento State forces a huge turnover. And they'll be knocking on the red zone door. Although I think he might be out. Or it might, might have been down. Did yeah. You see that? Yeah, I mean, it looks like he was down. But the ball was definitely coming loose. Yeah, that ball is coming loose. So, um, it, and we did talk with that official coming in that they don't have a lot of coverage on coverage that, side on that home side or the way sideline. So uh, it could be just a call stands. Well, it's a situation there where the ball was starting to come loose, but then it, now it's a question, did he regain the possession while he kind of, uh, you know, like had it in the, the nook of his elbow and then his elbow hit the ground, then that's when it came loose. But they're going to say that fumble is recovered by Sac State and they snap the ball. A handoff up the middle, Tal Tolliver is bear hugged by Blake Schmidt. A two-yard gain. Turnovers have been a major story in this game. Sacramento State recovering a fumble from Marquis Johnson, and now Sac State is knocking on the door of the red zone, down 21-14 with 8.20 to go in the third quarter. Well, football is such a momentum game, and Sac State has a chance to tie up this thing. There's a reason why they have won three straight Big Sky championships. They're a tough team to beat, especially at home. Shotgun formation, second and eight. Here's the snap. Bennett looking to throw. Takes a shot to the end zone down the left sideline. That is incomplete. And a flag is thrown. Andrew Powdrell did not turn around, and he ran in to Devin Gandy. That's pass interference. Oh, well, Devin Gandy, he had a step on Andrew Powdrell. Pass interference, oh. number one of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Good. Same situation uh, if you're a defensive back and, and you're chasing someone. And, you know, Sac State has a lot of team speed. Andrew Powdrell just panicked. Um, it wasn't a lot of contact, but it was enough contact for them to issue a penalty. Yeah, it was the right call. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, Andrew Powdrell, he's a young kid, so he's going to learn from that mistake. Um, just an inside fade, a very tough time to, to cover. And um, let's see if this Bobcat defense can swell up one time to force Sac State to a field goal. Two big mistakes, a lost fumble and a pass interference moves uh, Sac State up to the eight yard line and a false start on first and goal to go from the eight yard line. Looks like a false start here for Sac State, but let's double check, unless one of the Bobcats jumped off sides. Start, yep. Number 62, offense, five yard penalty, first down. A couple of crucial false starts for the Hornets tonight. Yeah, a couple times they've been driving and um, just penalties have been a killer. Uh, tips and overthrows and penalties. So Sac State offensively has just not executed tonight. And that was Kendall Riley again, who is in due to an injury on the left tackle position. Riley slotted into the right guard spot because they had to reshuffle that offensive line at the start of the game due to injury. So first and goal to go from the 13-yard line now for Sac State. Shotgun snap. Bennett hands it off. Tau Tolliver cuts it back to the left side outside of the hash marks, trying to get to the edge. Use the stiff arm, and he's out of bounds. Stiff arm of John Johnson, but he does get up to the four-yard line for a nine-yard gain. Well, and it, it sets up, you know, a huge play. I mean, for him to be able to get positive yardage on that play delivers a blow to John Johnson. Uh, huge stiff arm. Uh, you know, Sac State, now they have three plays inside the five-yard line. I know this is four-down territory for them. Um, there's not a lot of situations here and they've had some success on defense so they're confident in this offense so 
look for Sac State if they're not able to get it to, to use all four downs. It was a fancy stiff arm, but John Johnson kept that edge, and that helped force Tal Tulliver out of bounds. Here's the snap, handoff, or Bennett rather running left, and he is tackled by Nolan Askelson inside the five-yard line up to about the two, no, the one-yard line. It'll be now uh, a very close opportunity for Sac State. Well, Sac State loves the quarterback run in these situations, in these goal line situations. It goes back to the last couple years where they had O'Hara running this offense at quarterback, that two-quarterback system. So look for Sac State to have another quarterback run. Bennett under center, third and goal to go for the one. Snap, pitches it back, it's lost, it's loose, and Bennett, I believe, jumped back on it, or excuse me, Burnett rather. Zeke Burnett jumping back on it as they tried to pitch to him, but that is a huge loss as it pushes them back toward the 10-yard line. That's about an eight-yard loss, and that brings up fourth and goal to go from eight yards out, and now they're going to kick the field goal. Yeah, that's just uh, bad execution again by the Sacramento State offense. Um, that's you know, seven or eight times tonight where they just have not executed a, a negative play, especially on the one-yard line, forces a field goal. Yeah, Burnett just kind of dropped that pitch, which hit him in the hands of the chest. So now a field goal attempt right in the middle of the field. Snap the hold. The kick, this is up, and that is through. So the field goal is good. That makes it 21-17. Montana State still in front. 6.09 to go in the third quarter. Boy, Dan, that could have been a disaster for the Bobcats, but to hold them to a field goal, that's a semblance of a win. Yeah, that's holding your water there to hold them to a field goal, no question about it, but uh, a comedy of errors on both teams here in this third quarter. It's been a little sloppy tonight. It's just been poor execution offensively. Just Even special teams, it just has not been a clean football at all. The Bobcats have struggled on offense. They haven't executed. Um, Sacramento State has not executed. Sacramento State, quite frankly, feels like they should be leading this football game. They've given the Cats 14 points tonight. Uh, no, they, the Bobcats just gave Sacramento State three points there on that field goal attempt. But, um, you know, it's going to be a battle down the stretch. And, you know, there's six minutes left in this third quarter. Um, this is a huge drive in the football game um, because the Bobcats can give this football back and um, Sacramento State can go down and take the lead. So it, it's going to be a crucial drive for the Bobcats. Now Marquis Johnson fumbled on that last kick return. He's back there again. The right-footed kick is low, skidding along, bounces at the 20, and Marquis Johnson picks it up at the 10. He runs to his right, nowhere to go, spins off one man, but he is down inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, another really good coverage by Sacramento State. Um, using that squib kick, sometimes it's tough to handle in the back end. Marquis was juggling a little bit, and Sac State, Puts the ball carrier down at the 10-yard line. Interwest Moving and Storage is the official moving company of the MSU Bobcats. Well, you know, Montana State, again, holding Sac State to that field goal does kind of put into perspective the fact that the Cats have turned their two interceptions into scores, into touchdowns. One was the touchdown run by Tommy Malott. The other was a touchdown return on the interception by John Johnson. Cats take over at their own 10-yard line. Tommy Malott in the shotgun formation. Takes the snap. He fakes the handoff, he runs up the middle, and he gets into the second level or so. It's a nice game, it turns into a six yard gain. Big time push by the offensive line, second and four. Yeah, offensive line is starting to get some more push in this second half, but um, the Bobcats have been unable to have that game breaking run that we're accustomed to. Longest run today, 22 yards from Tommy Mulott. Cats huddling up here, 5.35 to go in the third quarter. Montana State leading 21-17. They're at their own 16-yard line, looking at second and four. Spread out to the left side, that is Thomas and McCullough. Julius Davis is the running back. Tommy Mallott in the shotgun formation in the middle of the field. Takes the snap, hands it off. Julius Davis cuts up field inside the numbers. He hurdles a man, and he gets undercut up at the 30-yard line. Big time hole, used a stiff arm, and then got tripped up. So he's up to the 30-yard line after a big gain. First down for the Bobcats. Bobcat offensive line is starting to lean on this Sacramento State defensive front, and the front seven for Sacramento State starting to get some more push in the second half. Julius Davis almost broke that thing for a big time gain. Nonetheless, still a first down. Time for that Don Joy Mafia to take over. Two receivers left, one to the right, pistol formation on the right hash mark. 
First and 10 at their own 30 yard line for the Cats up 21 17. Snap, fakes the handoff. Malott on a bootleg, rolling out to his left. Throws, completes the pass of the numbers to Ty McCullough, absorbs one hit, and he's able to fall forward up to the 35 yard line for a five yard gain. McCullough's a tough man. He got hit hard and stayed on his feet. Yeah, that's tough as a receiver, sticking through the catch. Knowing that you're going to get hit, you hear footsteps. Ty McCullough uses his hands, goes out, comes back to the football, makes sure to catch it, secure it, get a positive gain, keep in front of the sticks. Sean Chambers back in there on second and six at the Cats' own 34-yard line late in the third quarter. Three receivers right, one to the left. Shotgun snap. Fakes the handoff. Chambers up the middle. Slips through one man, and he powers forward up to the 39-yard line for a five-yard gain, and that'll bring up third and one. Chambers now just up over 40 yards on eight carries tonight. Yeah, and you know, brings up another third down. Looks like it's a little different. Usually in these third and short, short situations, we've seen Sean Chambers, but in this situation, we're going to see Tommy Mallott. They're going to huddle up, um, get a good play call in. Wouldn't be surprised if Tommy Mallott keeps this football. Spread out to the right side is McCullough, Tavion Williams, and Marquis Johnson. Ryan Lonergan out to the left side with an empty backfield. Lonergan in motion from left to right. Shotgun formation. Now Lonergan in as the fullback after coming in motion. The snap. Malat does keep it. He runs left, trying to get to the outside. He does. He picks up the first down, and he's forced out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Good blocking that time. There was some pressure and penetration that time by the Hornets, but Malat with his speed able to get to the outside and picks up the first interstate bank first down. Well, Sac State dialed up the perfect blitz for that play call. Uh, it was power to the field. But Tommy Mallott did Tommy Mallott things. Uh, there was nothing there on the front side. Took it off the back, which you're not supposed to do. But when you get a first down, um, no one's going to be complaining. Forceful block by Rush Reimer that time. Mallott is under center now. Takes the, or excuse me, Chambers rather. Takes the snap, play action. Rolls out to his right. Steps up. He tucks the football, and he's on the move down the middle of the field. Angles to his left, and he's tripped up. Up the first down marker into plus territory. He's a yard shy of the first down at the 47-yard line. Wanted to take a shot. Instead, picks up seven. No, make it nine, rather. Second and one. Could have gave Cleveland Thomas a chance down the field, but I like Sean Chambers knowing the situation of just tucking it and running it getting nine yard gain, keeping the Bobcats moving forward. Second and one to the 47 yard line in Hornets territory. Cats up 21-17 in a top three battle. Here's the snap, pitch to the left side. Davis running along the numbers on the left side. Spins forward up to the 40 yard line as he's forced out of bounds. Six yard gain for Julius Davis running through a lot of black jerseys and uh, the Bobcats pick up that first interstate bank first down. It's a quick pitch from Sean Chambers to Julius Davis out of the backfield to get Julius Davis out in space, one-on-one -on -one with some Sac State defenders. Trayton Pickering does a good job of blocking towards the Bobcats sideline, and Julius Davis does the rest, picks up the first down. A lot back in there at the 40-yard line in Hornet territory. Two receivers spread out to the left side, two to the right. Jared White is the running back. Late in the third quarter, 135 in the clock running in the third. Snap, Malott looking to throw, steps up. Fires to the left side, caught for a first down near the left sideline by Ty McCullough. Turns up field and picks up an additional four yards, shy of the 20-yard line. They put him down at the 24-yard line. First interstate bank, first down, knock it on the door of the Rose Hours red zone. That's just a big-time throw, big-time catch from Tommy Mallott out to Ty McCullough. Ty McCullough has done a tremendous job tonight of coming back to the football and not sitting and waiting on it as that's when tips can happen and Sac State is able to adjust but Ty McCullough does a good job of coming out of those routes and running back to the football and Tommy Mallott is delivering strikes. Fourth catch for Ty McCullough for 53 yards tonight and a touchdown. From the left hash mark, up at the 24-yard line. Here's the snap, handoff. Jared White's up the middle, angling to his left toward the numbers. Shuffles back, and he is tackled as he was shuffling left. Picks up the first down. He's up to the 12-yard line. It'll be first and 10, deep in the red zone now, and a great run by Jared White. Well, and credit to the Bobcat offensive line and tight ends. Those five, six-yard runs in the first half are now 10, 11-yarders. Offset eye. Pistol formation, left hash mark, snap. Turns left, hands it off. Jared White forcing up the middle on that left hash mark. Takes it up to the nine-yard line after a three-yard gain. Only his second carry of the day. He's up to 15 yards now. Yeah, Jared White, we haven't seen him a lot, but we're seeing him here in the third quarter and brings up uh, fourth quarter. What more can you want? 21-17. Boy, what a long, sustained drive here by Montana State. We're heading to the fourth quarter. Montana State driving. 
They've got their 11th play of this drive coming up. As we head to the fourth, it's Montana State 21, Sac State 17. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Are you too hot? Are you too cold? Did you know that you don't have to just deal with it? We at Ambient Air Solutions understand how important comfort plays on your emotions, health, and quality of life on a daily basis. Ambient Air Solutions offers 24-7 emergency service for residential and commercial clients. We also offer financing to help ease the financial stress and burden of a lifelong investment. Call Ambient Air Solutions at 406-577-1818 and leave it to the professionals. Ambient Air Solutions, simplifying heating and cooling. From ATVs to heavy RVs, the 2023 Chevy Silverado provides everything you need for a long day of towing. With proven technologies like trailer sway control, hill start assist, and auto grade braking. You'll also get the capability to work smarter, not harder, with the available multi-flex tailgate. Offering six different functions to help improve loading, unloading, and accessing the cargo bed. Check out the legendary Silverado at your Montana Chevy dealers. Proud sponsors of your Montana State Bobcats. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much-needed life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. That's why at Firehouse Subs, they make their subs differently, because their subs can make a difference. Their family of restaurant owners and local crews are proud to continue to serve you the hot, hearty, life-saving subs you crave every day. In fact, it's never been easier to grab their subs to go with Rapid Rescue To Go. Save time when you order online at firehousesubs.com or on their app. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Montana State leading 21-17 over Sacramento State. The Bobcats are at the nine-yard line of Sacramento State facing second and seven. Let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat football. XL Country, 100.7. KXLB Churchill, Bozeman, Belgrade. Also in Livingston on Translator K254AL. I'm Caton Gologli alongside RJ Fitzgerald with Dylan McPhail up in the broadcast, First Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Dan Davis is on the sideline, and uh, Will Gordon is back in the Bozeman studios. We're ready to start the fourth quarter with Montana State up 21-17 over Sacramento State, and they're at the nine-yard line of the Hornets. Dortech serving all your garage door needs. Dortech is raising the door on quality. All right, Dan, here we go. Starting the fourth quarter. The Bobcats knocking on the door of a long drive here. What are you looking for? Boy, the Bobcats have started this drive on their own 10-yard line. Engineer down here to the other 10-yard line. And they, Tommy Malat's done a great job of engineering this drive. And, you know, Sean Chambers has been there as well. But I can see the ball in, in Tommy Malat's hand here. Uh, as we get to a closer to the end zone. Malat, 95 yards on 15 carries. He's gone over 2,000 career rushing yards. He's collected his first rushing touchdown of the season, and the Bobcats have uh, tallied up 225 yards on the ground today. RJ, how are the Bobcats playing this nine yards out from the goal line? Well, ideally you keep the ball in your best player's hands, and that best player is Tommy Malat. He has 2,000 yards. For a reason, you get the ball in Tommy Malott's hands, but at the same time, they're going to be keying in on Tommy Malott in that run game. So look for maybe a play action to one of these tight ends. All right, second and seven from the nine-yard line of the Hornets for Montana State. Empty backfield. They shift the tight ends to the right side and now bring Julius Davis into a pistol formation. Thomas and McCullough spread out to the right side. Pistol snap. Malott. Fakes the handoff. He's running right along the right hash mark, angling toward the goal line, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana State from nine yards out. Tommy Mallott with his second rushing touchdown of the day, and the Bobcats complete a long, time-winding drive to score the touchdown. Well, once again, Sac State bites on the run. Tommy Mallott does Tommy Mallott things. Pulse of football essentially walks in the end zone. What a drive from the Bobcats to go up get a touchdown on the board awesome to see an 11 play 90 yard touchdown drive and now the bobcats looking for another pat leading by 10 up 27 17 with a chance for the pat now sullivan ready to snap and does abshire puts it down and this kick is up and that kick is good the conoco kick 
is converted. So Montana State with an 11 play, 90 yard drive, six minutes, 11 seconds, and 70 of those 90 yards were on the ground by this Bobcat rushing offense. Malat over 100 rushing yards for the first time this season. 16 carries, 104 yards, two rushing touchdowns for Montana State today. Well, we talk about we talked about it this morning that big men win in November, but you know this feels like a November football game. Uh, this is playoff time. This is a playoff atmosphere, and for the Bobcats to go march it down 90 yards on this Sac State defense, who has had a lot of success tonight against the Bobcats offensively, just a testament to this whole entire offensive line and the tight ends just blocking their tails off on that entire drive. Boy, Dan, that was a really impressive drive by the Bobcats, and they did it where their bread has been buttered on the ground. Yeah, they certainly did. They uh, kind of wished their will upon their opponents right there, and it's evident that uh, Tommy Malat is healthy. <laughs> Yes, sir. 25th rushing touchdown in Tommy's career as he becomes Tommy 2K going over 2,000 career yards. Brendan Hall with a right-footed kickoff, and that will be a touchback. With the wind at his back, that one goes an extra 10 or really 15 yards or so. So Sacramento State will have the football at their own 25-yard line. 14 minutes, 53 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Bobcats leading 28-7, to seven, and now it's a chance for this defense to go back to work. Well, the defense has a chance to slam the door shut on Sacramento State tonight. Um, Sacramento State had some success a couple drives earlier with those explosive runs, but that was also with Nolan Askelson out of the football game. Askelson is back in there. He was shaken up a little bit earlier in the third quarter. First snap, toss out to the left side. Now Tolliver's got it. He's on the move outside of the numbers, and he is tackled shy of the first down marker. Nolan Askelson in there for the stop. And with that Bobcat tackle, another $10 is being donated to the Bozeman Food Bank, courtesy of Town and Country Foods. Well, and you can definitely tell Nolan is playing through something, uh, hobbling around a little bit out there, but doing a good job. Snap and a handoff on second down, running up the middle. Tal Tolliver able to pick up the first down, needed two yards, and picked up four. Remember, Danny and Louis Lekepa went down earlier. His arm is in a sling, and he was in a heap of pain after an injury at the end of the first drive of the game, or the first uh, defensive drive of the game for Montana State. First and 10 from their own 37-yard line for the Hornets. Shotgun snap, Ben Bennett looking to throw, fires into the flat on the right side, bobbled and incomplete. Gibson was there, that throw was kind of a little shallow and Gibson just did not put his mitts on it cleanly. Andrew Powdrell on the coverage, incomplete second and 10. Well, and the Bobcats in this situation, Ben, don't break, don't give up huge explosive plays as a long time killing drive will not hurt you. The two score lead, Cats up 28-17 over the Hornets. Trying to win their 13th, 13th consecutive game against a Big Sky opponent. Shotgun snap on second down. Bennett fires into the flat on the left side. Tau Tolliver upfield outside of the numbers, and he pushes forward along the left sideline. See where he stepped out here. They put him down at the 41-yard line for a four-yard gain, third and six. And look for Sacramento State to run an RPO across the middle. They've had a lot of success. Look for a guy like Marshall Martin to get involved in this huge third down play. Now the Cats fans starting to make some noise on the opposite side of Hornet Stadium behind the Bobcat bench. Third and six from their own 41-yard line for Sacramento State. Shotgun formation. Two receivers left, two to the right. Here's the snap. Throws into the flat on the left side. Burnett makes a catch. Makes one man miss. He's got the first down. He's tackled across the 50-yard line by John Johnson up to the 49-yard line. Well, a little blitz from Coach Willie Mack where you drop Ben Seymour out into the flat and you bring Mikado O'Reilly, who traditionally has coverage in the flat, on the blitz, but Ben Seymour was not familiar in that open field tackle, was unable to make the pass. Empty backfield, here's the snap up in the shotgun formation. Toss over the middle, that is caught by Grover, and he turns up field and is tackled after another two yards after the catch. It's a nine yard catch and run, so that'll bring up second and one from the 39 yard line for Sacramento State, excuse me, from the 40 yard line for Sacramento State. And Sacramento State is starting to operate once again on offense. Um, let's see if they take a shot deep towards the end zone as you're kind of in that shot territory on a second and short. These are two of the most explosive teams in the league. And here's the snap. Bennett takes a shot down that left sideline, and that is caught by Gibson. He stays at his feet at the 15, and he's down the left sideline and into the end zone for a touchdown. But there is a flag on the play. 
Let's see what the call is. Gibson is in from 40 yards out for a touchdown pending the flag. The officials are talking about it. Let's see what we've got. Illegal shift. Two men moving in motion. Oh. On the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. An illegal shift pulls a touchdown off the board. That is a huge break for the Bobcat defense. Um, as Sacramento State took a shot on second and one, uh, Gibson went up and made a phenomenal catch, but all for not as uh, Sac State had two men moving at the same time. And it was. It was just a mistake. It was two guys who just really weren't set. They were still kind of shifting around when that ball was snapped. It's the right call, and that's a major mistake. Second and six from their own 40, or excuse me, from the 45-yard line of the Bobcats. Snap thrown over to the left side of the left hash mark, and Marshall dropped it. Hit him in the gut, but he heard the footsteps, and he drops that football. And now it's third and six for Sacramento State. What a turn of events. And Zach Cruz in here for a little big-time pass rush from the edge. Seymour on the right end. Cruz and Valdez in the middle. Brody Greeby on the left side. Third and six. Shotgun formation for Sacramento State, trailing 28-17 with 12 and a half to play in the ball game. Bennett gets the call in from the sideline, steps up toward the line and relays it. Now ready to go. Takes a chest high snap, throws into the left side on the flat. Tau Tauler makes a catch, makes one man miss, trying to get to the outside, and he is tackled out of bounds. Rylan Ort was there to clean it all up, and he is down at the 49 yard line. Fourth down for Sacramento State, and it looks like they're going for it. Well, when one Bobcat tackler misses, it's a good thing you have 10 other white jerseys rallying to the football. Great team effort forcing that fourth and five here. Under 12 to play in the ball game. Montana State up 28-17. Some nervous energy from Sacramento State now. They just had a touchdown pulled off the board after an illegal shift penalty. From the 44 yard line in Montana State territory. On fourth down, here's the snap. Bennett on the run, up the field, down the left hash mark. He's got the first down and more. Up to the 30 yard line, he's finally tackled by Rylan Ort. Up to the 26 yard line. Caden Bennett hasn't had a ton of that tonight, but a big, crucial first down picked up on the fourth down attempt. Well, Ta Tolliver picked up Nolan Askelson on the blitz. Cut blocks Nolan Askelson, and Caden Bennett takes off and runs for a huge first down. Rylan Ort saves the potential touchdown. So, it's up to the 27-yard line now after the fourth down conversion. Snap for Sac State. Handoff up the middle. Burnett runs up the left hash mark, and he's upended after picking up the first down. Put him up at the 16-yard line, and a big hole in the middle of the field that time. Yeah, another huge, huge opportunity for the Bobcat defense to step up once again. Um, you know, it's one of those situations where if you can force them to a field goal, then they got to get a two-point conversion. Cats up 28-17, 10.40 to go in the ballgame. It's first and 10 from the 16-yard line in the red zone for Sacramento State. Bobcats just had a long six-and-a-half-minute touchdown drive capped by Tommy Mallott to make it a two-score game. Shotgun snap, Burnett or Bennett looking to throw, fires over the middle. That is caught by Hill, and he dives forward up to the 10-yard line. It's picked up two or three yards after the, uh, after the catch, and that'll bring up second and three. And this quick game from Sacramento State. Caden Bennett is getting the ball out fast, so it eliminates the great pass rush from Montana State. Caden Bennett takes the shotgun snap. He hands it off. Tau Tolliver up the middle on the left hash mark. He shifts. He moves forward, and he carries a man into the end zone. Touchdown for Sacramento State from 10 yards out. And we got ourselves a ball game. A <laughs> um, little uncertain. Maybe too much time left in the game to go for two for Sacramento State, but uh, we got a ball game, uh, two versus three in the country. There's a reason why Sacramento State has won three straight Big Sky Championships. They're not gonna go down easy. It's a heck of a run by Elijah Tau Tolliver between the tackles. It really was. Stepping in for the injured Marcus Fulcher there, starting running back. Here's the snap for the PAT. This kick is up, and that kick is good. So the point after is through. How about a couple of double-digit play drives ending in touchdowns on both sides a 12 play 75 yard drive by sacramento state and it's capped off by the 10 yard rushing touchdown by elijah tau tolliver his second rushing touchdown of the day he's got 97 yards on the ground we're taking a break bobcats will receive the kick when we get back 10 minutes and two seconds to go in the ball game it's montana state 28 sacramento state 24 you're listening to bobcat football presented by learfield 
Are you looking for a rewarding career right here in Montana? Applied Materials is located in Kalispell, Montana, and is hiring for engineering and manufacturing roles. The leader in materials engineering solutions used to produce virtually every new chip and advanced display in the world. Applied Materials offers top-notch wages and full benefits on day one. Go to AppliedMaterials.com slash careers and search for the jobs by location to find your next career with Applied Materials. Our innovations make possible a better future. Equal Opportunity Employer. What does it mean to be locally owned and operated? For Cenex, it means everything. It means that we know if you take your coffee to go or if you like to stay a while. It means we've helped Little Leagues get jerseys and local festivals get funding. It means we know what our communities need. So you'll always leave Cenex with a full tank, full of snacks, or full of smiles, or all of the above. And that means the world to us. Cenex, powered locally. No matter how far you may go, there's always one just down the road. Town Pump, who pump it up? Pump it up. Town of Pump is excited to once again sponsor the Brawl of the Wild Rivalry Series between Montana State and the University of Montana. Look for special Brawl of the Wild promotions throughout the year at your local Town Pump. Bobcat football is presented by your locally owned and operated McDonald's restaurants. Download the app and earn free food, order from anywhere, and even skip the line with convenient curbside pickup. Ten minutes and two seconds to go in the ball game. Montana State leads 28-24 over Sacramento State. Sac State just completed a 12-play, 75-yard touchdown drive, and that was on the other side of an 11-play, 90-yard touchdown drive by Montana State. So some big boy drives to uh, get going in the middle of this second half. And Boy, Dan, this is kind of everything we expected from two of the top three teams in the nation. Yeah, without a doubt. And as uh, Sac State uh, kicks off here to Montana State, they're going to be kicking in the wind. So the Bobcats could get decent field position on this kickoff. Well, even when they haven't had de decent field position, they've still been able to punch things in for a touchdown. It's Tommy Mallott, his first 100-yard rushing game of the season, 16 carries, 104 rushing yards. It's his eighth 100 rushing yard game of his career. All right, Marquis Johnson is back to receive the kick with his toes on the white goal line to our right. Again, Sac State kicking into the wind here from left to right. The right-footed kick, low pooch kick, bouncing around, takes a big hop, caught by Jared White at the 20-yard line. He's between the hash marks up the middle, and he is across the 30-yard line. Give him the 31 or 32-yard line, and that's where Montana State will take over. So, you know, R.J. Sac State here is just trying to Keep that ball on the ground and keep it out of the hands of Marquis Johnson. Well, it's a smart thing to do. I mean, Marquis Johnson, when he gets some momentum moving forward, he can really change the whole entire dynamic of a football game. So they've done a really good job of eliminating this Bobcat return game. But at the same time, Jared White has done a really good job of being confident and stepping up in Derek Snell's role of just going up and getting what he can get. Tire Rama and Cooper Tires are proud supporters of your MSU Bobcats. Visit TireRama.com for a complete list of store services and special offers. Tire Rama, more than just a tire store. Pistol formation for the Bobcats at the 37-yard line. Two receivers right, one to the left. Tommy Olad is the quarterback. Julius Davis is the running back. Here's the snap. Throws into the flat. Cleveland Thomas makes the catch of the numbers. He runs upfield, and he is tackled forward up to the 45-yard line. Well, just shy of that 45-yard line, second and short. This is a quick Pitch and throw out to Cleveland Thomas. Uh, once again, Sac State is playing that off coverage, so they're going to allow that, keeping everything in front of them. Um, Bobcats, huge drive. McCullough and Williams out to the right side. Thomas to the left. Pistol formation with Davis as the halfback on second and three. From the left, hash mark. Snap to Malott. Turns right, hands it off. Julius Davis runs through the line. He's up to the 50-yard line. He hurdles a man, and Julius Davis is free. Davis angling through the numbers at the 20-yard line. Davis on his feet at the 10. Five, and he's angled out of bounds. Julius Davis with a high hurdle, and he's up inside the 10-yard line. Well, dun a dun dun -a dun That was a heck of a run from Julius Davis. Hurdles the Sac State defender and keeps his momentum going forward. He got off the ground. What a run from Julius Davis. I mean, just phenomenal. 
49 yards from Julius Davis, one of the biggest plays of the day. Davis, nine carries for 98 yards now. Sean Chambers into the ball game at the seven yard line. First and goal to go, here's the snap. Chambers, he hands it off. Julius Davis up the middle, puts his hat down, powers forward and he's down at the one yard line. Julius Davis trying to crack this thing open as he goes over 100 yards out of the day. Yeah, I think you just give this ball back to Julius Davis because Julius Davis has marched the Bobcats down this field very quickly on this drive. He is running angrily. Like a bare knuckle boxer in between the tackles. Pistol formation from the one yard line on second down. The snap, he hands it off. Davis up the middle and he is up to the goal line and into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana State. Julius Davis caps the drive after his 49 yard carry with his first touchdown of the night and the Bobcats respond quickly to retake a 34-24 lead and they've got the PAT coming up with eight and a half to go in the ball game. Well that's how you answer Julius Davis uh, really just took over this football game on that drive. Um, phenomenal effort from Julius Davis and this Bobcat offensive line and tight ends just marching down the field quickly, putting up seven. Scoreboard operators getting a workout in. <laughs> yeah, especially in the second half. Here's the snap. Abshire puts the football down, and Brendan Hall puts it up and through for a Conoco kick. Julius Davis, a big time drive. 16 ca- or excuse me, 11 carries for 105 yards. Now he scores his first touchdown of the night. His third touchdown as a Bobcat, and it's his second 100-yard rushing performance for Montana State. And it was the Julius Davis hurdle. Gonna have to trademark that sooner rather than later. That sets up the Bobcat touchdown. We're taking a break. Cats up by 11. Eight minutes and 26 seconds to go in the ball game. Montana State 35, Sac State 24. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Like most Montana parents, I disapprove of teens using marijuana. ParentingMontana.org has information for me to learn about Montana's marijuana laws. For example, it's illegal for someone under the age of 21 to possess or consume marijuana unless they are a medical marijuana card holder. I also use ParentingMontana.org to establish our family's rules about marijuana and help my teen manage peer pressure. ParentingMontana.org, tools for your child's success. Brought to you by SAMHSA and Montana DPHHS. The Rocking R Bar is your home for everything Bobcat football. Whether the cats are home or away, we are your game day headquarters. Swing by for great food specials like the Sunny Holland Burger from our new grill, Hail Mary's. We also serve the best Montana craft beer and liquor the state has to offer. So grab a pint, something to eat, and one of our very own Rocking R Bar liquors because it's a great time to be a Bobcat at the Rocking R Bar. At Montana State University, students shape signature experiences that take them across the state and into local communities. MSU is dedicated to its land-grant mission, integrating transformational learning, discovery, and service that improves lives. You'll find our students teaching across Montana, conducting research in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, or even creating small shelter prototypes to address homelessness. Montana State University, think outside. A four-play, 63-yard touchdown drive highlighted by Julius Davis's 49-yard run, which featured another premium hurdle. He's got 11 carries for 105 yards. His third touchdown is a Bobcat, and Montana State is up 35-24 over Sacramento State with 8 minutes and 26 seconds to go in the ball game. And here we go. I mean, this is... Uh, RJ, kind of what you thought this was going to be like uh, coming into this game, and, and Dan, this has been really a, a tremendous ball game tonight. Well, the Bobcats have had four possessions in this half, interception on the first one, and then three consecutive touchdowns to answer the Hornets' touchdowns that they've been uh, racking up here in the second half as well. Yeah, RJ, this is what you thought this game was going to be, huh? Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a shootout on paper. Both offenses are electric, but this thing isn't over. A Sac State, they can answer right back and score just as quickly as the Bobcats did. And they're a team that has played a ton of close games over the last couple of years, so they're in a very familiar spot here for Montana State. They haven't played a close game since week two. Yeah, I mean, it's 
you know, this is what we expected. It's going to be a tight football game, and um, wouldn't want it any other way. So another town pump touchdown for the Bobcats. This one from Julius Davis, and now Montana State will kick it away from right to left with the wind at the back of Brendan Hall. This high arcing end over end kick will get into the end zone, and that is a touchback. Shout out Firehouse Subs, which does a great job feeding, feeding us and fueling us at those home games. We'll be back home next in November with Northern Arizona in town. Bobcats will be at Idaho next week, which will be another premier matchup. And today, Montana State trying to take care of business against number three, Sacramento State. Uh, Brent Vegan trying to earn his seventh win against a top 10 team. He's currently six and four against top 10 Brent opponents Hornets, since uh, taking over at Montana State going into that 2021 season. All right, Sac State trying to respond. They had a long touchdown drive on their last touch. 8.26 to go in the game. Bobcats up 11 from their own 25-yard line. Snap to Bennett, looking to throw. under pr or No pressure, now rolls out to his left. Fires out to the left side, and that is just thrown out of bounds and into the Bobcat that bench. Good coverage by the defensive backs by the Bobcats that time. Well, and Miles Jackson steps up once again in coverage, doing a really good job of stepping in for Lavelle Price Jr., who has played tremendous 10. football all season, and um, Miles has just been waiting for his opportunity, a guy who can play corner, who can play safety, and nickel. Second and 10 from their own 25-yard line, two receivers left, one to the right, shotgun snap. Bennett with a pitch out to the left side. Tau Tolliver running along the left hash mark, angles to the numbers, and he's blown up. Well, what a tackle by like Drew Polidor after a two-yard gain. Well, and what a welcome sight to see Drew Polidor back in the football game Drew in the second half. The he covers so much range. I mean, he comes from 20 yards in the defensive backfield and makes a big hit. He's got that right hand all bandaged up as well. Yeah, he's been playing with that cast now for a couple of weeks. One receiver left, three to the right. Tau Tolliver, the running back, he's had a monster game. It's third and seven. Here's the snap. Bennett fires over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Grover on a slant. And that brings up fourth and seven. And the Bobcat defense a big effort here. Caden Bennett still kind of lingering on the field here. They're at their own 28-yard line. I think they might go for this here. Yeah, they're going. On fourth and seven at their own 28-yard line, down 35-24 with 7.41 to go in the ball game. And Sac State potentially setting up to go for it on fourth down. This could be the ball game. From the left hash mark, shotgun formation. Play clock's at 10, and a timeout called by Sac State. So they're going to talk this thing over. All right. I mean, this to go for it here on fourth and seven at your own 28, that, that puts... That pushes all the chips into the center of the table. Well, I mean, not necessarily as if you're Sac State, you can still get a stop, hold the Bobcats to a field goal attempt, um, and it's still a two-score game, so maybe that's the thought process from Sac State. Yeah, well, and we were a little curious on why they didn't go for two on that last attempt. Now, obviously, Montana State has scored again, which is probably what was in the back of their mind, but it was a situation where even with that PAT, they were still down and needing a touchdown, not a field goal, when a two-point conversion could have turned it into a, a field goal game. But again, Sac State has really struggled to stop the Bobcat offense in the second half now. Well, and it's always a struggle to stop the Bobcat offense, I don't care what defense you are, what defensive coordinator you are, it's a really challenging thing when you have um, Julius Davis in the backfield, you have Tommy Mallott, Sean Chambers, and it, it's just been tough. We're taking a break, 7.41 to go in the ball game. Montana State up 35-24 over Sacramento State. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. When garage door issues happen, don't just call anybody. Call the pros at DoorTech. The Our family-owned yeah, yeah, yeah. and operated business and happily right serves away. the Gallatin no. Valley. Okay. I thought we were going to have service space. residential, That's commercial, space. and custom overhead doors and operators. Just, with factory I, I trained could, and certified technicians, we're committed so to quality, value, value, and long-term relationships. Call us at 582-1623 and let us help you with the solution to all your garage door needs. DoorTech is raising the door on quality. <laughs> your region's only premier authorized Rainer dealer. Hi, oh, former yeah. Bobcat Lou Salcedo for Western Our team proudly really supports really MSU Bobcat nice. football it's both on like and off the field. The next, I want to wish Bobcat the best of luck for the season. Western Motors has spent the last 22 Fort years serving Gallatin like. County and supporting over 40 local organizations. We have been recognized as the best in Bozeman and Gallatin's greatest several years running. As Montana's number one volume dealer, we are hired in all departments across eight of our dealerships. We have plenty oh, of new and used inventory ready for purchase. Good luck, Bobcats. Western Motors, community born, community driven. 
Bobcat football is finally here, and the Ridge Athletic Clubs are ready for a great season at the Ridge. We offer a beautiful facility with a basketball complex, group exercise studios with over 200 weekly classes, a pool, safe and fun child care, new functional fitness spaces, large comfortable locker rooms, and the best way in Bozeman to bring your fitness to the next level. Stop by for a tour after a game and see why the Ridge has been Bozeman strong for more than 20 years. Go Bobcats! The Bobcats need your support to go for the win. Donate to the Bobcat Club's Three to Win campaign to help us reach our $3 million goal supporting student athletes. Seven minutes, 41 seconds to go in the ball game. Montana State leads 35 to 24 over Sac State, and the Hornets are going for it on fourth and seven at their own 28 yard line coming out of a timeout. Massive decision here by first year head coach Andy Thompson, a former Montana Grizzly who was elevated from defensive coordinator to take over the head coaching duties after Troy went to Stanford. All right, here we go. Fourth and seven from their own 28. Caden Bennett working out of the shotgun formation. Two receivers right, two to the left, with one half back on his left hip. Looks over to the sideline and gets an audible. Now ready to go. Hands held chest high. Takes the snap, and we've got a whistle. Coach Feagan take a timeout right at the last second. Oh, man, oh, man. All right, so Bobcats using the timeout here. Well, there was some miscommunication. Yeah, miscommunication in the secondary. I had Ryland Orr out there trying to get everyone aligned. Um, so definitely a good timeout by Coach Vegan. It's a huge turning point in the game. I mean, this is essentially the ball game. Um, if you're able to stop them and if you're Sac State, um, you, you were definitely chomping at the bit to snap that football as Montana State was not aligned properly. Right, and so if now Sac State does not get this and then they can hold Montana State to a field goal, it remains a two touchdown game because Cats would be up by 14. So that's why, even though you're on 28 yard line, this is still a scenario where the risk is worth the reward. All right, once again, for the third time, Sac State will line up on fourth and seven at their own 28-yard line with seven minutes and 41 seconds to go in the game. Cats leading 35-24, trying to go to 4-0 in Big Sky play. Shotgun snap. Bennett looking to throw. Steps up. Fires to the left side. That is incomplete. Intended for Marshall. Rylan Ort had the coverage, and the Bobcats get the fourth down stop. Yeah, Rylan Ort stepping up in that leadership role on defense. And who else was there on that coverage? Nolan Askelson. Great to see those two out there leading this defense. Defense comes up big again. Dan, what a big time play by this Bobcat defense that has banged up, been banged up all night long. Oh, that was a huge play right there in this football game. Now the Bobcats can eat up some clock here offensively and hopefully get some more points here on this possession. Now you punch this thing in for a touchdown and you're feeling pretty good. The Bobcats offense has been rolling in the second half. They take over at the 28 yard line in plus territory. Tommy Mallott in at quarterback, Julius Davis, the running back. Two receivers left. Here's the snap. Turns left, fakes the handoff. Mallott rolling out to his left. He tucks the football outside of the numbers. Nowhere to go. Stops and kind of goes down. So not much doing on that left side. Good work by the defense from Sac State. And there was a power from the Bobcats. Um, nothing was there as the defense from Sacramento State was in great position. Um, and Tommy Mallott just pulled the football. Took what he can get, got a yard. And stayed in bounds. Well, it, the clock doesn't stop till right. two minutes anymore. You're right, you're right. Yeah, we're used to the where <laughs> you run out of bounds and the clock would stop. But, um, I mean, even Tommy, who's a genius, um, <laughs> probably isn't up to date on all the current rules. Uh, he stays in. That clock is rolling. 6.50 to go in the ball game. Bobcats trying to ice this thing, leading 35-24. Pistol formation. Turns right. Hands it off. Julius Davis up the middle. He's powering forward and carries the black jersey up to the 21-yard line for a hardy six-yard gain, setting up third and short for Montana State on the left hash mark. Man, you just got to love the way that Julius Davis runs the football. He fits in on this football team. He's all about that grit. Um, the Bobcat offensive linemen, they love him just because they see how hard he runs for them. Um, so it makes the offensive line block just that much harder. Sean Chambers back into the game. Marquis Johnson is into the game as well. Ryan Lonergan spread out to the left side. Marquis, Tavion Williams, and Ty McCullough spread out to the right. 
It's Sean Chambers on the left hash mark. Now Lonergan comes in as the fullback in motion. Here's the snap. Chambers keeps it. He runs up the middle and has some room. Chambers lowers his shoulder and he gets up, bended shy of the 10-yard line. Sean Chambers picks up the first at State Bank first down as the Cats work in the Rosauer's red zone. And Chambers a little slow getting up. He got a big hat into his thigh. Yeah, what a way to execute by the Bobcats there, picking up the first down. And a fresh, yeah, fresh set of downs here to get that clock cooking. Although it's stopped right now. Is that an injury timeout? Yeah, one of the Sac State Hornets coming off the field. All right, 5.51 to go. We're in the fourth quarter. Montana State leads 35-24. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. They're trying to put this game away. These are the two teams that have been on parallel paths for the last three years. They've each gone 18 and one in Big Sky play since the start of 2021. Montana State could have shared the Big Sky championship with Sac State in 2021 had they not lost that last game in Missoula. Sac State, the back-to-back -back undefeated Big Sky seasons had their long Big Sky winning streak ended at Idaho in the first week of Big Sky play this year. They're still in the playoff or the Big Sky hunt if they can find a, win, a way to win this game. But if they're going to do that, they have to hold Montana State to a field goal here to keep this a two-touchdown contest. Cats break the huddle on the left hash mark. Tommy Mallott in a pistol formation with Jared White behind him. Two receivers right, one to the left. Here's the snap. Turns right, hands it off. Jared Wright running, running left outside of the hash mark. Gets to the goal line, and he runs over his man for a Jared touchdown. White. Jared White from 12 oh, yards okay. out is into the end zone for another rushing touchdown by Montana State. And the Bobcats, over 40 points now, putting this game on ice with 5.05 to go. Well, how about this Bobcat offensive line in the Bring second half just He's dominating the line of scrimmage? Um, may have lost it in the first half, but the second half has not been close. The Montana State offensive line has just dominated Sac State's front seven. And when you have guys like Jared White, Sean Chambers, Tommy Mallott, and Julius Davis, I mean, it, it's a tough matchup, but the Bobcats have executed tonight on offense. Snap the hold. The right-footed kick is up, and that kick is good. Kick is good. Over 200 rushing yards in the second half, and Jared White with the latest rushing touchdown for the Bobcats, their fourth of the night. We'll take a break, and all of a sudden, the Bobcats in control of 42-24 against Sacramento State on the road with five minutes, five seconds left in the ball game. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. For every peak, valley, and plateau, for every mishap in every adventure, for every Montanan in every season of life, Bozeman Health is here to deliver care with quality, compassion, and respect. Because we see you as more than the patient you are today, we look to what's on the horizon for you and our community over the decades to come. That's care beyond care. Well beyond Bozeman Health. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Bobcat fans, Lithia Dodge of Billings, Montana's number one new car dealer and proud partner of Montana State Bobcats, has the new truck you've been looking for, in stock now and ready for immediate delivery. Come test drive a new 2023 Ram 1500 during Power Days at Lithia Dodge in Billings. See why we're Montana's number one new car dealer. Based on 2020 and 2021 and 2022 new vehicle registration data. Montana State up 42-24 over Sacramento State with 5.05 to go in the ball game, and Jared White with what may be the game-clinching touchdown, RJ. Yeah, it's been all Bobcats in the second half, especially this offensive line just leaning on the Sac State front seven, dominating the second half. Um, credit to all those guys, and also credit to the tight ends. How about a guy like Ryan Lonergan? He has stepped up, um, challenged him a little bit in that first half was struggling on some of those kickout blocks but in the second half it, it's been no letdown and he's stepped up and showing why he is a football player that he is 
Well, Dan, this is a game where Montana State would have had plenty of excuses if they were down in this contest, and they haven't let any of those slip into the narrative of this one. Man, they, they uh, pinned their ears back in the second half and were determined to run the football, and they have done just that here in the second half and taken control of this football game. Montana State averaging 7.1 yards per carry tonight. They came in leading the nation at 7.9 yards per carry. That's a full yard per carry more than the program record. And Montana State has uh, led, been led by their rushing game again. Julius Davis, 12 carries, 110 yards and a touchdown. Tommy Mallott, 17 carries, 105 yards and two touchdowns. And Jared White, three carries, 27 yards and a touchdown. And a lot of Sac State fans have now left Hornet Stadium. Brendan Hall ready to kick it away with 5.05 to go in the ball game. And this end over end kick is out of the back of the end zone with a slight breeze at his back. And Sac State will take over at their own 25 yard line. Builders First Source is the leading supplier of professional grade building materials. Find one of our nine Montana locations at bldr.com builders first source a proud sponsor of bobcat football this offensive line has helped lead the bobcats to a dominant second half over 200 rushing yards in the second half 318 total all right sac state back to work down 42 24 empty backfield shotgun formation here's the snap from their own 25 bennett looking to throw fires over the middle that is caught by gandy up at the 50 yard line a 25 yard gain or a quick tackle by rylan ort first down sac state well sac state's going to need some big time explosive plays to get back in this football game as they need three scores bennett quickly up to the line each team still with two timeouts here's the snap out of the shotgun formation throws over the middle and that is caught at the 45 yard line up ahead to the 40 yard line and that is another first down two quick first downs that time when all the bobcat defense has got to do is just keep the ball in front of you time is your friend clock running at the 430 mark still ticking down lower and lower shotgun snap bennett looking to throw Shot down the left sideline and incomplete and a flag thrown. Gibson used a two-hand shove against his man, so should be going back against uh, Sacramento State. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you as part of the Toyota Rewards Program. Pass interference, number eight of the offense. 15-yard penalty, first down. You can win exclusive swag throughout the year along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. Toyota, proud to be a partner of Bobcat Athletics. The Bobcats do have a Toyota touchdown here in the fourth quarter, so four lucky fans will be selected to win a prize. Set up today at msubobcats.com slash RAV4, the number four. So first and 25 from their own 44-yard line after the 15-yard penalty on Sac State. Bobcats up 42-24 with a thinning crowd here in Sacramento. Then it looks to his right, gets the play call. Now steps forward, hands held out in front of his chest, takes the snap, Bennett looking to throw, fires over the middle, incomplete, looking for Marshall. Threw that one behind him, and it'll be second and 25 and now. More great coverage from Miles Jackson. He has just stepped up and played a tremendous game. Not a lot of missed assignments from Miles tonight. Um, has been matched up with Marshall Martin, the All-American tight end, and has done a really good job all game. Marshall Martin really hasn't done much. Two catches for 19 yards tonight. 4.16 to go in the game. Cats up 42-24. Montana State trying to put this thing away. Terrific crowd for the Bobcats coming out to this ball game tonight. Shotgun snap. Bennett looking to throw. Fires over the middle. That is caught by Carlos Hill at the 50-yard line, and he twi twists forward up to the 48-yard line in plus territory. So that'll bring up third and still very, very long. Yeah, and look for Sac State to maybe throw something way deep. Um, it's kind of Hill Mary time. Uh, just time to take some shots down the field. Shotgun formation. Here's the snap. Bennett looking to throw steps up fires to the right sideline gibson makes the catch at the 40 yard line angles back in and he gets to the first down marker at the 31 yard line nifty move cutting toward that right hash mark to pick up the first down and sac state they're showing life they had some success on offense just sputtered out on a few drives hey know what's below tap click or call 811 before you dig brought to you by montana 811.org shotgun formation snap to bennett Fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Fires down the right sideline for Gibson. Tipped it incomplete. Oh, great effort that time by Andrew Powdrell, who got a hand on it. Well, I think if Andrew Powdrell didn't get a hand on it, Rylan Orr might have made the pick. 
Heenan and Cook Injury Attorneys is proud to be an official law firm sponsor of Montana State Athletics. Yeah, you're right. Ryland Ort was kind of cutting in there. Ort with one interception tonight. That's his third of the year. John Johnson with an interception and a pick six tonight as well. His second pick of the year. Yeah, this great performance from the entire defense. A defense that's been hurt and banged up all night. 319 remaining. Here's the snap. Bennett on second down looking to throw. Pressured, stepped up, and Brody Greeby takes him down. Brody Greeby with the sack wraps him up and ropes him down. Yeah, good to see Brody Greeby finally get back up on the saddle, uh, make a good heel, and get a sack. Bobcats finally get a sack of Bennett. And for Brody Greeby, his fifth of the year, and the clock winding under three minutes with Montana State up 42-24, an absolutely dominant second half by the Bobcats. 2.45 remaining in the clock running. Empty backfield, three receivers left, two to the right. Bennett, staggered feet, right foot in front of the other, takes the chest high snap, fires out in the flat on the right side, and it's dropped. Dropped, and that up fourth and 14 while we remind you that if you love the Bobcats you can hire them post your part-time full-time and internship positions on hireabobcat.com to recruit your fellow Bobcats go Cats go all right here it's this is it 233 left in the game fourth and 14 for Sacramento State well, this is it and the Bobcats have I mean they're they're worn down Sac State has ran a lot of football plays and um, credit to this Bobcat defense is grinding through things um, staying positive um, really just putting on a great overall performance. Time to put that cherry on top. Sac State had command early in this game, and Montana State has flipped the script. Shotgun snap. Bennett looking to throw on fourth down. Steps up, fires over the middle. That is caught for a first bound by Gandy, and he is down inside the 20-yard line, and Sac State remains with a slight faint heartbeat. Yeah, and Bennett has played a good football game all night. He's made good throws. He's made plays when he's needed to, and um, you know, Sac State's going to be a team that um, I know they haven't had a lot of success in the playoffs in the last few years, but maybe if they're not a seed, maybe they make some noise. Two minutes remaining in the game. Snap, fakes the handoff, Bennett, fires over the left side in the flat, caught at the nine-yard line, turns up field, and he's tackled across the first down marker just near that five-yard line. So another first down for Sac State. Looking ahead for the Bobcats, presented by Vance Thompson Vision, the official LASIK and cataract surgeon of the Montana State Bobcats. Montana State heading out to Idaho next weekend for a 2 o'clock kickoff. We'll be on the air at 1 o'clock. 135 remaining before the Bobcats can lock up a potential 13th straight win against Big Sky opponents. Here's the snap on first down, toss into the end zone. That is caught for a touchdown. So that was Devin Gandy with a 7-yard touchdown catch with 127 to go in the game. Montana State up. 42 to 30, and the PAT coming up. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go for two, try to make this a 10 point game. Um, going to have to convert a few onside kicks if you're a Hornet fan, but um, you know, credit to Sacramento State. They're continuing to battle, um, not giving up. So Caden Bennett, his first touchdown pass of the day, his 11th of the year. He's 26 for 42 with 234 yards. The one touchdown, but two interceptions tonight. So they set the ball up on the left hash mark from the three-yard line. So a point after attempt, they're going for two. One receiver left, three to the right, here's the snap. Bennett looking to throw, now scrambling, shuffling left, trying to find some space, reverses direction, coming back right, heading toward the right hash mark, throws on the run, and it's picked off. In the end zone, McCade O'Reilly with the interception on the two-point conversion attempt, and he takes a knee in the end zone. Nicely done. McCade O'Reilly getting in there and taking it away. 127 remaining, and the Bobcats up 42-30 to in what was really a tough, hotly contested game. And, boy, this uh, the balloon has just had the air let out of it. The Bobcats on their way to a 4-0 Big Sky start. One game clear of a three-way tie for second place. Yeah, this has been a battle. I mean, the defense has had to grind things out tonight. Bobcat fans, when you buy Bobcat products at the MSU Bookstore, you help lower the pr price of course materials for Montana State students. Shop online at Bobcat Stadium or on campus. MSU Bookstore is your Bobcat gear headquarters. We also remind you that Montana Farm Bureau, the grassroots voice of agriculture, advocating for farmers and ranchers across our state and leading Montana toward a future with a prosperous agricultural economy and thriving rural communities. Join us at mfbf.org. Go Bobcats. 
All right, an onside attempt. First one the Bobcats will have to defend today or this year. With the Cats up 42 to 30 with 127 left. And that's a little different. You don't usually see a backup quarterback like Jordan Reed on a hands team. So yeah. um, credit to Jordan Reed stepping up, and I think that's where Derek Snell usually plays. Well, you want to play for the Bobcats, you got to play special teams, and Jordan Reed is in there, and now Sacramento State readjusts, and it looks like they're going to kick this thing away. And now they go back into an onside formation. The Bobcats never flinched. All right, here we go. Onside attempt for Sac State. Bouncing around through the legs of O'Reilly, and Jared White is there to jump on the football. Uh, that one just never really took its hop. It was that slow ground ball. It went between the legs of Mikado O'Reilly, and Jared White was there to wrap that thing up. Yeah, and that's not for the fan of heart to play front line <laughs> on the hands team. Um, everyone that's out there, they trust them to go and make a play for this football team. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. Brent Vegan, about nine or uh, 85 seconds away from his seventh win against a top 10 opponent, going to seven and four against top 10 opponents. Cats up 42 to 30. Let's see how they want to put this thing away in a pistol formation. Snap to Tommy Malott, turns left, hands it off, running up the middle. Scott Trey Humphrey powers forward, and he's up to the 43 yard line for a five ish yard gain, maybe a four yard gain. A timeout, Sac State. Now, Scott Trey Humphrey was back today, hasn't done a ton, really haven't had, uh, hasn't had many opportunities in this one. I thought he had one carry. They only have one, one of them listed for him. I thought he, didn't he carry the ball earlier? Maybe not. Yeah, I thought he carried it one time on a power for about no gain. Yeah. The timeout, Sac State, but what a loud performance here for Montana State. And, RJ, let's not forget what the, where this game was after Sac State drove down in that first quarter, scored a touchdown, Bobcats sputtering on offense, Sac State gets the football back, and John Johnson with an interception return for a touchdown. I mean, it's been adversity all night. It started in pregame warm-ups uh, with, you know, the starting tight end going out, one of the best in the conference. And, you know, it's just been adversity, and credit to the Cats for battling. Second and six after the four-yard game by Humphrey. Here's the snap. Turns right, hands it off. Humphrey runs into a big black wall of jerseys, and he pushes the pile slightly forward, two yards shy of the first down marker. So another four-yard gain. Eight total yards for Humphrey on those last two carries. And a final timeout for, for Sacramento State. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2023 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Well, Dan, this is really an impressive turnaround by the Bobcats because Sacramento State felt like they had a few opportunities to try to take control of this game early, and the Bobcats were able to bounce back, and now they're in complete command trying to close this thing out. No question about it, Keaton. It was a, it was a great effort by this uh, Bobcat offense and defense, but uh, you never felt comfortable until with that two-score lead here with, when Montana State got it in the middle of that fourth quarter because Sacramento State is so dangerous, but... Uh, they're going to they're win some, some games here the rest of the year, but what a tremendous performance by this Bobcat offense, being able to run the football. Be the 13th straight win against Big Sky uh, opponents. Third and two. Here's the snap. Turns right, hands it off. Humphrey up the middle, and he carries forward, and he picks up that first down. Humphrey Trey Humphrey running hard, trying to put this thing away, and the Bobcats now with the Hornets out of timeouts and Montana State able to put this thing down and the Bobcats on their way to a 6-1 and one start and a 4-0 Big Sky record. Well, now we get to see the best formation of football, which is victory formation. Anytime you do that, um, it's, a, it's a great performance. You know, what a performance by the Cats tonight. Coming in here, it's a late game, a lot of adversity coming in. You know, struggle on offense in the first half, but... Uh, you know, it's a team football game. There's good special teams, defense, and offensive plays, and it's just been a good team victory. Montana State going to lock up their first win in Sacramento since 2014. The snap, the kneel, and that will just about do it. Montana State wins it on the road against Sac State. We finally got the matchup of the co-Big Sky champs, and today it's Montana State winning it 42-30 to over Sacramento State. Bobcats ranked number two in the nation. Take down number three, Sacramento State. They put up 328 yards on the ground, four rushing touchdowns, and they pull away in the second half to win it. The Cats now 6-1, 4-0 in Big Sky play. 
Sacramento State falls to 5-2 and 2-2 two and two and two in conference action. We're taking a break. Plenty to get to in the postgame show. Cats win it in Sacramento for the first time since 2014, and they snap back-to-back losses against the Hornets dating back to 2016. The final score, Montana State 42, Sac State 30. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Rooted in Montana, we're not just another logistics company. We're the experts across the United States and Canada for expediting your containerized cargo. Offering a variety of services such as drayage, transloading, and expedited trucking, our team thrives on a culture of efficiency powered by top-tier customer service. We're continuously innovating with the latest tech to simplify your logistics process and save you precious time. Find out more at portxlogistics.com. Evolutionary technology, unreal service. Join the revolution with Port X Logistics. Universal Athletic has been a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics for over 45 years. Check out their great selection of Bobcat apparel and accessories for all your game day needs. Shop in store at their North 7th Avenue location or online at shop.msubobcats.com for everything you need to cheer on your Bobcats. Universal Athletic, a proud supporter of Bobcat Athletics for over 45 years. Go Cats! Get ready for your next adventure with Tirerama and Cooper Tires. Now through November 30th, get up to $100 off a set of select Cooper Tires without breaking the bank. If you're looking for tires that will keep you going this fall and winter, there are plenty to choose from, including the Cobra Instinct, Discoverer Family, Rugged Trek, Cooper Xeon, and Evolution Winter. Don't miss this chance to get some of the best quality tires around and service you can trust. Visit your neighborhood Tyrama before November 30th for more details. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Whoever said good things come to those who wait clearly never ordered in the McDonald's app. Just order ahead in the app and you can pick up when you get here. Now football fans can score big. Because on game day, get a 20-piece Chicken McNuggets for just $5 when you order ahead on the app. Now that's a W. Valid once per day through December 1st, 2023. At participating McDonald's, must opt into rewards. Ready to reap a harvest of success? Look no further than the Northern Pulse Growers Association. Join forces with fellow growers in cultivating high-protein, soil-enriching pulses that nourish both land and livelihood. From lentils to chickpeas, we're talking about crops that pack a punch. By becoming a member, you'll gain insider insights, hands-on workshops, and a network of Pulse-passionate partners. Visit our website to join the Northern Pulse Growers Association. Together, we're sowing the seeds of success, one pulse at a time. At Levitt Group Insurance, we believe that hard work, dedication, and teamwork are the keys to success. Levitt Group Insurance is proud to present the weekly Bobcat Impact Player of the Game. Each week, a player will be selected because they've proven that they have what it takes to be a game changer. Levitt Group Insurance will always work hard and change your insurance program to fit your needs to be a game changer for your business. To see how we can help you with your business, employee benefits, home and auto insurance, contact a Levitt Group Insurance office near you. Levitt Group Insurance, leaving nothing you value to chance. Bobcat football has been brought to you by Town Pump, the exclusive sponsor of the Brawl of the Wild, and by DoorTech. DoorTech is raising the door on quality. This is Bobcat Post Game. It was a matchup between the second and third ranked teams in the nation, and it was Montana State that dominated tonight. They win 42 to 30 against Sacramento State today on the road. An absolutely incredible win by Montana State. They faced a whole heap of adversity in this game, RJ. Let's start by just recapping this adversity that the Bobcats were facing right now. I mean, that was a boatload of injuries at the start of this game. Well, we heard it in pregame warmups. Lavelle Price is out, so. What happened? Miles Jackson stepped up. Derek Snow went down in warm-ups. Ryan Lonergan had to step up and played virtually the entire football game. So um, just off the get-go, and then you have Danny Yu who goes down, and then Mikado O'Reilly has to step up in his role on that first drive. So it was just a phenomenal team effort 
from the defense, from the offense. There was some bad plays on special teams, but um, you know, anytime you come on the road in the Big Sky Conference top five matchup and get a W, it's a good day. I mean, this was a game where it felt like Sacramento State was about to take complete control for a minute there. I mean, right in early in this game, you know, Sac State had gone down and drive, and they kind of thrashed the Bobcat defense on that early touchdown drive. Yeah, there was some some teetering, some moments where the momentum could swing in the opposite direction. But, um, you know, that John Johnson interception was really the turning point in the entire football game. That pick six, it really put the Bobcats back in it. Looking for more college football action following our broadcast? Usually you can check out the College Football Blitz for free by going to the Varsity Network app. It's the college football audio version of the NFL Red Zone channel every Saturday from noon to midnight Eastern. You can just search College Football Blitz on the Varsity Network app. Obviously, most of the football is done now with one of the latest kicks around the, around the country. Our post-game show brought to you by Ribbon Chop House. Indulge in exceptional experience at Montana's Ribbon Chop House. Our passionate team sets the bar high, serving premium steaks, fresh seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs. Embrace our warm Rocky Mountain hospitality as we eagerly anticipate welcoming you. Also today, Tommy Malott going over 2,000 career rushing yards, so he passes Chris Murray. And uh, next up is Troy Anderson, who's sitting at about 2,200. I believe it's 2,260. So Tommy Malott continuing to move up those rankings in terms of rushing yards. And, boy, it was a lot of fun to watch Tommy just uh, look like himself tonight. Yeah, he was finally healthy and um, what a welcome sight for Bobcat fans to have two quarterbacks like Sean Chambers and Tommy Mallott. You know, obviously when Tommy's healthy, he just brings a whole different dynamic to this football team. Well, let's go to our McDonald's delivery of the game today. There's a lot of different guys we can go to. I think if I'm picking one, I'm going with Julius Davis for closing this game out. 12 carries, 110 yards, and a touchdown. You got anything to add to that, uh, RJ? Well, how about the entire Bobcat offensive line? I mean, just a phenomenal performance in the second half i mean the sac state defensive line is gigantic and they have done a really good job of stopping r opposing rushing attacks so you know credit to this bobcat offensive line delivering the entire game yeah that was some pretty impressive stuff so that's our mcdonald's delivery of the game all right uh, dan davies is down on the sideline and looks like head coach brent vegan is on the way out of the locker room so brent and dan are up next let's set it down to dan davies well Coach Vegan, uh, congratulations on a, a dominating second half there. You got two rushers over 100 yards. Uh, your offensive line just took control here in that second half. Yeah, that's what we needed. I think we saw some flashes in the first half. We didn't finish a couple drives, um, but we knew we, you know, if we can keep leaning on them, um, we could potentially break them. And I think that's that's what happened. You know, they kept fighting. That's a good team. That's a good program. Um, but really proud of the guys. That was a tremendous effort, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't easy. You know, we had to fight through some stuff. We weren't perfect by any means, but I think the forward-thinking nature of this crew um, found a way tonight. Yeah, it was a, a heck of a matchup, but we're looking forward to it for the whole season. But uh, Sacramento State is a dangerous on offense, and your defense rose to the occasion. Yeah, yeah, made some big plays. You think about the turnovers, uh, the, the, you know, John's return for a touchdown um, when we were trying to still find our way. Uh, big turnover. You know, we just had turned the ball over. Um, we get it right back. Uh, great play by Miles Jackson tipping the ball and up, up to Ryland Orts. So, you know, and they were bound to do some things. We, you know, we, they really bled the clock there at the end. We didn't want to give up that last score, but, you know, uh, come out on, on top. Uh, you know, I think we were the more physical team tonight, and that's what we aim to be um, every week. But uh, that was a hard team to do that against, and uh, super proud of the guys. You had that 90-yard drive. You got that uh, kickoff return. It started on the 10-yard line. You took it all the way down. That had to be feel good for your offense to get that score. Yeah, they did a good job um, making the, the kick return game complicated with, with those squibs, and those are tough to handle. Um, but I, I think the way we were moving the ball offensively um, in that second half, you know, regardless of the field, field position, our guys were going to do what they needed to do. And, then, yeah, that drive in particular, um, you know, I think turned the tide back in our direction. And you had some guys step up. Guys got uh, dinged up here a little bit today, but uh, your second guys got in there and, and made the difference. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, um, – Next man up mentality, you know, we practice the way we do so we can put our, put our guys in position to um, be ready when they're the, they answer the call. And I, you know, think about Miles Jackson, uh, um, Ryan Largan, you know, um, those two in particular, uh, big games by them. Blake Stillwell had to go out there a bunch. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's the nature of, of, of how we're built. Um, and and you love to see it when it, uh, it plays out the way it did tonight. Doesn't get any easier next week going into Moscow. 
No, you know, we got to uh, we got to enjoy this one, um, you know, get our rest when we get our rest and, uh, you know, start putting a plan together um, tomorrow and then get those guys back ready to go on, on Monday. All right. Appreciate okay. Dan. Guys, uh, back back up to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, the 11 play, 90 yard touchdown drive on that uh, that was capped by the rushing touchdown at the start of the fourth quarter. And that's going to be the drive of the game, brought to you by Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Billings. All right, we're taking another break on the Ribbon Chop House post game show. Bobcats win it 42 to 30 over Sacramento State. You're listening to Bobcat Football, presented by Learfield. From our 1946 roots, providing lumber for Yellowstone National Park, to our current headquarters in Bozeman, we at Simpkins Hallen believe in building the Gallatin Valley's future while continuing to honor its past. Contractors large and small benefit from our decades of experience and our extensive network of suppliers. We can source the materials you need, no matter the project. For all your building needs, go to where longstanding traditions have met with quality building products for over 75 years. Simpkins Hallen, a Montana tradition among builders since 1946. At Jersey Mike's, watching them freshly slice the meat and cheese for my sub is a sight to behold. The layers of ham, salami, and pepperoni are even more glorious than the pink and orange layers of a sunrise. Yeah, the sun's pretty and all that, but in about 7 billion years, it's going to explode, obliterating the earth and every living thing on it. And if there's no sun, there's no subs. Meanwhile, the only thing a sub ever obliterated was my hunger. Freshly sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Are you too hot? Are you too cold? Did you know that you don't have to just deal with it? We at Ambient Air Solutions understand how important comfort plays on your emotions, health, and quality of life on a daily basis. Ambient Air Solutions offers 24-7 emergency service for residential and commercial clients. We also offer financing to help ease the financial stress and burden of a lifelong investment. Call Ambient Air Solutions at 406-577-1818 and leave it to the professionals. Ambient Air Solutions, simplifying heating and cooling. At Montana State University, students shape signature experiences that take them across the state and into local communities. MSU is dedicated to its land-grant mission, integrating transformational learning, discovery, and service that improves lives. You'll find our students teaching across Montana, conducting research in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, or even creating small shelter prototypes to address homelessness. Montana State University. Think outside. For over 20 years, Montana's Ribbon Chop House has embodied Rocky Mountain hospitality. We prioritize loyalty, safety, service, and quality food to help grow and serve our communities. Join us at one of our Montana locations and experience our genuine hospitality firsthand. All right, let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. XL Country, 100.7. KXLV Churchill, Bozeman, Belgrade. Also in Livingston on Translator K254AL. Back at the First Interstate Bank broadcast booth, Montana State winning it today, 42-30 to over Sacramento State. These are the two teams that shared uh, Big Sky Conference Championship last year with identical 8-0 records. And today, finally, the Bobcats and Hornets meet for the first time since 2019. It was Montana State that clearly wins this one. All right, we've got plenty more to get to in the postgame show, but first we're taking a break. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. Montana holds some of the greatest hunting in the country, and much of that occurs on private land. Access to private land is a key part of hunting and wildlife management, but that access is at risk with every gate left open, piece of litter left behind, or torn up ag field from someone driving where they weren't allowed. As hunters and guests in Montana, we must do better. Get familiar with Montana's block management program and follow the rules for every block management area you hunt, because we either do better or we'll lose access. It's that simple. It's up to us. Respect access. Protect the hunt. You already do so much. How about doing less and earning more? Rewards checking from Valley Credit Union lets you do just that. Earn 2.50% APY with no minimum balance, no service fees, and refunds up to $360 per year on ATM fees nationwide. Less hassle, more moolah. Visit valleyfcu.com to open an account online. Rewards checking from Valley Credit Union. Do less, earn more. APY equals annual percentage yield federally insured by the NCUA. Certain restrictions may apply. First West Insurance, a Montana-born company, has been helping friends and neighbors protect what they love most since 1972. From home and businesses to farm and ranch to life and health insurance, our team is dedicated to finding solutions that work for you. We believe in creating relationships as deep as our Montana roots. 
First West, your local insurance agency. Hey, Montana State football fans, get ready for some great football this season. One, two, three. It starts with filling your tank with Conoco gasoline to get you to every home and away game. Why? Because we love the Bobcats as much as you do. So hop in your car and go cheer them on. Don't forget to download and use the My Conoco app to save. Conoco, choose go. Proud sponsor of the Montana State Bobcats. The Ribbon Chop House was founded in 2001. Our ability to grow has come through our commitment to Rocky Mountain Hospitality, a concept which incorporates a casual attitude with our high-level commitment to loyalty, safety, service, and quality food. At the Ribbon Chop House, our staff is dedicated to creating extraordinary experiences that raise the bar in each of our communities. Enjoy premium steaks, fresh seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs. We look forward to sharing a little Rocky Mountain Hospitality with you. Bobcat fans, support both your favorite team and Montana State students. When you shop at MSU Bookstores, you help lower the price of course materials for Montana State students. MSU Bookstore is owned by MSU students and faculty and serves as the only not-for-profit campus bookstore in Montana. Shop online at msubookstore.org, at Bobcat Stadium on game days, or on campus in the Strand Union Building. Remember, Bobcat fans, when you shop at MSU Bookstore, all proceeds from your purchase go directly to lowering the cost of course materials for Montana State students. Back on the Ribbon Shop House postgame show, Montana State winning it today 42-30 over Sacramento State in the matchup between number two and number three in the nation. I'm Keaton Gologly alongside R.J. Fitzgerald and Dan Davies back up in the first Interstate Bank broadcast booth. And, Dan, we've had this game circled for a long time. This was a special win for Montana State, and it seemed, sure seemed like Brent Vegan knew what this, ga- this game meant. Yeah, they, he had him prepared. Uh, we've talked about it in the pregame a little bit, how difficult – playing a late game is on the road and uh, keep your team focused and keep them uh, in in line and in tune of what you want them to do and not uh, you know be out of their out of their schedule and so forth he was he they did him the whole coaching staff did a great job of planning this whole thing and the, the nutrition part I mean it's it's a whole team effort by uh, all the staff to, to do that but yeah, it's a, it's a great win here in Sacramento. Those are wins are hard to come by out here. Yeah, RJ, how tough is it with a, a late game like this on the road? Yeah, you're just sitting around all day. I mean, there's a lot of hype around the game, so I think that's the hardest thing is to not get too excited early. Obviously, you can't just be lulling yourself to sleep all day, but at the same time, you can't wake up in the morning and, and be ready to go because otherwise you'll lose all that energy. It's a really long day, so you got to – Make sure you just kind of build it up over time, and I think um, Vegan has a good plan for it just because the Bobcats have been in this situation so many times before, and uh, it's almost a, f- you know, it's pretty familiar to him now at this point. Tommy Mallott, terrific game tonight. Wonderful to see him look like himself. Yeah, he's uh, healthy again, and uh, you, you can tell. He's got, a, he's got a little spring in his step, and confidence is back, and uh, – when he's out in the open and he sees a little seam and he, he can get to that goal line, he, he did that twice tonight. It was a, a great effort by him, over 100 yards, 114 yards, uh, or excuse me, 105 net yards, but two touchdowns. Great effort by, by Tommy. His first rushing touchdowns of the year, his first 100-yard rushing game, and for him to do that with Ryan Lonergan filling in for Derek Snell, that position, that fullback position like that for Lonergan to step in, that is a really complicated position to step in and play the way he did. Well, it is. I mean, I know Ryan Lonergan, he doesn't play it a lot, but he's a very talented receiver first and foremost, but for him to come in there and block the way that he did tonight was just great effort, and it's a testament to his ability to just stay ready. I mean, it's hard at times. He's been buried on the depth chart behind a guy like Trayton Pickering and a guy like Derek Snell, and he hasn't really gotten that play that he would have hoped to at this point in his career. But for him to step up in a big-time game like that and deliver is just a, a credit to him and his his attitude. Yeah, I, I can see, you know, you, you go into meetings, you know what you do, but when you're out there, they don't always line up like that X is on <laughs> yeah. the paper. You have to go and you have to read it and – uh, I'm sure he didn't grade out 100 today, but I, I guarantee you he was uh, he was a very effective uh, in his role tonight, stepping in. Well, the Bobcats uh, love to live by the mantra of run the damn ball, and this offensive line was the closer tonight. Yeah, they, again, it's great effort by all five of those guys that uh, stay in there as a unit and uh, get get things done. 
you know, the, the coaching staff has done a great job with them to, to get them prepared, and they believe in each other. And you can just see when they run off the field after scoring a rushing touchdown, man, they're jacked. They are, <laughs> they are fired up, and they want to go pick that running back up or the quarterback, whoever scored, and celebrate with them. All right, well, looking ahead for Montana State, presented by Vance Thompson Vision. Doesn't get much easier. Got to go to Idaho. They're ranked number 10 in the nation. They just lost a tough game against Montana. But, I mean, that is a dynamic offense. Giovanni McCoy, the national freshman of the year last year, they've got some great wide receivers. It's going to be a tough matchup next week. Yeah, it's going to be a tough matchup, especially for the secondary. I mean, it's, it's going to come down to that secondary. Those receivers for Idaho are electric. Um, the Idaho offensive line does struggle at times, so it's going to be, you know, a big – big part of the game how this defense line for the Bobcats plays I mean it's going he, he looks a lot like Bennett that quarterback yeah I mean, they're they're very similar stature they're lean they're quick they're uh, competitive they they're not gonna they they play real hard and and really put some some stress not only a second level but on the third level uh, to try to stay on coverage because he scrambles a lot. Oh, man. It's going to be fun next week, but for now we can enjoy that long plane ride home as the Bobcats are winners today, 42-30 to 30 over Sacramento State. All right, boys, we're taking a break. When we get back, we'll get you the highlights from this one as the Cats win it over number three, Sacramento State on the road. You're listening to Bobcat Football presented by Learfield. From ATVs to heavy RVs, the 2023 Chevy Silverado provides everything you need for a long day of towing. With proven technologies like trailer sway control, hill start assist, and auto grade braking. You'll also get the capability to work smarter, not harder, with the available multi-flex tailgate. Offering six different functions to help improve loading, unloading, and accessing the cargo bed. Check out the legendary Silverado at your Montana Chevy dealers. Proud sponsors of your Montana State Bobcats. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. outside the box for your complete branding solutions. Located in Bozeman, Montana, we offer a full print shop for banners, signs, wraps, trade show booths and graphics, promotional products, and much more. If you can think it, we can ink it. We are a proud supporter and corporate sponsor of the MSU Bobcats. Like us on Facebook to see some of our cat wraps. Ready to build your brand? Think Inc. and call us at 406-922-6462 or visit us on the web at inkoutside.com. From our 1946 roots, providing lumber for Yellowstone National Park to our current headquarters in Bozeman, we at Simpkins Hallen believe in building the Gallatin Valley's future while continuing to honor its past. Contractors large and small benefit from our decades of experience and our extensive network of suppliers. We can source the materials you need, no matter the project. For all your building needs, go to where longstanding traditions have met with quality building